Gas masks and hand grenades. 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 <laughs> Hey, hey, what is happening, everybody out there in YouTube land on Sunday, March the 3rd, or March the 3rd, March the 10th. Sorry, I'm a week off there. <laughs> uh, we are back. The Desert Island uh, panels are back for uh, one that we've been talking about probably since, I'm trying to remember, do you guys remember what the last one that was on? Was it Prague Island? Prague Island. Was it really? Yep. Yeah. Which was like October. October? Yeah, I think so. October, November? November. Maybe early November. Wow. Man, been slacking. Been leaving you guys go too much, man. I'm not like bugging you enough. Right? Everybody's like, <laughs> oh. man, they, everybody sees that. Everybody sees that text message come up. They're like, fuck. It's not him again. But uh, anyway, so we're back. We're back to do the uh, traditional heavy metal island uh, top 10 pick tonight. And uh, we've got some returning people, I believe. Matt, were you in for one before? Mm, what was I on? I was on the Halloween thing, and I was on the Van Halen thing. Right. Okay. I thought maybe I did have you on one of these. So you're a, you're a virgin today. You are, sure, you are here yeah. for the first time. <laughs> I mean, and looking at your record collection and your T-shirt collection, you're still a virgin anyway. So... <laughs> <laughs> We got uh, the rest of these guys. I think have been here at least once, twice, eight times. Like Nick, Nick, Nick's like Nick's like a really bad case of like herpes. So you really want to get a rid really of good case of herpes? Like seriously? No, there could be. You never know. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, we actually had um, so Johnny mixed up because they don't change in England. I thought I didn't know that was just a U.S. thing. I apologize. It is apparently so. And I probably should have known that when Peter said something to me about it today. And he's like, well, I don't think I can get there till 7 p.m. So long story short, Johnny kind of got screwed here. Let's see. Yeah, he said he's not coming. He, he's got a, He's about ready to eat, so he'll pop in in a few minutes. So Johnny's going to pop in. We'll get started. And then Peter from the uh, – what's, what's this called? The Metal Vault, right? Yeah. Right. So Peter's going to pop in around 7 o'clock his time which would be uh, about 3 o'clock our time. So we're going to have some other guys jump in. We had um, Storm Rider here on, was going to join us, but he's got pneumonia and not doing so hot. So our thoughts go out to you, bro. Get better. There will be future opportunities. And uh, thank you for at least trying to make it today. But, you know, it's probably best if you're not feeling up to it that we just soldier on without you. And, um, yeah, so who do I have here to my – right or your left or your right my left dennis og press from analog archives next to okay. him okay. we've got necrotic nick from the throes of metal down below him we've got logan from beer and metal snobbery or beer metal snob in the middle square the paul lynn square we have mr <laughs> kellen from killing for company good to see you kellen He's all back and well rested from uh, running in Vancouver or some crazy shit. I think, right? Is that what you were doing? No, no, I'm a uh, no running in Vancouver yet. No. Oh, you're you're going to run in Vancouver. I'll be in Traverse City for a marathon in May, but that's some some time off. Well, didn't yeah. you post something about Vancouver and the rain or something? Uh, no, that was a a separate runner from the vancouver area noticed that i was training and shouting oh i thought it was you i thought you were up there running i'm like this guy is cool but man he's fucking weird man like who drives to <laughs> fucking vancouver to run for god's sake <laughs> and then next to kellen we've got mad from the accusation network welcome sir he was a late addition should have thought of you in the beginning it just you know i'm always trying to remember people you. and yeah so it's cool that you're joining because i know this is one that speaks to you quite a bit below matt down in hell, down below, Mr. Rogar from Ro Roger. Say your last name again, please. 
Chorvik. Chorvik. There we go. And next to him, Cronus Jr., everyone. Peter Tagren. Peter Tagren. <laughs> yeah, he does look more like Peter Tagren, actually. Um, who was the guy that brought up the Cronus Jr. thing? Was that you? No, that was Chromium. Yeah. Oh, it was Chromium. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> That was fucking funny. You gotta admit that's funny. <laughs> I think if I if I'm Eric, I think I'd rather look like Peter Tacker than Cronus. Just saying. <laughs> no offense to either of those gentlemen at all. So both are cool. All right, and then later, like I said, we've got Johnny Mac popping in shortly, and then we've got Peter from the Metal Vault popping in. Jo Johnny's from uh, Rock and Metal Plus. So uh, I'll get to comments in a minute, guys. When I get caught up here, so tonight, guys, we're going to talk about traditional metal. And the interesting thing about traditional metal is, I guess to a lot, you know, if you go out on the web and you pull up top 25 traditional metal albums, you get a lot of, there's a, there's a widespread of what people think yep. traditional metal is, right? Now, if we want to go back and we want to talk about heavy metal, the derivation of that word, the way I understand it and the, the research, the minor research that I've done, and Kellen, I know you're going to have some thoughts on this. We're all going to go around the room. But um, the first mention of heavy metal is often thought to be Edgar Rice Burroughs, who called uh, a group of a ravaging band of kind of crazy drug fiend nut jobs. And I believe it's the Naked Lunch, the heavy metal kids. And I believe he was referring more in line to it's been. 30 years since I've read that book. So I don't really remember And the movie. I don't know if they reference it at all, but it's been a lot of years since I've actually read that book. And I don't remember if it was in, it wasn't relation to heavy metal music. Clearly it was, you know, more in, I think it was really more in, in the use of substances because Burroughs was a heroin addict and a major drug addict. So, um, you know, I think that was what it was more related to, but the first time it kind of got, talked about in modern music i believe there's two references and i'm not sure who comes first but sandy perlman from the blue Easter called he was their kind of their guru of their sort of career he was a manager and a writer and a lyricist he talked he talked about the blue Easter call being heavy metal right mm -hmm. and and bands that have this heavy distorted guitar sound which Let's be honest. There isn't a lot of Blue Oyster Cult that's super heavily distorted like we're used to hearing heavily distorted. But they're still heavy. I still love my Blue Oyster Cult. But. And then the other one, I believe, was a guy named Lester Bangs, right? Lester Bangs? Bangs yeah. Right. And where was he from? Was that Cream or which magazine was it? Was it Rolling Stone? I can't remember. Might have been Rolling Stone. I, yeah, I don't yeah. remember. But he's also in that time. And who came first, the chicken or the egg sort of thing? Because I, the way I remember was Sandy... Perlman might have been like 69 when he first talked about it. And I think Banks was early 70s. But long story short, the derivation of heavy metal kind of seems to have stemmed from those three sources, right? And so when I was kind of doing a little bit of research for this, I was keeping that in mind. But also, like, when we talk about traditional heavy metal, what I tend to feel is, is the, the genre or era of harder rock where we got away from the proto metal which was the blue oyster cults obviously the sabbaths although sabbaths are kind of unique to themselves because they were considerably heavier sounding than all of these other heavy metal bands atomic rooster you know bands like that right yeah. sir lord baltimore captain beyond things like that deep purple those are kind of thought to be the really early proto metal bands but were they really metal because they weren't really you they were using distorted amps but they weren't using the kind of overdriven and distorted amps that we typically kind of point to with regards to heavy metal traditional heavy metal so and of course then when we get to the mid to late 70s we start transitioning into the new wave of british heavy metal and that's kind of where the overdriven amps and the you know the 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 uh distortion pedals and boost pedals start to really come into play and that's the kind of thing that i personally ascribe to being traditional metal or heavy metal so while i wanted to add bands like rainbow and bands like 
Sabbath and Deep Purple. And I'm not going to discount anybody that di does have those bands if you do. Mm -hmm. I don't necessarily truly believe they are, in my wheelhouse, traditional heavy metal bands. I kind of look at them more as the classic proto metal band. Budgie is another one that comes to mind. So we'll go around the room and kind of get each person's flex on what I just went over there. And maybe it'll help us understand your choices. So as I said, real quick, I had a Deep Purple album. I had a Uriah Heap album. I had a Rainbow album. And then I went, you know what? I don't really necessarily think this is what I feel is traditional heavy metal. So I kind of got rid of those and pulled in other stuff. So we'll go around the room and kind of get, get everybody's thought process on that and maybe what the guides they used to pick the choices that they did and we'll move on from there, which then begs the question, when is the proto metal desert Island stream? Right. Of course. So, <laughs> All right, Dennis, how about you? Let's go with you first, man. Yeah. For me, I mean, it was really hard choosing these records because like you said, I was like, is this speed metal record? Is this a power metal record? Is it traditional? Is it too hard rock? So it was like, like I picked something that I think, everyone can pretty much just agree that it's agree traditional heavy metal, like just basically metal. Um, I, some of my picks and kind of my taste leans a little more towards speed metal, but um, <clears throat> it's fine. Which is so, fine. I mean, I didn't pick like overly, I didn't pick like agent steel records or something like that. Um, but I try to keep it like, as metal as possible where people won't be like, Oh, that's not, that's power metal or that's, you know, that's a speed metal or thrash metal, something like that. Right. So, and it was really hard because the, the bands I grew up, I think are more considered hard rock because they were on the radio. So right. I Same here. Straight, straight away from those. Um, like anything that was on the radio, I kind of straight away from, because I was like, I mean, these can be considered hard rock, but I get like if somebody else picked them, I just stayed away from those bands. I would consider those more like top 10 hard rock metal records. So right. even though I have some as honorable mentions and maybe even some of the ones I picked in my top 10 can be considered that. But uh, for me, that's that's how I pick my records. OK, uh, Nick, what do you got on this? Um, well, for me, like, all right, honestly, I've always called like this style heavy metal like the classic sounding stuff like definitely like Nuwabam and like a little bit before that i didn't hear the term trad metal until there was a retroactive movement for it with like bands like haunts uh bands i'll bring up here uh that's where i started hearing trad metal as like a term like i'd never really heard that before so i think part of me is like that's kind of more attached to like the retroactive movement of like newer bands playing this very old classic style but it's one of those, like, you know, heavy metal is one of those things, like, when you hear it, you, it has its hallmarks, it's very identifiable, like, generally very soaring vocals, the twin guitar harmonies, that is a big theme on almost all of my picks here, I would say. But, yeah, um, I don't know, it, it's just a sound and that I like because, again, there's, like, a point where you can feel it, that tipping point where it goes from hard rock to metal, like, it legit becomes something different, but it still has its roots in both. And I don't know, it's, I don't know. It's kind of where like, I think metal really kind of got its like its own identity around this point. That's a, that's a great point. I'm glad you just said that. I, I fully agree with that. It's kind of like when you say you're a metal head, you kind of identify with this being where it kind of was the inception of it because, you know, Sabbath had the blues element to their early material while they were definitely heavier than probably most other of the bands that started to even, even purple. I mean, purple, you know, Richie Blackmore, killer guitar player and all, but he doesn't really go for like a majorly overdriven sound like yeah. Tony Iommi did, you know, Tony Iommi, there was that going on. So, um, yeah, good. Very good point. This is well, was where... also too, uh, there was an image too, like not only, you know, was it the sound, but there was an image like, you know, the fashion sort of changed around it too. So yeah, it, it leathers, this sort of became its own thing. Yeah. The leather, the leather jackets, the tight pants, the, yeah. Which all of us that aren't named Kellen and Logan and Eric can probably not understand anymore. 
Well, I, maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. I'm a fat ass these days, so what can I say? But uh, I never wore tight leather britches. I did. I did. I, know. I, I had gray calfskin leathers, man. Do, do skinny jeans count? Or yeah, uh, you're not. Uh, <laughs> sorry, the, the skinny, emo streams over jeans, there. Aren't skinny jeans the core scene, yeah, right? They're yeah, the core it's the scene. Core yeah, scene so. yeah. Logan, how about you? What's your kind of take on the, the topic? Yeah, so I. Uh, to, to me, this was the toughest to actually prepare for of all the islands I've done so far because I feel like what is and isn't heavy metal is probably one of the more subjective ways because of everything that you guys have already kind of touched on. Like, is it hard rock? Is it speed metal? Is it power metal? Like, where are the definitive lines? And with a lot of my picks, I didn't want to kind of what Dennis said. Didn't want to let like, me interject tread. one second. There's yeah. another another one too, prog metal because three or four of my picks yeah. could have easily been prog metal and i kind of huh. had to go yeah but i already brought them up so i'm gonna back so there you go well if there's a rush album on his list i knew it no there's no rush <laughs> there's no rush i was even gonna wear a rush confirmed. shirt i was gonna wear a rush shirt and i put a fucking forbidden shirt on so there you go okay which by the way this shirt tell me that isn't killer man. that's right badass now, man. that's the one from the live stream that they did over christmas anyway i just got it so go ahead sorry logan very nice no uh so I wanted to focus instead on like certain scenes that definitely identified as as heavy metal versus like trying to include everything because I was trying to like rope in like you know Black, Black Sabbath as you mentioned and like uh, some other proto stuff and even like King Diamond and some of that stuff, but then God that was impossible. So instead, focusing on the scenes that are like we are heavy metal, definitely like the new wave of British heavy metal scene. Then I think America's answer, like the American heavy metal scene that kind of popped up in the early 80s. And then now we're, we've got a, you know, the new wave of traditional heavy metal, you know. So wanted to touch on those those three specifically. And everything else will be saved for the honorable mentions. But Yeah, I, I want to, Super Strike, you're not wrong here, man. I think, especially what you say, everything from uh, volume four on, that that's a very good point. Sabbath are kind of the unique outlier to all this stuff because they weren't using organs like uh like atomic rooster did or uh i think baltimore lord lord baltimore did they have organ in them too i think i can't remember they had a bit but not yeah. as much right uh or so i mean again sabbath would be the one outlier band which we all kind of probably consensus if we took a a poll out there who started heavy metal I think Sabbath would probably win that most likely, but, but their, their heavy metal wasn't really heavy metal because it didn't beget anything until four or five years later when the priests and the, you know, the, these other bands started to slow the angel witches and the, these bands started to crop up. And, yeah, and, that, and, you know what I mean? I take mean? it that they're from Pentagram, like a different, Pentagram. Pentagram like a different is, you know, scene yeah. than mm -hmm. these other bands cool. that I think will probably most, mostly talk about right kellen i know you got some good stuff so oh real in. real quick jeff i just wanted yeah. to say i kind of another genre too subgenre was doom metal that i was kind of like having a hard time with like bands like trouble where i was like man mm. is this doom yeah or is it yeah are they metal are they heavy metal or are they doom yeah yeah, yeah. so that but that i wouldn't have, if you have picked the, if you'd have picked the trouble album i i would have seen that i mean it's because when, when was their first album 79 80 Oh, somewhere in the 80s got maybe 82 i want to say a little bit later than that so on mine was was that late i thought it was i want to say 84 maybe or something okay maybe it was 84. all right i was thinking they were earlier than that for some reason but okay callum what you got man so for me it's not necessarily a genre or subgenre i think of it as a time period so it would go somewhere in that time you're discussing proto metal somewhere in like the mid to late 70s until the sort of end of the 1980s. So I think we think of traditional metal in juxtaposition to extreme metal, right? So we're excluding death, black, grind, sling things that are here in the 90s. Yeah, thrash, um, but like goth, industrial, all those things like that we groove that appear in the 1990s, we're excluding that. So we're really talking about a time period that emerges somewhere in the mid 70s until the end of the 1980s for me. Right. Yeah. Um, 
I think another part that I wanted to mention are like the themes and lyrical content. Like I definitely had certain kind of images when people talk about traditional heavy metal. Um, so it's not just the kind of like party hedonism. I enjoy being a heavy metal person theme to, to what is like traditional heavy metal, but all the literature and movies during the 1960s and 70s that had established like an interest in fantasy, science fiction, sword and sorcery, um, that's part of like the imagery uh, and culture that make up traditional heavy metal for me. So that sort of, I think musicians were growing up with that during the 1960s and 70s, and then sort of brought that into the scene for, you know, the music they were creating in the 1980s. Right. Um, but I, I, I guess just in terms of the records I picked, um, things I would include are, is that transition from hard rock to heavy metal, wherever you want to divide that line will probably differ here. Um, but also U.S. power metal is an important genre for me. I would be more inclusive with something like Agent Steel, so speed metal. Um, yeah, I would. Metal yeah. and do metal. All of those I would include. If you yeah. think everything from, you know, well, some of the bands will pick at the hard rock. My my Judas Priest record will definitely be in this hard rock to heavy metal phase. But even I think something like Epic Doom that appears at the end of the 19. Uh, 80s. I think that should also be included in this conversation. I mean, so, keep in mind too one thing, which you just pointed it out, but I'll just state it. The obvious is that when you start these further delineations of metal, they all lead back to one place. They all kind of come from the inception of the heavy metal overlord, if you will, right? So, I mean, that's the, the grandfather of it all, and then all these little babies kind of proliferate out throughout, right? Right. And just one more thing I'll, I'll add here is I think there's a whole lot less during the in the 1980s, all this hand wringing surrounding subgenres. Um, if you look at like Metal Blade as a record label during this time period, it's incredibly diverse. So mm -hmm. the medical like Metal Massacre compilations, there's bands that are all over the place. Yeah. So I, I think now we look back at it and we want to break it down in a certain way. The reason I'm probably a bit more inclusive is I think during that time period, bands sort of lived in culturally in the same headspace for most fans. I, I so. agree. Yeah. I mean, you look at just look at the bands that Metallica was covering on on Garage Days Revisited. You had the Misfits, you had Merciful Fate, you had Budgie, you had um, Holocaust, Thin mm -hmm. Lizzy, Holocaust. I yeah. mean, so, you know, and, and like I was actually at one point, I'm like, well, you know, Thin Lizzy. <laughs> And, and Rainbow and those bands, which are really, to me, are hard rock. Some people might think, oh, they're kind of heavy metal. Mm -hmm. But are they really? To me, they're not. To most of you, they're probably not. But would they fit in this? They wouldn't be complete outliers, I, I don't think. So I, I agree I agree with you, Kellen. I mean, it's, it's good, good points to bring up there. Matt, how about you? So I should point out that a couple of my choices are going to be hard rock bordering on heavy metal. I think it's kind of unavoidable for me. Um, I Who let this guy in here? When I picked all my stuff, because I didn't think about it while I was picking, but afterwards I realized this huge, not just generational bias, but first exposure bias. Exactly. That's all always it. big. And yeah. It all kind of fits into my teenage years. It kind of fits into my high school years. I'm like, okay, I'm a cliche, I guess. Yeah. And you're, yeah. you're, how old are you? You're 54. I'll be 56 55. in August. Yeah. So you're like two years younger than me. So we were yeah. in high school at the same time. And yeah. we know those bands that were pivotal to, to dragging us in, yeah. even though we knew the stuff, you know, the, the seventies stuff, oh, that yeah. was the stuff that set the groundwork. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, it, there's no question that when you come in and how you come in yeah. is a key thing for us old fuckers, because we can't, we really can't unpack that nostalgia from who we are. I can't anyway. Yeah, yeah. So Mark says, yeah. how 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 does he do it? Well, Mark, I'm just gonna say I didn't bring up Rush. <laughs> Someone else brought up Rush. <laughs> I didn't say it, and I actually wasn't gonna say it. And you know, but there's there's a a band. Okay, is Rush hard rock? Are they heavy metal? Are they proto prog metal? What are, they're kind of all those things in one, right? So would the, would Russia fit here? Maybe I wouldn't have said no, but at the same point in time, it wasn't a band I was going to pick for this. It just wasn't. It's not for me. I know Kellen's going. No fucking way, man. No way is Russia in this. <laughs> so, 
but that you know that's the whole point you you hit on it perfectly that nostalgia and where we come in affects massively where we go and i as i started off saying this is my happy place with metal man mm -hmm. this is where i love being in that if I'm going to do metal, it's mostly in this era of yeah. music, right? Because it's what I know. It doesn't mean I don't like a lot of the other stuff, but, right. you know, and there are good bands, you know, Summerlands, fucking right. killer new band. And right. I would put them in the traditional metal yeah. category, but new, right? So, right, right. yeah, yeah. So, Roger, how about you? Uh, well, yes, uh, <clears throat> when it comes to bands like Rainbow, Rainbow for me is a heavy metal band, uh, always been, because I, I got into them. Good early 80s so i was kind of for me that was heavy metal but for me it was more a problem of how a kind of hard sound do you go up to you know uh, where does it cross over to power metal where where does it you know power thrash i do have a couple like honorable mentions that i kind of wanted in my top 10 list but i feel they are a little bit too heavy in in a way on the guitar sound and and in the in the riffings uh, so but but it's always like uh when were you born and when did you get into metal uh you know i started you know acdc for me acdc is hard rock but they could have been metal uh just as much as rainbow but yeah i find of kind of there is kind of my okay. uh, tipping point in a, in a way when it goes uh, I'm curious to know who are the bands that you felt were a little too heavy to include. Are they not? Are they in your your? I can no? I can show one of them just to make an example. I'm, just, I'm curious. Yeah. How about? I, I yeah, think yeah. Like but, but this album for me. No, no. Okay, so th that album is fucking. You know, you Roger. Yeah. You know, you know me. Yeah. No. I did not go there, but I could have. Yeah, but that, that was kind of that is kind of it's. It's a little bit too heavy, I felt, for this. No, I think that would have been perfectly okay, fine. Yeah. Yeah, I would have but, been perfectly uh, fine with that. And yeah. I think everybody else would have, too. Because Although that's, that's my... very, that's yeah. very yeah. proto prog metal, too, at the same point in time, right? It's, so. it's kind of, uh, yeah, it's kind of like borderline music. So I, I excluded that. It, it's my favorite metal album of all time. So is yeah. it really? Wow. No yeah, shit. Yeah. yeah. I love it. Well, you know, you and me, the network. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the uh, World Dane connection. World Dane, strong. yeah. <laughs> I didn't go any World Dane. I could have, but I didn't go there. Yeah. So, um, Eric, the young, the young Canuck, the junior. Wait, I don't know. Is, are you older than Logan, or are you guys the same age? Twenty nine, are you? I'm almost twenty nine. Oh, then you're. I Logan's got you a little older than, Just a little bit, yeah. Are you I, 30 yet, Logan? Did you turn 30? Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm 30. It's you a, old fuck. No, right? I know, it's a great decade so far. <laughs> <laughs> you crusty old bastard. Uh -huh. All right, Eric, what's your thoughts hurts. on this as the junior member of the family? Yeah, so I guess, uh, yeah, it's a little bit different for me. I mean, um, when I was getting into metal in general, some of the the kind of new wave of traditional heavy metal hadn't quite blown up at that point yet. I mean, this was like 2008, 2009 area, but like there was already so much stuff out there. And um, so it's not so much a time and a place thing for me um, because with the amount of stuff that was out at that point, you, you kind of bounce around in a whole bunch of different directions, right? Sure. I was getting into black Sabbath at the same time as Metallica and then newer bands like Kill Switch Engage or like Lamb of God, Mastodon, all this kind of tool, all different directions. Right. Right. It wasn't back in the day where there was heavy metal and then there was thrash coming out or whatever, uh, things like that. So it's a, a little bit different. But I mean, I don't have much to add to what you guys said. Uh, again, you can splinter off in 20 different directions and almost every person is going to have a different point where they draw that line of what's going too far from that kind of center point. So good, some of mine are, I, I guess I kind of almost lean a little more into the hard rock maybe as well. Um, but yeah, we'll, we'll see. Okay. So um, <laughs> this, uh, Peter brings up the new generations always change the traditions. I mean, I think they bring something new to it. I don't know that they change the tradition, but I think that they expand it perhaps. And I was just sitting here thinking, Eric, as you're talking, I'm like, 
I was going to make one of my old man comments, you know, like, man, I'm so glad I'm not a young kid today because I got to come up through this as it was happening, as it was developing, right? You know, from Kiss and Tull and Yes and all those bands of the 70s into the 80s. But in a weird way, you mentioned, Eric, that in a weird sort of way, maybe you have a slight advantage because you're not carrying the biases that we old fuckers tend to have, which is, and Dennis, you know, you and I fall into this category sometimes where it's like, well, if it ain't like, you know, whatever, if it ain't like Sabbath, then fuck it. It ain't worth listening to. We don't say that. But the point is that we are us older dudes that are, you know, some of us are <clears throat> almost pushing 60 here. Um, we have that kind of ingrained nostalgic viewpoint of we were there when it happened, bro. So we we clearly know more than you, and we clearly <laughs> have the better take on it. It's not true, right. but I wouldn't want to trade, but in a weird way, it is kind of cool the way you pointed out that as a younger you, Kellen, Logan, you guys all listen to a real wide variety and – spread of things in in extreme music from eric you're a big prog nerd but you also listen to fucking some pretty out there extreme metal logan Ke kellen you guys do that whereas i'm a little less excited about checking out that mall core band or that you know what i mean like there's certain genres that i've got it in my head eh i ain't gonna like that good example what was the moon bather who is that Moon oh. oh, Jeff or Cowboy. Yeah. Okay. Oh. So somebody, I think it was you, Nick, told me, dude, I think you'll like this band. I'm like, nah, it's a core band. I know it's going to suck. I know I'm going to hate it. And here about a week ago, I found myself on that album. I'm like, you know, fucking Nick, that cocksucker. He was right. I kind of <laughs> like You really said that too. I did. I said it exact. I said it out loud to myself when I talk to myself. <laughs> when people don't answer answer my texts, I talk to myself. I, I sense the disturbance from the force. <laughs> yeah. But no, I was like, God damn it, Nick was right. I kind of like this. It's not that awful. So you know, it, it it's an interesting point that I wanted to build off on. Eric, anybody got a final thing they want to say, Kel? Yeah, I was actually going to to the point about changing traditions, like that. So Roger's choice was sanctuary. I think that's an interesting sort of like the lines start to drift a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, because that time period where Sanctuary, Nevermore, I mean, I think at one point in time, people thought those were very modern sounding records or like a separate sort of generation. But we're talking about records at this point that are 30 plus years old. Um, and I and I think if you look at like the end of, let's say, Liege Lord, like that sound is pretty heavy and thrashing <laughs> by the end of the mm -hmm. 1980s. I think Sanctuary, Nevermore, they start to lean closer. I'm just interested as in 2024, how we look back and hear those records. Um, do we still think of them as like thrash records or right. prog records? I mean, where do they fall? It's just something as the years pass, I'm curious where we will historically understand Sanctuary's place. Well, Sanctuary did tour with Megadeth in 88. I saw the tour. So, you know, take that as you will. Yeah, and there's, you know, like one of my, a couple of my choices in here could kind of lean into a bunch of different territories, really. So, prog metal, thrash a bit. So, it's really kind of, you know, this is a nebulous thing. And let's be honest. Let's be totally yeah. honest. While I went through this list, and I love every album on this list, if you ask me this two months from now, there's a very good chance I I would miss three or four albums. If I didn't have access to go back and look at what I said and did, I probably mm -hmm. would pick three or four different ones. So it is the reality. It is the great thing about being a fan of music in general, but metal in particular is we don't always have to lock in and listen to the same six albums, mm -hmm. you know? So there's a lot out there, a lot of great music. And in you this know, scenario, we have to lock into 10 albums, right? <laughs> this scenario we do. Yeah. And so real quick to talk about, Rick's already giving me shit for talking too much. So, <laughs> hey, man, it's my fucking stream, man. You know, hey, you don't like it, you don't come on, hey, you know. Um, so I am going to do mine in an order. Just simply because I've been sitting with this list for about a week and I pulled one or two that I had in and I decided to go with, HMs and pull one from the HM up because I just knew it was one that meant more to me. 
I'm going to do the, do it that way. You guys do not have to do it that way, but that's how I'm going to do it. So it's up to you. If you want to, if you are going to do it that way, make mention of it when we get started here in a sec and let us know that's how you're doing it. But you do not have to do it that way. So are we ready to get rolling? Yep. Let's do okay. it. Okay. Dennis, I will start with you. I will go last. And I'm going to try. Just give me one second here. We're going to try to do that until the other guys get here. And uh, so this is number 10 or just one of 10. Yeah. So I didn't, I didn't rank mine because it was too difficult for me, but, um, and this, this could, this list, like you said, could change right now. This is my top 10. Where where your head was at. Right. But I mean, definitely it could change. This is just stuff that I've been listening to probably like over the past five or 10 years that I, I think kind of, make this list for me um and the first one's going to be warlord deliver us ah <clears throat> it was it was one i thought about it didn't quite make yeah. the cut but yeah so this was a this record i actually bought back in in the 80s and i bought all their stuff in the 80s but i never was like i don't think i ever really really listened to it it was just like okay that's cool there because there were so many bands coming out at the same time and i was already like into thrash and that kind of stuff so this was more like something that just was back in my collection that i never really went back to until like maybe like 10 years ago or so and i was like you know somebody brought it up like hey check out that warlord or something and i'm like oh fuck i have that let me go check it out and i was like man this album is really really good and <clears throat> it just has i mean it only has six songs on it so it's almost maybe considered an ep i think it's long enough to be considered a full length and i really like how the it's so theatrical um it has a a very almost uplifting feel to it and it it does have some doomy songs on it too like black mass almost has a candle mass vibe to it and it just it goes everywhere and I love the vocals. They're so like this is a unique record. It's not like very oh, that sounds like X, Y, and Z, because it doesn't. It just very unique record. Just fucking and I think this is just pure like US heavy metal, although it does have some power metal and doom metal leanings to it. But to me, yeah, man, this record, that's gonna be my number 10. Warlord deliver us. So real quick, uh, not to pimp my own show, but uh just talk to Mark Zonder. <laughs> Uh, maybe about a week ago. Um, they are going to be doing some big touring next year and later this year, but next year they're playing a pretty prestigious festival, which I can't really mention, but I know about that. And uh, the new album, which I've had, is pretty good. I was pretty surprised yeah. by it. I was not, really didn't know what to expect, but it was actually better than I thought. And I call this Renaissance me- metal. It's got a Renaissance fair vibe to it but it's cool it's not goofy weird it's kind of it's 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 legit i guess yeah it's very it's very almost medieval sounding like a medieval type of like but not like full sword and sorcery it's more you're right i don't know you just got to hear the record i mean get your own vibe from it but i get where you're coming from with the renaissance for sure yeah and um the the biggest problem with them if you watch the interview with mark is that they just were constantly fucked with singers. They just had singers that were, I don't know how many they've had. I think it's like a dozen or something like that, crazily. But um, they just could never lock in on a singer. And then, you know, Zonder, Sam has kind of got the shit to the, the music industry and left L.A. And they kind of just yeah. were like, yeah, fuck it. And But they always tried to go back to it. And now, do I think it's like, a major thing for Zonder now, not necessarily, but I think he really wants to present Warlord as it was under Samus. So I think that um, what you're going to get with uh, Giles Lavery and the the current lineup, you're going to get a good show. So most of their stuff's do in Europe and Greek, and they're they're big over in Europe. Obviously, not nearly as big here, but they should have been bigger for sure. All right, Nick, you ready? Yep. And I'm gonna doing that order or no? Uh, my order. Um... I mean, I got a lot of classic stuff first, but uh, the first one was uh, special because it is legit the first heavy metal album I ever bought, and uh, it's a band that clearly no one has ever heard of, Um, (laughs) Iron Maiden, Killers. Uh, 
Power Slave is still probably my favorite Iron Maiden album, honestly, but Killers is the one that I probably return to the most because there's this huge nostalgic appeal to it. And I think there's something about this one versus like the Bruce Dickinson era, because it's Paul Diano. Like, it feels a little bit more dangerous and sleazy, and I kind of just like that. Plus, the production on this album I've always thought was awesome. Like They had that kind of warm analog sound. It was still... Kind of in that hard rock realm, but the flashy Lee play, the more sinister themes, the more galloping drums, like it definitely kind of made it way more of a metal sound overall. And I absolutely love like pretty much every track in here. I mean, Wrathchild's like the obvious single there. I mean, they still play that one with Bruce, but do the title track and Purgatory. Purgatory might have one of my favorite choruses that Iron Maiden has ever put together. Like, it's just such an amazing hook. But, uh, yeah, this one was the first exposure to heavy metal for me in terms of buying an album. Like, I remembered seeing Iron Maiden stuff as a kid at the fair. Like, you remember those, like, mirrors that you could win from the dart game, and those mirrors were totally to put up in your wall and not to do drugs on? I remembered seeing those uh, and was like, that just looks really cool. Like this, this dude, like he looks dangerous and creepy. And it's probably like the first like image I would associate with heavy metal in general. And yeah, I got this in my teen years when I was really getting a thrash metal and death metal. And this was just kind of like a whole like eye opening thing in terms of like, wow, this is older and it's different. There's more melody, the twin guitar attack. Oh, dude. First one with Adrian Smith. Yeah, this this album's a banger, and yeah, I do like uh, Power Slave more, but there's just I don't know something about this one. It's just it's still pure magic, and Paul Diano's vocal performance I still think is absolutely killer on here. So yeah, I mean I had to open up with a banger because this is the first one in terms of heavy metal I ever got. So yeah, pretty popular one. Sounds good, good pick, obviously. Probably not the first one. I mean, it was a little telegraph there too. Damn it. There we yeah. go. There's Iron Maiden two. <laughs> I thought I was the only one who heard of this band, but apparently, <laughs> apparently <laughs> others have listened to them. So this this is my pick, though my absolute favorite Maiden. Uh, my my first one was actually Final Frontier, and believe me, that <laughs> that gives you a weird. Well, that was not point. a good place to start. Man. <laughs> I love that album, and that's that. It probably uh, pop up in honorable mentions, but it's my last, my it's least because favorite it was my first album. probably, but uh, of the non uh, Blaze era. I had the the pleasure of seeing them in uh, 2013. It was probably one of the my first concerts. It was a Maiden in, in England tour, oh, and yeah. they were like touring heavily on you know this album for whatever reason. Like they almost played the whole thing in its, its entirety, and that's what made it click. And maybe it's like the uh, the progressive leanings, you know, here mm -hmm. that really make this one a standout. I mean, it's my my favorite Iron Maiden album. Uh, if I were to do a ranking, which I'm not, but if I were, this would be the number one. It's it's a ten out of ten album for me. Uh, not not a bad song on here. I mean, maybe the weakest is the prophecy, but like uh, Moonchild is perfect. Uh, the evil that men do like gives me oh. chills. That's one of those like special special songs right there. That chorus, you just keep singing it. <laughs> Ongoing. I don't even mind. Can I play with madness? I like it. It's, it's not too long. That's why it's okay. It's not too long. It's kind of fun. Uh, yeah. Logan, I'm with you. I love that track, man. Yeah, I, I, love it. I think it's great. I actually I like the lyrical themes and kind of like the uh, that's the for the me image that's the, it sets in your head. You know, for me that's the last Maiden album that I truly get into until Brave New World, though. Yeah, yeah. I like other Pre bits and pieces of ones, but Fear for a Dark has Fear for the you know Fear yeah, of the Dark about has half some pieces good for me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. All right, <laughs> yeah. but uh, and then you gotta mention the title track for sure. I, I wow. and that to me they they almost nail it with you know rhyme with ancient mariner, but it's a little bit too long, and they perfect that like epic kind of songwriting for Seven Son of a Seven Son the title track where. The uh, the spoken word bit is just the right amount, and of course the chorus is yeah perfect. And then tracks like the clairvoyant and only the good die young are good deeper maiden cuts, you know. So absolutely perfect album. And uh, you know I don't know if we're gonna touch on the maiden versus priest thing, but it's maiden. It's it's maiden all the way. 
What, oh, you mean like, like the, it was always like a, had to like a competition. Yeah. To yeah. yeah. Of course well, they, they toured, they toured for, um, peace of mind and, um, defenders, I believe it was, or maybe it was, uh, screaming. I can't remember which tour and, and priest was the bigger band at that point in time. And there was some kind of bitchery among amongst the two yeah. bands, but you know, if I had my druthers, I'll take them both. You know, I don't, I don't pick I mean, one over the other. Yeah, I mean, I, Priest, Priest made a statement here recently. I, I, don't know, I think they're they're kind of punching up above Iron Maiden right now. Exactly. Well, I think the new album is pretty. Yeah, the new Priest is pretty amazing. I gotta yeah. admit, it's pretty good. So, Still gotta listen to it. I think when you're but getting I don't, metal, but I, Maiden just seems cooler because of the logo, the album covers, even the songs are a bit more immediate, and I think work better through like a modern metal lens. You know, I do so, think though that if you were to uh, Go by worldwide album sales and ticket sales. Maiden has priest beat pretty pretty badly, actually. So, all and right, Kelly. Real we'll, quick. Oh, sorry. Oh, you got it. You got it. We can go around. <laughs> if people are drinking, we can go around the next round. Now you're good. Uh, by the way, uh, better late than never, everybody. Let's have a Yo. warm welcome for Johnny oh, Mac. Cheers. Here. Sorry, um, guys. Please. I'm fucking stupid. What can I say? Well, no, <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't make it clear to you that we had... Uh, we had daylight savings time, so that was. Well, that was we fault. do it, but ours is the end of the month, so we've got like a three-month period where we're only four hours difference and not five. So it's my fucking problem as well. So don't worry about it. All right, we'll get. We're actually at our first round of stuff, so you'll you'll come in last. Then sound good? Sweet, cool. Okay. Thanks, guys. Yep, yep. Where'd Kellen go? Where'd he go? Mm -hmm. Oh, there he is in the bottom. Okay, there we go. All right, sorry, Kellen. It's all good. Uh, so I did not rank mine. Okay. Okay. But uh, the first one I got here is the debut full length from Italy's Dark Quarter. Nice. Um, so this is a band that sort of bridges the gap from like Crystal Logic, uh, Manila Road to and King of the Dead, Eric. Sirith Angle, where there's still a little bit of that like progginess happening up to, let's say, like weird slow fag. Um, the, in, the first track here, Red Hot Gloves, opens with like a, I think, I think it's a, a Beethoven, like, like what's going on here, guys? Like I, I have absolutely no, what, no idea what they're starting with. But that moves into the second track, Colossus of Argyll. Um, it's just incredible, weird, epic heavy metal um and during this time period the debut full length comes out in 87 um there's not a lot of distribution coming from italy during that time period the country was really well known for its doom scene but not so much its epic heavy metal scene and um totally unique listen for that for that time period uh, if anyone is into sort of the proggy weird side of epic heavy metal in the 1980s i very much recommend you check out Dark Quarter. Um, what year is that? What year did that come out? The, the debut of the record came out in 1987. Okay. Um, That's a new name to me. I've never heard of that. And I mean, let's be honest. There's probably not a a metric fuck ton of Italian traditional heavy <clears throat> metal bands. There probably are many more than we think we know. But because of the, the way that the metal press was, it probably they weren't getting a lot of coverage outside their, their country. For sure. I mean, I don't think later you see like with Doom Sword, for example, bands starting to enter. The, but that's like a decade plus later. Right. So um, they're very much ahead of their time. And I think sort of the weird progginess of like, you know, very poor production was like a hallmark of the genre. If you look at those early Manila Road, Sirith Ungle records. So right. it's definitely in line with that. But yeah, uh, Colossus of Argyll is like a 10 minute long epic. Um, Gates of Hell follows up with another sort of key departure for that you would assume like Mark Shelton and Tim Baker never had great vocals. They weren't known for that. The vocalist for uh, Dark Quarter can really sing. So that's another sort of cool aspect. Oh, but cool. Um, it's a great epic heavy metal record from a part of the world that's not really known for it during this time period. So for sure. Nice, nice pick. I'm sure all of us will uh, I'm getting a lot of you'll probably like that uh, in the uh in the chat for me so that's probably one i need to check out check out so where'd you uh hear about them or how did you come by them just i mean 
part of like, you know, Eric was mentioning we, you're kind of picking up um, newer bands from like a different time period, right? So right. I think my exposure to Manila Road, Kira Thongle, you know, 15 years ago, um, it just, the, the pace to which you consume the information is, it happens so much faster in the 21st century when I'm into music. So okay. it wasn't too long before I got it. But like, for example, they're right now signed to Cruz del Sur. So they have much more you know, distribution, distribution now and recognition yeah. is much more available. Nice. And it's still the original band from the 80s? Like, or mostly? So I, or think, kind of I think they're a four piece now. Um, this On this record, they're just a three piece. Power trio. Okay. Yeah. Nice. Very cool. That's that's one I'm definitely going to check out. So, uh, Johnny, I muted you a little bit because you got your mics a little on the hot side. I don't know if you want to minimize that a tiny little bit. Um, all right. So, oh, what happened there? Oops, there we go. Okay. Uh, I think we were, were at Matt, right? Sounds right. Yeah. All right. So, I did put these in order. So, this is my number 10. Okay. Going to go with the Scorpions. Nice. First thing. Oh, scorpions. I could have picked Animal Magnetism or Blackout. They were <laughs> seconds or close second and third. But I got this album. This is where I came in with the band. Um, technically, full album came in with the band. I had heard No One Like You on the radio a bunch months before this. I was excited about that song. But I went in the record store. And this was all over the place. Mm -hmm. so I just bought it. And I loved it quite a bit more. Um, interesting thing, if you look at the face, kind of looks like a, a, an old Drew Barrymore. Like, yeah, it does actually. Yeah, that yeah. kind of fun. That's a uh, that's 84 84 Mercury yeah, right. Records. Yep, senior and it's year not the only school. cover. Uh, this cover is the one everyone knows, but there was a censored cover. Oh, this one. Oh, the censored. <laughs> yeah, I do remember that. That's yeah, lots of old old record stores that weren't happy about this too much cover. kitty, too much For some reason, too much side boob there. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> pretty cool. Uh, um, the hits are fine. I great really album. Like some of the deeper cuts, like Bad Boys Running Wild, I love a lot. Coming also Home. Lot. Coming Home. Ah. And uh, uh, what's the other one? The same Thrill's okay. Uh, I'm Leaving You is great. Ah, killer, killer track. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a great album. That's the last Scorpions album that I truly loved. Everything yeah, before that. Yeah, I was that, just going to say that as well. I, I yeah. do, but that, that was kind of the end. I remember getting. I'll drop off after this. I remember yeah. getting Savage Amusement was next, right? Yeah, and then they, they went out on yeah, tour, yeah. and they went out on tour and did the uh, the Monsters uh, of Rock, Monsters of Rock, which I saw them there. I saw that too. Yeah, only time I've ever seen them crazily. That's really that's the only time I saw I, them too. Yeah, very bizarre, and they were great. In fact, frankly, probably the very Hager. best band on that whole bill. Yep. Even yep. better than Van Hagar, even yep. better than Metallica because Metallica was just kind of yeah. kind of blowing up, you know, with um, and Justice, but yeah, they were amazing. Though. Yeah, but but that was it for me. I and I've never really gone back. I've tried bits and pieces of the catalog after and I heard the last one was okay. Just doesn't it doesn't yeah. feel the same. I go back to this way more. Yeah. Yeah, sure. yeah. Yep. Okay. Well, uh, yeah, I'm gonna go with my favorite of this band just to get it out of the way. Mm, might see that soon. <laughs> Great album. So, Best yeah, album ever. Amazing yeah. album. So don't need to say more, and since we are already an hour in soon, so we can just go on. <laughs> ah, dude, that, I mean, let's be honest. That album is fucking flawless for yeah. me, I think. I mean, and all you people about the Heaven Can Wait, eat it, all right? Get out uh, of here. Great it's song. The course. the course is a little repetitive. Eat it. It's yeah. a killer album. It's a no, killer no. Album. Uh, uh, long Distance Runner. Uh, fuck, I always fuck up that title. Oh, that song yeah. rules, Alexander man. the Great. Stranger in a Strange World. <laughs> Strange. Yeah. Strange land. land, isn't it? Strange land. Yeah. I thought it was world. Is it world? Uh, land. land. Ah! <laughs> Nick, you're out of here. Anyway. Oh. <laughs> yeah, you're going to see that one again soon from me. Eric, what you got? Okay, I kind of went chronological with mine. So okay. we cool. already we already discussed these guys a little bit. Um, and, uh, I mean, it's, it's hard as hell to pick an album, right? Because the first few are pretty bluesy uh definitely kind of more of an influence on stoner metal and doom metal and stuff like that and then they kind of got weird like volume four uh sabbath bloody sabbath and this one are all kind of weird and experimental and then they went way off the rails with the next couple but 
Um, I mean, there's a lot of just straight up heavy metal stuff on here, though, like Hole in the Sky, um, Symptom of a Symptom of the Universe. I mean, that's like, mm. yeah, almost thrashy, sort of in a way. But yeah, I don't know. This is just my favorite Sabbath album, and I, get it. I don't know. It, again, you could you could argue that it's proto metal or it's hard rock. I think for me, they just tip the scale with the the kind of um, intensity of it, uh, the darkness kind of. They're a little more dark than a lot of the '70s bands, and the guitar tone as well. You compare it to something like Deep Purple or Uriah Heep or something. There is more distortion on the guitar as well. So I don't know. This is kind of a weird album, kind of proggy, but I don't know. It's yeah. maybe my favorite Sabbath album. And if I'm doing a top 10 heavy metal albums, I have to have Sabbath personally. That's fine. So. I get it. I get it. Although I would make the argument that the more heavy metal albums of Sabbath are the Dio albums, the Mob Rules. Wow. Well, we'll get to that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I I, yeah. I could have done that, but uh, I wanted I wanted Ozzy and Dio, so this was my That's way. It's not a problem. I that, get so. it, man. The totally rip totally, is totally such a banger. Yeah, every That's song cool. on on oh. that album rules for yeah. me. Uh, yeah, am I going insane? Okay, mm -hmm. Mexican radio DJ man, I, I respect your opinion. It's not a good one, uh -oh. but I respect it. But uh, yeah, I do not do not hear that at all on that album and but i get where you're coming from in that maybe they started to sort of tail off but i'm actually a big fan of seven sun as well too i think it was more their proggiest the, the entry into the prog period although it probably started with power slave but but you could also argue that it started on peace of mind too so i mean there's you know a lot of arguments to be made there so um i th i thought of the word that i was gonna that i was trying to find sinister Sabbath is more sinister than a lot of the other '70s bands to me. That's a good. That's a good word. Absolutely for sure, Johnny. Let me uh, unmute you, sir. Hold on. What's got? Yo, apologies for delay. Do you want me to do a quick the amble shit, or should we just get on with the album? No, nah, I think we're just gonna get rolling since we are an hour in. We'll, we'll maybe before you dip out, we'll give you a quick because yeah. you said you got to run. What time do you got to run? <laughs> Uh, Hold on, I'll, I'm, I'll let you issues. I'm gonna got, bounce out and bounce back in. I've got a good couple of hours anyway. Okay, two two and a half hours or so. So I'm good. I've said so okay, take sounds good. On home, so right, I'm gonna go totally left to center. Uh oh. Oh. Um, I must admit, initially doing this, I couldn't work out what the hell traditional metal and heavy metal was, even though obviously <laughs> being nearly the same age as Jeff, I've grown up, and that's the music I got into, and that. But I've had lots of drunken conversations at gigs in these last three weeks, four weeks, couple of months, whatever, chatting to guys saying, who the fuck do you call traditional metal? Who do you call heavy metal these days? And anyway, to be honest, I could have just chosen new wave British heavy metal bands because that's sure. what I grew up. Of course. They all could have been British. They all could have been from the 80s, maybe not classed as the web, the wobbin, but they could have, could have all been British. Tried to mix it up a bit. Um, the first one... I don't even know if anyone's ever heard of them, but I'm going for that anyway. I'm going for Zojet Mind Warp. Okay. Oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, these were kind of lumped in with the, the glam thing. They never wear. Uh, the music sounds like ACDC, maybe a bit hardier, harder, a bit grungier. They, they went for the, the biker look. Um, they all had stupid names. Um <laughs> Slam Thunder Hide and all that kind of thing. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, this is just great stuff. As I said, it's full of guitar solos. I think the Prime Mover single, uh, the video to it was produced by Bruce Dickinson, if I remember. Hmm. Um, had Aid Edmondson from The Young Ones in it. Oh. Uh, it's just, yeah, they're, I remember they're, they're, them. They were a time and place. It's, as I said, some people call them glam. I think it's, it's just proper classic heavy metal it's got that acdc lifts in it i think the um the bass player i saw him playing with the cult back in the 80s on the electric tour so, just just good stuff it's yeah just, billy morris is that who it is oh i can't the, i can't remember the guy's name he had another stupid name I was, I was sort of like poor <laughs> yeah they were they were big like, darlings in kerrang around that era i remember yeah, all yeah. the time in kerrang yeah yeah I was like, what's the bloody guy's name? Gotta be honest with you, I don't remember them. 
like no, it was a very, very UK like. thing, very British thing. They were all over yeah. the place. I saw them play quite a few times. Uh, I had a mate that moved down to London. I went down there and we saw them play live at some shitty little venue, and they were just fucking great. All there with the leather jackets, lip jeans, just going for it on stage. ACDC lifts, yeah. just heavy metal uh but as i said they get lumped everybody seems to lump them in with the glam stuff so ignore them but they're not they're just yeah. just heavy metal for me so i thought i'd chuck that one in as a left to center one since we're not going to do a glam island i thought oh, this is about the closest i can get in there so we there might we do glam we'll do island that. who said we weren't doing glam island <laughs> oh well, sure. grind island you didn't want to do wasn't it jeff grind it was island. grind island yeah now, maybe that's, me and Nick want to do Grind Island, but I, I don't know who else is up for it. But well, I, you uh, guys can license the uh, the name from me, and you guys can do Grind Island. You ain't gonna find me on Grind Island. I apologize. No, that's not a place good. you'd like to be, is it? No, I like to no, on not. the island. All right, Dennis. You, Dennis, is gonna show my first pick because there's a couple of them that I just did not want to hunt around for. So let me pull Dennis up here quick. There we go. And my 10th pick, which I didn't want to leave it at 10th, but man, I fucking love this album. And it's just a, an ass-kicking fucking metal album, I think. And I will, before you show it real quick there, Dennis, uh, before you show it, Dennis and I did uh, this album, uh, this band, rather, in one of our Forgotten Metal Gems of the 80s and 90s series. And I think we both kind of gushed pretty uh intensely over this album um so here it is la band warrior mm -hmm. fighting for the earth man this fucking album just absolutely rules amazing singer just stunning singer perry mccarty um this came out i believe in 85 dennis yeah 85 yeah 80, um, 85 or 84 Maybe it was 85. Yeah, it was 85. Okay, that's what I thought. Um, every song on this album, with the exception of the very last one, Welcome Aboard, is a banger, man. It gets off the, the ground with, you know, because we are fighting for the earth. It's just so fucking epic and killer. Yeah, Only the Strong Survive. Yeah, Ruler is a badass track. Mind Over Matter might be the kind of semi-play for radio vibes but it's still very heavy and then you got defenders of creation man defenders of creation <laughs> i'm gonna sing the whole thing jeff with my shit i'm gonna sing um <laughs> and then you got the best song on the whole fucking album day of evil man day of the evil so fucking killer coal fire is great it's just it doesn't sound glammy, right, Dennis? There's no glamminess no, to there's this. There's no thing. glam on it at all. No, it's, it's more of heavy. a hard rock, heavy metal record. But it's I think it leans way more into metal than it does yeah, hard rock. Of course. Um, the riffs are heavy. Joe Floyd, kind of a phenom that almost ended up in Ozzy, or was he in Ozzy Ozzy for a little while? I think he was. I think he played when Randy Rhodes died. He subbed in very shortly for um, before Gillis came in. I can't. It was either him or Bernie Torme. I can't remember what. Uh, somehow Floyd was being looked at for Ozzy at one point in time, I do believe, and and but he didn't end up going. But uh, man, what a fucking killer album! Warrior fighting for the earth. Uh, Kellen, do you know that one? I don't. I there was a couple of records though that I was like, how much California do I want to leave in this list? Because I could have done an entire whatever traditional heavy metal from California. So I I limited my options here but do you know this album though yeah yeah there's okay, one I, I i picked in its place but okay all right okay and i matt i'm assuming you know it what's that matt i'm assuming you know that one right a little bit yeah matt R roger you probably gotta know that one too no you don't no. know that ah oh, dude no. gotta <laughs> gotta dig in on that one man i mean yeah you, you guys you older dudes should know that one it's fucking one of those Kind of like Lost Gems, in, like I said, the, you know, the Lost Gems of the 80s and 90s. Killer, killer album. So that's number 10 for me. And I don't know if they did another album. Rick and I were – and actually, I owe Rick – did. They did. I thought they did a later album that we took. We didn't actually review it because it was quite a bit later, right? Yeah. Um, I'll look that up in a minute and find out what that was. But, uh, yeah, man, just a fucking banger of an album, I think. Um, and actually, I owe Rick – 
for reminding me about this album. I was like, fuck, dude, how did I leave that one off? So it was because of Rick that I remember this one last minute. And it was down in my honorable mentions, and I listened to it three or four times over the last two days. And I was like, yeah, that's got to go in the top ten. I just love this album. So okie doke. Dennis, numero dos. All right. Here we go again. Kind of, and you'll see my taste is kind of the same here, but uh, this is more uh, Battle Cry. US heavy yeah. metal again with Omen. Uh, this is the, yeah, always you can see it's very uh, Tolkien influenced, sword and sorcery type heavy metal, which I kind of lean to. Kind of, mm-hmm. I feel like, especially when I was a kid, like Dungeons and Dragons and this kind of shit just went together for me. Plus, I was really into like Conan, the Barbarian, the movie. Sure. And the comics, so um, this kind of stuff just spoke to me, and this shit just rips, man. And I, I actually heard this band first from my cousin that just randomly bought it, and I was like, dude, that shit rules, because this cover, I probably wouldn't have bought the record just because I thought it was like probably too generic for me at the time, but he bought it, and I was like, man, that's, that's a killer record, man. Um, again, Songs like Death Rider, like everything's super catchy. If you could tell just by the song titles, Battle Cry, Prince of Darkness, Die by the Blade in the Arena. So it's just like watching a basically a sword and sandal movie um, on record and a gory one at that. So and we, we we did this one too, and we did this band and a good portion of their output from uh in our Forgotten Metal Gems series. Yep, and they have uh the second album's awesome too, and the EP. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. This band doesn't get enough credit. I mean, I do see a lot of people in the community do post this record, so um, I get it. But <clears throat> definitely try to pick this up if you guys haven't heard it. Pure heavy metal. Like, if somebody says, "Hey, can you recommend a heavy metal record?" Like, I'm gonna give them Omen. Like, this is heavy metal. Like, they took everything from great album. Yeah, new wave of British heavy metal to like the new like kind of us scene coming up and like like uh we were talking about even in the beginning like if you look at metal massacre like this would be a band and then underneath it would be like slayer so yeah. and it wasn't like it wasn't like when you're listening to it you weren't like oh wow that band sounds crazy heavy you were just like yep slayer and omen are the same yeah they all went together yeah yeah, yeah. it didn't it didn't like it didn't obviously it wasn't like <laughs> rain and blood slayer it was show no mercy slayer so uh, very heavy metal influence. So, and this just fit right in there with different vocals. So, definitely a fucking U.S. classic, right along with Warlord. Yep, killer, killer album. Um, Nick, before you go, real quick on Warrior, they put out a second album in '98 on. Uh, looks like it was on Dream Circle, called Ancient Future, and it did have Joe Floyd, uh, Paramore McCarty, Perry McCarty. And then it also had Roy Z. Everybody know who yeah. Roy Z is from uh, production fame and uh, Bruce uh, Bruce Dickinson albums. So, all right, Nick, what do you got? Uh, I mean, another band that no one knows, clearly. <laughs> Probably Never one you brought up. Um, J- Jadath's Pray It Press. I don't know. It's French or something. G- G- um, G- yes. Yeah. This this is uh, my favorite Judas Priest album, and this one, interestingly enough, like I got into Priest like super young, MTV age, watching music videos, my underoos, and seeing like Breaking the Law, and you got another thing coming. I was like, this is the first band I think I ever associated with the term heavy metal, like the look, the image, the sound. Yeah. Like, yeah, these guys are rough and tumble. I like this, but it wasn't until about like. God, 10, 15 years ago that I really got into like stuff pre-British Steel. And when I discovered like all the old stuff, I was like, dude, this this sound is just amazing because once again, this is another one that kind of borders on that hard rock to metal sound. Like it's really starting to push in a different direction. And I think this is like probably the big coming out party. Like I love Sin After Sin. Sad Wings of Destiny is glorious too, but this one, I mean, you really had the metal flavor. Like, I mean, right away, yeah, Exciter. Exciter has been credited as like one of the first speed metal songs. That double bass run, that riff is so damn good. And yeah, it's just the feel and the vibe of this album. I mean, uh, of course, Beyond the Realms of Death, one of the best yeah. songs yeah. they've ever written. Yeah. But yep. I'm a big fan of Savage. 
Saints in Hell, the title track, the chorus on that is yeah. so damn good. And Rob Halford owns. Rob Halford still owns. I don't think that's up for debate after the new one. But uh, yeah, this is essential heavy metal in my mind. And in terms of like influencing like metal in general, like across the board, I think this is possibly one of their most influential because you hear all the pre uh, new album tropes in there, like the dual guitar harmonies. Like there's definitely stuff in here that the next wave of bands that came like, yeah, these guys kind of laid down a template for it. And yeah, it's, it's absolutely gorgeous. It was between this or screaming for vengeance just because I have such an attachment to that album, but I had to go with this because I don't know there's just something magical about this one. And again, like coming out in the seventies and kind of still being a part of the hard rock pack, but definitely pushing its way out and kind of forming something fresh and new and something that would be, pretty much copied and you know like this this is the blueprint right here and sure. uh, it, yeah it's fantastic start to finish like it's it's my favorite juice free song hands down all right anybody got anything to say about that i have a judas priest that's my favorite yeah. sentimental favorite but i picked a different album because so i listen to this other album a little bit more so uh logan damn nick lightning strikes twice how do we know oh. the same small small bands <laughs> i don't Mm. I don't know how this keeps happening. We go to the same record stores, I guess. Like, we look for the deep cuts. Must be, yeah, yeah. I, Are you I guys going to Ohio. get at the end of the show? Or? It, this, this would don't be, be the jealous. soundtrack right here. I don't know. <laughs> but yeah, had had to talk about Judas Priest. This this is not my favorite one, but it's to me it's an underrated album in their discography, and it's not talked uh, enough. I think I'd for true number one, I'd pick like Screaming for Vengeance, but I figured someone else would pick that one. So hopefully someone comes through in the stream <laughs> later on. No, 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 no pressure, guys. Uh, because I'm, I'm hoping that makes it to this island. But I, I had to make sure that uh, Killing Machine uh, joined. And to highlight the kind of controversy around this real quick. So this is my LP, is Killing Machine. But then the CD is Hellbent for Leather. So had, they had to had to change the name. Both, both great songs. But I love... Uh, the vibe on this album right here. This definitely fits just 80s, 80s sleaze. And there's a good uh, variety of like priest tracks. You got like the more straightforward hard rock sound still on here, like Delivering the Goods, uh, Rock Forever, Take on the World. And then you got more of their actual heavy metal like staples, like Hellbent for Leather, Killing Machine, and then of course Running Wild, probably the one a very important song for uh, for metal, I would say, and then the the, the more uh, sexual overtones of Priest kind of starts to sneak in on this album. The uh, I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah, I I don't know if you guys listen, but there's it, you know there's some love making songs on here where of course it's we don't know who the person is that we're making love to, but you know it's, it's up for interpretation, I guess. <laughs> Giving them the raw deal. Uh-huh. Uh huh. Bur burning up the evil fantasies. Is not on there, right? Never mind. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> is that what that's about? Never mind. Never mind. Uh, rock hard, ride free. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we might be talking about that album soon. Just we so. might. Yes. Right. Yep. But yeah, top. Uh, All right. Top Judas Priest album for sure. Nice, 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 nice. nice. But delivering right. the goods is such a banger. I love. Oh, I love delivering the goods. Callan. All right, I got your love making right here. Animal Magnets. Oh, oh nice. there it is. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> this, for me, like if I'm going to reach for a Scorpions record, it's always Magnetism. Um, and there are some interesting, like weird, like I don't know what Lady Starlight is, uh, mm -hmm. what happened on that track. That's the only song on the album that kind of fucks it all up a but, little bit. But the closing duo, oh, uh, the Zoo. Uh, okay. The guitar and vocal play during the chorus, where he, like he'll finish a line and you get a weird little extension guitar lead, like mm -hmm. after it's just a perfect sort of relationship during the chorus in that song. Yep. Um, and the uh, his like vocal, like acrobatics, he's like almost whispering or cutting a line short during the verse. It's just beautiful work during that song. I love the zoo. The slut show this and that is animal magnetism. I love that amazing song. song. Um, like just the carnal ache 
of that riff, um, that the main riff that leads in, it is like as much as it would be insinuated on the album cover here, it is all over that closing track. Um, it's just a, I, I, I absolutely, I can't think of a traditional heavy metal record that closes with that much conviction. Like both those songs are such a knockout of the park. Yeah. Um, I, I would I would trade those that moment in the Scorpions catalog for any other sort of two song stack to, to, together. Um, absolutely. This is always a Scorpions record. I'll grab um, this. I mean, lots of classics, but and I think uh, it hits an, an interesting point in their sort of their discography, you know, right before uh, their next album. You know, Blackout is such, such a classic, like well manicured, very succinct heavy metal listen. Um, this one's a little bit just prior to that. So it's always animal magnetism when I grab scorpions. Uh, that title track is so good though. Make love to me. Oh <laughs> well the, the cover's hilarious. I still think it involves peanut butter and a bet or something. <laughs> well I you know what though you didn't miss you didn't mention what to me might be the banger track on the album which is um Falling in love, man. God damn. There are plenty of it's it's those two songs though. For me, it's all I get it. I get it. They're monster, monster tracks, but falling in love and hold me tight, two of the under the 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 tracks that don't get talked about enough of of that. And again, it's not my favorite album. I don't Eric, do you remember where I put this? Do you remember? I I you won't remember, but I don't remember either. But it's up there. It's really up there with, you know, In Trance is my favorite album by them because it's that Uli era shit that I love. And then you've got, um, fuck, I always forget the name of this album. The one with Sales of Sharon on it. Um, oh, Taken by Force. Uh, Taken by Force. Force. Taken yeah. by Force is right there too. Yep. And then, of course, you know, I mean, Blackout is just so classic. But, but this album may have some of the most standout Scorpion tracks of all. But it's got fucking Lady Starlight on it, which kind of just absolutely pisses me off on that album. I, I it's just, ugh. it's odd. cringy, cringy, man. Great pick, great pick though, Kellen. And if you have not heard it, check out Testament's cover of Animal Magnetism. Uh, yeah, I've heard it, and it, it oh. completely works. It completely works, but oh, uh, it's fucking yeah. evil sounding, man. I haven't heard it. Damn it, I'm gonna <laughs> yeah. check that out. It's a, it's like in C standard too or something. So it's like super dark and menacing sounding. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we are at Matt. Yep. <clears throat> All right. My number nine choice is this guy right here. Uh huh. High and yeah. dry second album. Amazing. It's definitely the sweet spot between this sort of Nawabum stuff on the first album. There's sort of more radio ready stuff on Pyromania. It's kind of a nice sweet spot between the two. Uh, I think Hypnosis did the cover, if I'm not mistaken. Yep, they did. Yep, you did. Storm. They also did some Scorpions covers, obviously. Mm -hmm. uh, last album with Pete Willis. Uh, I just think there's a little more rawness and a little more energy in this record overall. If you had asked me in 1984, my favorite Def Leppard album is, I probably would have said Pyromania. But I guess we all grow up someday. And no, it's by like far it. my favorite, by far. Yeah. Oh, yeah, mine too. And you're going you're gonna to see that again soon. Oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, let's be honest, man. Every track on that album, save maybe the final track, No, 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 yeah. is a banger. Is a yeah. fucking banger. Every I track. love Mirror Mirror a lot. I love Lady oh, Strange a lot. Lady Strange. Strange. Yeah. That's the one. Yeah. Yep. And switched 625. Bring uh, on the heartbreak, yeah. man. Fuck. I mean, bring on the heartache's awesome. Yeah. Yep. 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 Killer, killer, killer stuff, man. Yeah, that yeah. is, you know, that's the album that, in my opinion, put them on the map. Yeah. The, the first album had wasted and hello america yeah. but it was you know i never go back to that album even though it was my first album by them yeah. um i if i go do leopard it's almost 98 percent that album right there yeah these days for me as well yeah so yep okay yeah i don't know how they're not metal mexican radio i, I just don't get that like, they're absolutely new wave of british heavy metal yeah. metal so i mean i'm not picking on you i'm for just sure. seeing your comments and going yeah i don't i don't really I really, I they definitely were in that metal zone of the of the early '80s. Um, 
I still love Pyro. I feel like if you were younger and you're like looking back in the rear view, maybe you could see them as not being metal because my first exposure was pour some sugar on me and God, that's not yeah, that's sorry. terrible. That's not I high and dry. Bad. I know. I feel terribly bad for you, Logan. See, that's, well, that's you, what man. I was talking about in the beginning. Now I can sound old again. See, because when high and dry came out, you were like, that that was metal, man. It definitely was metal. Um okay. Oh, wait, what do I do here? Yep. I think photograph <laughs> was probably the first. Death Leopard song I ever heard. That doesn't help either. That doesn't like, help. Oh, I like that yeah. song. Oh no! Are you going with that? Interesting. Yeah. Oh, oh. I love you, man. I love you, man. I love <laughs> that T album. Fuck yeah. That. TNT, as we say it, or TNT, as you would say it, but um, yeah, uh, eighty-four heavy metal album for yeah. me. Um, Seven Seas, Break the Ice, Tour with a Hammer, uh, Last Summer's Evil. And you know, uh, deadly metal. It's not death metal, but <laughs> deadly metal. So uh, yeah, just a killer, killer album, killer guitar work. With oh my god, uh, Ronnie Latek. How do yeah, you say his name? Fantastic. How do you say his name in, yeah. in Norwegian? How would you say it? Uh, it's Ronnie Letekre. Letekre. Okay, yeah. yeah. What a fucking monster guitar player! That yeah. like, if you don't know this band, you just don't understand how insane that dude was. Yeah, for the yeah, 80s like yeah he's the eddie van halen of norway without question yeah he got praised by all you know very clapped and everybody praised him highly as a yeah. guitar player so he was yeah just a fantastic or he still is a good guitar <laughs> player but uh and uh tony hanel's you know high pitch they, they uh, brought vocals. the american singer over and he had yeah. the, the goods to deliver and a yeah. lot of great albums a little more on the poppy side maybe in the deaf leopardy zone to a degree but later when they get further in but that album is pretty yeah, dark this and, and heavy this and tell no tales are pure heavy metal then uh, they they kind of got a little bit softer after mm -hmm. those albums but yeah but and and also you didn't me mention eddie the song eddie eddie likes yeah. torture and pain and then you got uh, last summer's evil oh my god dude the guitar histrionics on Last Summer's Evil make owning that album worthwhile anyways because the solo's disgustingly fucked up. It's so ridiculous. It's insane, man. Yeah, well, he's pick, kind man. of he was extremely fast as well. If you listen to Tell No Tales, uh, you know, uh, that that song, uh, that uh, solo there is so insanely fast. So but uh, very, yeah. very melodic and very, very yeah. clean. Very clean. Yeah, yeah, he's extremely good guitar player. So yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, TNT, badass fucking album, man. That is a great album. If you're going to get one TNT album, that's probably the one to get or Tell No Tales, yeah. maybe, or Initiation. Those are the three. There's going to be a deep dive on TNT one of these days coming up, one of these days. So um, good pick, Roger. Very good. All right, what you got, Eric? I'm definitely going to have to check out TNT. I've never listened to them. Oh, you'll all, love them, so. dude. You'll love them. You'll love them. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Okay, so I mentioned I wanted to get Ozzy and uh, Dio in here, and to be completely honest, I do really like some Ozzy and Dio solo albums, but the Sabbath stuff and this are where it's at for me. Um, I could have picked, uh, uh, oh my god, Lock, <laughs> Long Live Rock and Roll, but this one too, I mean, this, I don't know, this is kind of the beginning of epic metal, if you want to yeah call it that and one thing that was interesting to me when i was thinking about whether to include this or not it was kind of borderline um i don't know if it would quite qualify without dio you know if it was a different singer on here yeah i don't think it would dio, dio yeah. is just one of those guys he just takes it to that next level yep. of epicness and intensity and man i mean a lot of this album you could say is hard rock, especially you run with the wolf, starstruck. Do you close your eyes? Tarot woman, I think is a, a heavy metal song, just straight up hard driving fast. And then man, stargazer and light in the black. Oh. I mean, those, those are like for 76, when this came out, that's the most epic, uh, heavy it's, it's heavy metal. It's absolutely yeah. heavy metal. Maybe not a hundred percent, all the way through the album, but those two songs even are enough for me to include this. So, yeah. yeah I mean, I, I explained why I didn't include them, but I was never going to say no to that because you yeah. know, if, if you guys 
well, Eric, you know me pretty well in our conversations we've had. That's a top three, top five album for me. Yeah. All time. All time. Yeah. Stargazer alone. That, yeah. that alone. Yeah. Although, yeah. Yeah. although I'll make the <laughs> argument right here and now that Long Live Rock and Roll is actually a stronger album, Soup to Nuts. Yeah, you might be right, Jeff. I, and, I, yeah. And additionally, you brought up the key ingredient. Ronnie James Dio was, is, to me, will always be the greatest heavy metal singer of all time. And I think if we went out and pulled 5,000 metalheads, I don't even think it would be that close. Bruce would be in there. Rob would be in there. But I think Dio would win that thing hands down. I, did, I just do. So Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I think Long Live Rock and Roll might be my favorite as well. But I would say this one's maybe a little bit more of an influence on... Heavy Agreed. metal in Agreed. general. Agreed. Yep, yep. Without question. Good pick, man. Good pick. Johnny Mac. Yo. Um, well, I'm going to stay with sort of new album type stuff because um, I had two bands I was going to pick here. Uh, I was going to go Tigers of Pantang, but I'm in the process of moving my stuff into storage because we're having a big extension done here. So uh, I can't find my Tigers albums. So they didn't come in. Mm. So I'm going with this one. Which is probably right. one of my favorite mm. covers of all time. Okay. Now, obviously, if you know this album, it doesn't sound like the cover. Right. But <laughs> yeah. when I saw this and said, I, I am old enough to have bought this when it first came out. Um, and me and my mates went to the record store looking through stuff. It's like, oh my God, this must be the heaviest thing ever. <laughs> it obviously wasn't. Yeah, but it's just the the atmosphere, and especially when it kicks off with Full Moon, the instrumental, it, it gets you that atmosphere, and you're expecting something so heavy. Yeah, I gotta grab um, this, and it's it's bordering on hard rock. Let's be serious, but it is heavy metal, and most definitely, especially the track "Night of the Demon" is an absolute beast of a song. Yeah. You got that intro, right. and then it clicks into that with the proper Nawabum sing along vocals and all the. The guitar sounds like it's just a great album. It's, it's a bit cheesy, like all good heavy metal should be. Uh, it finishes off with One Hell of a Night, which is just a British drinking song almost, you know, talking about going out and getting absolutely slaughtered. But no, yeah, no, it's just a great album. And as I said, it's it's one that I've had for a very long time. It's been with me. And I've, I've always just, I said the cover just every time, I just can't stop looking at it. It's just... When you think yeah. how, you know, this came out 1980, 81, something like that, I think. Just, it was just something else. And, you know, you, you just like expect. A, looks like expect a later his, carcass. Looks like yeah, a later yeah, carcass. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, sort of zombies coming out of the. You're thinking like it's a death metal and, album. Yeah, it does, does. But, you know, it was obviously well before death metal came out. So you just looked at it as, as a, like, it, so I would have been probably 13 something like that when this came out and it's like fuck me i've got to buy that you know and you bought one album a, a week with your pocket money and this one was coming home with me i can't remember what we made for but i was having this one and, and obviously when you only have one album you listen to it all week and then if you can't get another one the next week you listen to it again and you don't stop listening to them and at the, back then this was just as i said i didn't know that there was heavier stuff out there so it was just absolutely brilliant heavy metal and i was at the heavy metal was you know i was i i was into that thing the first album i bought was metal for mothers it was i had made and it, it was saxon it was judas priest it was demon it was it, it, a demon were like a new band and as when you're the kid you want new bands you don't really want the old farty bands that all the old people like you want new bands that are your band and demon <laughs> was my fucking band back then so there you go yeah i gotta pick that out i one. always forget about that and I've, i haven't had that since way back in the 80s when i had cassettes and i lost it somewhere so that's great yeah, second one it. second one's good as well unexpected yeah. guest i've got that hanging about somewhere but uh, the first one's the one that always comes back the second one's actually probably a better album but it's the first one that comes back to me because i'm flicking through them and go no nah, i'm having that one it's got a better cover i'll listen to that again so i was gonna yeah, say back in the early 80s that album cover must have scared the dog shit out of parents <laughs> they were. That was one of them. <laughs> but uh, you know, I think it was on the same record label as Saxonware. Yeah, Cadera here Rare. in the UK. Yeah. So it was. It was. It was one of them. It was like readily available. And you're looking through them. It's 
obviously, like everyone, you start at A anyway. So by the, at the first sort of lack, you know, on that heavy metal stuff, A, B, C, sort of get, when you get to D, that was, that was, you'd always, like with your favourite, when you go to a record stop, when you're a kid, you get all your favourite ones and you bring them to the front of the pack. So, so anybody that comes in, like you'd like to go, well, I'm going to put the cool ones that I like at the front, unless you was the only one there and you wanted to buy it. You put it at the back, so when you got your money. But I just, you just like to go I through. Put it in the country and, section. Yeah, <laughs> we didn't have many of them in the UK, if I'm honest. Back in the 80s, country Lucky. wasn't a big thing in the UK. Honestly, we just, it was just, you didn't have country sections. It wasn't, a, wasn't a thing. It was just pop, or or rock, and then heavy metals coming in. We we didn't get country sections, so we're lucky, I guess. Oh, good pick. Good disco, pick, guy. More room for good stuff than if you didn't have a country section. Exactly. Yeah. Lot of, okay. Lot of disco, though. <laughs> All right. In the U.S., I think there's few bands that kind of exemplify the tag of traditional heavy metal. Uh, you, I, there's man. I, this album, I think most would argue there's one album that's better, and I wouldn't disagree with that. But this album, there's something about this album, man, it's always stayed with me. It's one of my my favorites of the era. Uh, to my ears, one of the very, very best, absolute best traditional metal U.S. Uh, singers, and that is Armored Saint yeah. and Raising <laughs> Fear. Uh, this fucking album just, man, Dave Pritchard on guitars. Rest in peace, Dave. Fuck, dude, this album, man. <laughs> First of all, it's John. It's John Bush. I don't know. Do I have to say anything more other than John Bush? Because that fucking guy just absolutely slays, and he is he's on it here. Starts out with raising fear. God damn, that song rules. They do a cover. That's already you're like, uh oh, a cover on the third album, or I think was this her third? Yeah, third album. Yeah. It's like, oh man. But they do Saturday Night Special. And I defy you to say it's not better than the Leonard Skinner track by far. It kicks ass. And then you get into uh, out, on a, out on a Limb, Killer, and then the banger track of the album, Isolation. Oh, my God. Just fucking insane. The screams that John Bush lets out on Isolation. And the rest of the album, man, Chemical Euphoria, Killer crisis of life, then you got frozen will and legacy. The, the oh man, human vulture, book of blood. Yeah, the only song that lets this album down is the last song, Underdogs. I don't love it, but man, I struggled. I'm like, I gotta put some armored scene in now. Many would argue, and they wouldn't be wrong, that Symbol of Salvation is probably their best overall album, maybe even their heaviest album because that album fucking slays. But this is the one that almost every time I want to hear some Saint, which is a lot. I love Armored Saint. This is the album I reach for. That artwork is fucking killer. Armored fucking Saint, man. This album rules. Well, I agree. Looks like I'll be playing off of that one next. <laughs> good, good, good. All right. You like that pick, Dennis? I do. Not my favorite, but great record. All right, what you got? Okay, I got, which is probably my favorite record by this band. And I don't, I mean, it's not influential as far as heavy metal goes, but for me, when this record came out, this was like the fucking shit, man. And that's a Judas Priest Defenders. Ah! Man, this record. <laughs> every song. Love that man, album. Yep. Such a banger, dude. Uh, Free Will burning all the way to Defenders of the Faith. I mean, and this album cover with the fucking bulldozer, oh, yeah. fucking, I don't know what that is. Lion yeah. bull tank. Lion tank. Italian. <laughs> it reminds me of uh, like some Playboy art back in the 80s. Right. Uh, Glossy. Right. You know. <laughs> this record, like every song on it, like it almost sounds almost like a concept record because every song kind of interchanges with each other all the way to the last song. Um, and maybe that's just the way I interpreted it when I first like heard this record, but uh, I still love this record. I'm not, I, and I won't say this is going to be my record. I pick every time I pick Judas Priest because I love all the early right. stuff as well. Um, but for me, this was like a turning point in like 
I want to be like a heavy metal guy because of this record. And and their image and everything at this time, especially like on the video for um, uh, what was the song on here? Some heads are gonna roll where. Mm-hmm. You know, he's on the bridge and like it's super cheesy, right? But um for some reason, like when you're a kid, that shit just speaks to you and you're like, fuck, dude, this this album's a banger. Like, and I still love this record to this day. I think it's obviously super like overproduced and very almost in that Death Leopard Pyromania type phase where like everything was if you go back and listen to records like early priest and early, even early Def Leopard. They have more of a less produced sound, but um, well, it's it it's mostly the drums on that album. Yeah, yeah. The drums have a real '80s, right? Really fucking hollow, snary, flap sound to them. It's the only thing about that album, and you're gonna see this one again coming from me. Yes, I will. Love this album. Yeah, <laughs> and I get, and that's kind of the charm of this record is it has at that '80s feel, um, almost like a MTV feel to it. Uh, but See, it's I, not. It's, I was gonna, it's still heavy as well. So mm-hmm. um, yeah, I was going to say though, um, Tim said heavily front loaded. I disagree, man. Mm. I mean, you got night comes down. You got some right? heads are gonna roll. You got defenders of the faith. Eat me alive. The Eat only song alive. here I don't know at all off the top of my head is heavy duty. That's the only one I can't think. Oh of. well, because that was just like a, it's part of defenders. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's part of yeah. defenders. Yeah. That's right. It's the intro there, but um. Yeah. Everything else, man. Jawbreak, ride hard, ride or rock, rock hard, ride free. And let's be honest, man. For me, the greatest fucking priest song ever. Sentinel. The Sentinel. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So yeah. I mean, that's all you need to know. The riffs in the Sentinel and Rob screams on the Sentinel. Fuck it, man. It's over right there. It's yep. done. You know. Yep. So yeah, I, that's my pick. It's coming up a little higher in my <laughs> uh, my role here. So. Um, have it yeah, too. Great pick, Dennis. It sounds like Matt's going there as well. Yeah. Um, yeah. All right, Mr. Mr. Nick. Uh, I just want to say, uh, Scream for Vengeance to Defenders, like one of the best two album runs for right. any band. Like, yeah. Oh, Screaming me. could have easily been there too. And mm-hmm. yeah. ah, I mean, that one's that one's like so much '80s joy for me. But uh, yeah, I'm gonna just play off of Jeff here because. I ain't going to fucking heavy metal island without John Bush's vocals, flat yeah. out. Like one of my favorite singers uh, in metal, period, in rock, period. Like I would say one of my favorite singers. But this, I'm, honestly, I would say it's their best. Like I love hmm. Symbol of Salvation. I think the first album, the, the debut, Our is great album. Spoken. Yep. Delirious but, Nomad has a lot of great tracks on it too. Yeah. Man. Weird cover. I always look at that as like, is that Maynard yeah, James yeah. Keenan? Um, but. <laughs> <laughs> this album just, I don't know, it, it, I think there's like a, a more vicious punch that it packs. Like the guitars really snarl on it. There's like just a good biting energy to every track in here. I mean, Chemical Euphoria is one of my favorites. Out on a Limb, instant hook. Instant, great chorus hook. Uh, and bold to have a cover as your second track. But, I mean, yeah, they, they crush it. It's a killer it. cover, though, man. Yeah, dude, Book of Blood. Possibly uh, one of my favorite ones, Frozen yeah. Will slash yeah. The Legacy. Dude, the song in here is so damn oh, good. Dude, Isolation, man. Isolation. Come on, man. That whoa, whoa, and that isolation. And his, his vocals, like in terms of like most of these heavy metal vocals, in terms of the vocalists that I've picked, in terms of the albums here, his gruffness, his gruffness kind of that made rasp. him. Like, he had this bluesy raspiness yep. to it. Like very leather lunged and kind of raw and throaty. I was like, yeah, like that yeah, sounds like a fucking man. All right, I can I can get behind that. That's awesome. And uh, honestly, uh, one of my first exposures to this band was Hellraiser Three because they were the band playing in the bar. Yes. Oh yeah. I just thought you know, and I, I kind judge. of. Yep. Yeah, dude. It was. <clears throat> yeah. You know, it, it was awesome and kind of a, a watershed moment for me because I ended up looking up some of their stuff. It's like, holy shit, this band's actually pretty damn awesome. Yeah, but the no. first thing I ever got with John Bush was Sound of White Noise. And yep. I, I honestly I love that album still. But yeah, th- this is just great U.S. heavy metal, groove-laden, hookier than hell. Joy Vera, amazing bassist. Don't even need to even say that because everyone yep. knows. Yeah, fantastic. 100%. Logan. We just passed 40 people, dudes. We're up to 41 nice. people. That's hey. great. 
Cheers, all. Uh, the real, real quick highlight uh, what Johnny was talking about. I'm glad Johnny mentioned uh, Demon earlier. I up until about 30 minutes before the stream, I had 11 albums, and it was it was painful to cut cut one. And the last, the one I ended up cutting was uh, the Unexpected Guest by Demon. So I'm glad they still got a mention. And I I cut it in for a different new wave of British uh, heavy metal album. I wanted to talk about this one instead. Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. Yep. Got Sick. it. Got to talk about uh, Angel Witch. Yeah. Th this might be totally that. <laughs> the most ex one of the most extreme of the new wave of British heavy metal albums. I mean, yeah, definitely. It's I think it's the heaviest and the most blistering and closest to I mean, I don't want to throw around proto thrash, but uh, maybe I do. <laughs> it's it's fast. It's kind of evil sounding too uh and probably the most like steeped in a cult like a lot of the other uh new album bands were like that biker brawler like uh bar bar room kind of scene and this was definitely not like that i mean even iron maiden at the time was you know singing songs like prowler and uh stuff like that but i mean this goes from uh there's a lot of mentions of uh Angels and witches in here. We got Angel Witch, White Witch, no, live. Angel of Death, yeah, uh, Sorceress, Gorgon, and yeah, all all just great heavy songs. I got, I love uh, Angel Witch. The title track might be the one of the catchiest songs ever. Created. Yeah, the chorus. Have you guys ever just had that song stuck in your head on repeat? Today, that was today. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> It will be tomorrow I, for me. Guaranteed. I saw them live about 10 years ago. I saw Angel Witch live about 10 years ago, and I've never heard a crowd sing that song so much. It was fucking awesome. Absolutely my brilliant. My favorite part is when they do the, the group chant at the, at yeah, the end. <laughs> and you can hear the, the British accent so heavy, yeah. too, yep. in, you know, awesome. in it. It's, yeah. It makes, makes me feel like I'm at like a, a concert or like a, a bar. Or something Hoisting like that. beers, yeah. Hoisting beers, yep. No, yep. Right. Uh, great pick, yeah. great pick. Yeah. One That's one that almost made the cut for me, but didn't quite. But um, hey, before we go further, Kel, I'm coming right back to you. Just one thing. Since we have 40-plus people here, I just want to point out a, uh, something. Um, go watch the video about the shirt announcement, please. Um, yep. Kellen, uh, Kellen, Lee G from Heavy uh, Art Talk. Designed a killer fucking t-shirt for gas masks and hand grenades. Rick, who's in the chat, did some layout work for it. The video really quick gives some details on it. And in the description, you'll find out how you can pre-order one. Um, you know, I'm not begging for your money. That's not it. The shirt, you're getting a really killer fucking shirt. Um, go check it out. Uh, you know, I tried to keep the cost as low as I possibly could. Uh Unfortunately, shipping is fucking insane worldwide. Um, so I do apologize for stuff going over the pond or anywhere else in the world. But uh, U.S. still fairly manageable and the price of the shirt still fairly manageable. So go check that out. It tells you how to get in a hold of me and put a pre-order in. We're going to do the pre-order for three or four weeks and uh, check that out since we got a, a pretty big audience here. I appreciate that. Okay. Hang on, Kellen. Okay. Okay. So I was very much wondering whether I should or should not pull this record. Um, but this is my island, right? So um, just because this time period in the uh, this sort of subgenres world is a little bit messy, but I'm uh, pulling the debut record from yeah. Wasp. <laughs> yeah. I was close to pull a Wasp album, but I didn't do it. You'll see it again. <laughs> yes. Uh, the. I mean, like the first two Motley Crue records, I think you can have like sincere arguments that a lot of those don't fall under the sort of the glam conversation. There's enough diversity in terms of the content on the on those records where they aren't that there's different. There's a bit there's some speed metal on this. There's um, a lot of sure hard rock moments, but this is very much for me a heavy metal record. Um, and when kind of thinking about like this time period, it'd be difficult for me not to pull a record of this ilk. Um, cause I mean, as much as you may, 
I think there's, it's fair to say like, this is the sound of a, a time period in heavy metals history. Um, because it potentially it had more commercial appeal, I get people may want to turn away from that, but um, it's difficult for me to sort of distance myself from what I associate with heavy metal and not think about, you know, Lizzie Borden or something like that, which are kind of another band that walks that line between. Very much. Yep. Almost made my cut. Right. So, um, but when I'm thinking about this time period for California, it's always the debut record from Wasp. And yes, if you missed uh, Jeff and I's conversation, I also do have the uh, <laughs> single there for you to enjoy. So right. love that song. <laughs> That's a badass song. It's weird that Blackie wrote that song about me. I, it's really strange. I don't know. <laughs> One chance encounter. <laughs> with blackie you mean yeah perhaps yeah, hopefully it wasn't wearing the cod piece he, well was, yeah, we, <laughs> we spent the night in the er just saying anyway Cal Callan's <laughs> island is sleazy that's all i know animal magnetism. i love it i love it Callan. i was i was gonna go there and and then i i didn't because they were kind of on that line because we will do a glam island and our, our wasp glam not hardly but <laughs> but but could they fit in? Yes, they could. So there you go. Yeah. Okay. Um, sorry, where am I at here? I am with Matt. Matt, yep. what you got? So my number eight album definitely has the distinction uh, in heavy metal as being the first metal album to reach number one on the Billboard 200 chart. 1983, Quiet Riot. Wow, look at you. Got to do it. It's the only Quiet Riot album I really need to own. I think the others are okay, but you get, it's diminishing returns as you go out. Oh, farther, sure. Farther with it. Um, what else about this album? Uh, great songs. I think uh, some of the better songs on here are the ones that aren't the hits. Uh, I really do like uh, uh, Run for Cover is a great song. A lot of the stuff on the B side. Um, what's another one? Um, Love's a Bitch. Great song Love as well. Love's a Bitch is great, yeah. Yep. You got to understand, when Matt and I were in high school, man, this – out, this is 82, right? 83. 83, right. So I'm a junior in high school. You're a freshman probably. Or, yeah. yeah. Still. Man, there. I mean, this just is all over the radio. You could not escape. Mama, come we're all crazy noise. now. You could come on, feel the noise. Slick black Cadillac. You just the couldn't. video was playing every other hour. Uh, exactly. TV or Night yep. Tracks or one of those other shows. I had the seven-inch single of Come On, Feel the Noise. Um, yeah. I think, you know, it's like a double pack thing, double yeah. single. Uh, I don't know if it came out less the well new, but it obviously came out in the UK. And yeah. I loved it. I thought it was absolutely brilliant. But weirdly, I've never purchased any other album apart from that one. That's the only yeah. one I, I, I needed. That's really I, all you need. I, yeah. If, yeah. Time and place. A lot of people think this is their first album. It's actually their third. They had the two third. albums in Japan. Yeah. Mm. They had Quiet Right and Quiet Right 2. They were Japanese only releases. So this is actually their third album. Mm -hmm. I like yeah. It. And and Tim or uh, I'm sorry, uh, uh, Mexican Radio asked, would they have cut through? That's a good question. Probably not. Maybe without that song, they might not have. Yeah. Um, it was kind of no. that song that really put them on the map and allowed yeah. MTV to do their thing. And remember, this is the early '80s, from you know '80 through '86 or seven. Yeah. MTV made and made and Love broke them. every band that ever. Yeah, I mean that was it. And in 1983, so. it was Quiet Riot and Def Leppard. Yeah, it was yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah, for sure. Okay, uh, we are up to Roger. Yeah, this next one is a weird one, and it really is actually two EPs formed into one album. Uh, one part is recorded 88, 89, and the other part is recorded 2013. But I still wanted to bring on Taivas from oh, Sweden. Never heard I of am, name I am all. This is uh, kind of evil and uh, cheesy at the same time, <laughs> heavy metal. Um, the lyrics are uh, is, is so evil that they are funny. Um, <clears throat> it's kind of the first track, uh, I am all. He's... He, uh, singing I am all and you are nothing. So that's kind of how it goes. Um, very catchy riffing and very cool. It's kind of like this. Uh, um, and also the side one is recorded live in studio. So you get a really cool sound of it. Uh, really a, kind of a more like a occult heavy metal album. Swedish, I would say. Swedish band you said? Swedish, yeah. 
Okay. I, I want you yeah. to actually type that one in the comments if you could. I can do that, yeah. So, uh, yeah, I really dig this album. And uh, it's, it's as I said, it's very, in a way, very cheesy and, uh, and kind of... Uh, easy done but it's very cool at the same time and it's it's so catchy you just uh want to listen to it over and over again and yeah i fucking love this album so, i uh, love cheese so it's all good for me yeah. that's that one I'll do. Yeah. <laughs> very cool very cool you that, that's one i none of us probably would have ever heard of or known of there all right we are at eric yeah another one i haven't heard of either oh all right, uh, still going chronologically. 77, I think this was. Great album. Uh, again, I mean, another band where, I mean, I could have picked Sad Wings, I could have picked Stained Class, I could have picked uh, Screaming for Vengeance, Defenders of the Faith, Painkiller. Um, so many great albums, but yeah. uh, this one is my favorite one today anyway. So <laughs> I don't know. I feel like this is a little bit of an underrated album. It just gets overshadowed overshadowed a little bit because of the fact it came yeah. out between sad wings and stained class um all three of those albums are total classics for me uh but this one for whatever reason is my favorite i don't know maybe it's just because i haven't heard there aren't any songs on here that you hear all over the all over the place or hear people talking about i mean priest in general is a weird thing for me because um like one of the things that we were talking about a little bit at the beginning um, with me being younger, for instance, uh, there's certain, you get, you still get certain blind spots, right? Because there's so much music that's out there. You, you go off in different directions and a band like Judas Priest was a, kind of a blind spot for me for a long time. I mean, I was listening to Sabbath in 2007 probably and i didn't really get into priest until about a decade after that um but i had a few songs on my ipod and whatever i had victim of changes and i had uh beyond the realms of death but i didn't have anything from this album so maybe it's just the fact that i i'm not as familiar with these songs as some of the other ones on other albums but uh sinner is just a oh, complete classic killer um, track I I love Diamonds and Rust. I know it's a cover. I love Joan it too. Baez Joan, cover. Joan Baez cover. Yep. Yeah. Weird song. Star to cover Breaker for metal Killer. Band. Yeah. Star, Star Breaker. Breaker. Last Rose I mean, of Summer. Yeah. Last Rose of Summer. Not a metal song at all, but nope. it fits somehow. Call for the priest. Yeah. The whole the whole second side, um, it's just intense. I mean, here come the tears is like a doom metal song kind yep. of. Dissident aggressor is just yes. short, yep. but like Monster. ripping. I. I think I heard the Slayer version first, actually, but um, yeah, me too. love me this too. one, too. I mean, just total classic album for me. Ten Should be mentioned that uh, Simon Phillips plays drums on this yeah. album. If you don't and know who Simon Phillips it. is, he's fucking amazing. One of the greatest drummers of all time, man. Yeah. It's a, one shame, of the earliest... he didn't... It's a shame. He was basically a studio guy for yeah. them. It was a shame that he didn't do more albums with them. Not that I don't like Scott Travis now and... Yeah, you know, Les Binks and all the other dudes were mm -hmm. Dave Holland were all solid, but Simon Phillips, there's something different about that album because of the drums. Yeah, in my opinion. just the intricacy in the drum performance, yeah. and yep. uh, also like the cymbal work and stuff. But also the like this is one of the earliest examples of prominent double kick mm -hmm. in metal, mm -hmm. which definitely yeah. was a big influence on a lot of the new album bands and stuff. I'm sure. So yeah, I don't know. It. I don't know the story. I don't. I believe. Phillips was a session guy back then, and I believe they did make a play to keep him, but he he, he it wasn't lucrative enough for him to to not do the session stuff. Um, yeah, where that was more. And then sure. now, if you don't know Phillips now, like his big claim to fame now, he's a jazz, predominantly a fusion guy, and his band Protocol is absolutely insanely good, man. Um, yeah, Simon Phillips, he's the difference maker on that album, and that is one yeah. of those, like you said, it's kind of the it flies under the radar for a lot of priest fans and it shouldn't because it's that incredible. So I, I think love that Kellen album. agrees with you and something tells me Kellen might be showing that album. So y y yeah, Mally May, <laughs> but a hundred percent, a hundred percent air. The yeah. first scream on distant aggressor, dude, like you yeah. fucking yeah. feel it. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, Johnny. Yeah. Johnny, right? Yeah. Yeah. I think so. Sorry. 
Okay. Um, yeah, uh, I, I'm pretty sure Nick showed this. I obviously came in fucking late anyway, but I've got to show yep. this. Mm -hmm. um, now, I think I'm probably one of the not many people in, me in the metal YouTube community that actually don't like Iron Maiden, um, which I have to clarify. I love Iron Maiden, but I don't like Bruce Dickinson's voice. Um, I know oh. most people think. No, I know most people think he's a fucking awesome singer. He just bugs the shit out of me, and I can't tell you why. You know how it is. Sometimes you get someone you just can't get on with. Sure. Yeah, yeah. I've tried. Um, I, I don't know. I love this band. First two albums I thought were brilliant. They are one of my favourite new wave of British heavy metal bands. They, as you say, you can't go to an island and talk about heavy metal and not talk about Maiden. But for me, they've only done two albums that I enjoy. Um, I didn't mind Number of the Beast. For me, Number of the Beast was a, a little bit like Back in Black in that, that it, it's obviously because I lived through these bands changing singers at the time. Sure. There was no internet. You only hear bits and bobs if your friends bought something or you, you, know, you go to the record shop and you get the guy to play something. Mm -hmm. Talking of which, that um, Wasp felt like a beast uh, single um me and my friends were in college at the time when that came out um we pop we used to go we used to skip college on the monday morning and go to the record shop and the guy behind the counter was a metal head and he used to show us all the latest stuff and that was something that he showed us and me and his mates all looked at it and go yeah we'll have a copy we didn't he, we did he said do you want us to play it I went nope that wasp single we're having it that cover is just sold anyway but this this is just uh, all killer no filler um, I'd love to say this is original, but obviously you can tell it's shiny and shitty. It's so the class mine got trashed. But I have got the tape, uh, the first two Maiden albums on cassette, but I can't get to my cassettes at the moment. I said they're in storage, so I'm, I'm just having to show what I've got at the moment in the house. No, but yeah, yeah uh, stuff like that, Child, Murders in the Loo Morgue. What a oh, song. Oh, yeah. Absolutely brilliant. You know, Killers. It's just, it's just there's no bad songs on here. Um, if I remember rightly, this has got a different track that wasn't on the original, but I, is it Prodigal Son? Prodigal Son. Yeah, yeah there, is a, there is an extra track or a missing track, UK yeah. and US, I can't remember. Yeah, yeah. Uh, was, you know, obviously, I've only had UK Press, isn't it? Missing, just say. Um, it's not was Prodigal it Son. I think it's Prodigal Son or Drifter? I, it's Twilight Zone, I think. Maybe. I was going to say Twilight Zone. Twilight Zone. Ah, yeah, it's not on here. No, Twilight not on Zone is not on Oh. Yeah. And so I mean, this must be the, yeah, this is a a, a lead test for the UK lead, lead test, obviously. Yeah, yeah, man, every song on this album's a banger. Yeah, absolutely brilliant. You just, and and, and Rath, Rath, Rath Child, you know, come on, man. Rath Eddie Child is Rath. iconic. You, you can't not, yep. you know. It, yeah, it, it, that's that's the best Eddie. Yeah, yeah, for me, it always yeah. has. I've got um some down here. I've got the Women in Uniform original twelve inch. Yep, I got that. Which, which is absolutely brilliant with Margaret Thatcher and some yep. nurses and Eddie about to probably kill them all. <laughs> but uh, yeah, absolutely brilliant. Just, just does anybody know that I, question? I, I, I think it's before, them. isn't it? Before, What's that? Japan, before mm -hmm. Killers. I think it's after uh, Killers, right? Yeah, what is? Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. after. It's after. It was. I said the women in uniform, twelve inches, absolutely brilliant. But yeah, yeah, you can't go along with it. And as I said, I, I just for me, Diano had that. Um, that punky edge and i yep. originally got into punk before i got into metal you know yep. i mean i sort of, oh. sort of 79 i got into music and it was just i got the tail end of the uk punk so the first single i bought was by the sex pistols so that's right. where yeah. i came from so i then just wanted noisier music and you know i started to hear iron maiden and saxon and and, and all these sort of bands coming up and it was just faster and that's what i what you know when you're the kid and you're the, uh, just getting into your teens and you hear music that grabs you. I just wanted something fast, and this that you know, the galloping and all that. Oh, fucking marvelous! Really good stuff. I said, I just, I just, unfortunately, just couldn't. I can't do Bruce Dickinson. You know, I have tried, and and it just uh, doesn't doesn't do anything for me. Sorry, guys. That's an interesting, interesting take. Um, okay, so for me, uh, number where are we at? Eight or seven? Seven. Seven. Yeah. Um, Matt, you want to? I'm gonna go with Matt's choice, last choice, which was High and Dry. Uh, believe it or not, of all the albums that we have, I do not own this one. Weirdly, I own Hysteria, I own the vinyl of oh, the uh, vinyl OG of One Through the Night, 
I have, you know, Hysteria and uh, Pyromania on CD. I have From the Vault, which has a couple of old tracks like Ride Into the Sun, which is a ripper, which was an early single, I believe. Like, Yeah, I've got that first. single, Jeff. I've got yeah, the, and then I have um, in the folio. I, I do have the seven inch single of that the yellow. Nice. Yeah, yellow if, yeah if people album. haven't heard that song, that's yeah, a awesome. fucking ripper of a leopard track, man. Killer track. Um, but I do not own I do not own the uh the C D of High and Dry. So I'm gonna have to hunt that down. And I went looking for it last night on eBay and people were out of their fucking minds. They want like ten bucks for that C D used. I'm like, what? He mass printed that fucking thing like by bazillions. Like, no way I'm paying that. So I, I'm sure I'll run into it in a, you know, in a five dollar bin somewhere. You know, like I did. I grabbed, believe it or not, you'll like this, Matt. I grabbed some Kiss this weekend. Yeah, I haven't owned any Kiss since the original vinyls. Like of back in keep the that band in mind for later. Yeah, <laughs> I, I feel you might put them on. Um, but I grabbed Destroyer. This weekend because I was like, you know, I don't own any Kiss, and if I can grab a five dollars CD of Kiss in the first, you know, the first the seventies albums and maybe mm -hmm. like Creatures, I'll grab them for five bucks. I'm not going to spend right. a lot of money. I mm -hmm. saw your post about the Creatures box set. Yeah, Ain't no fucking way in hell. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's I was like, that better be pesos. That's ridiculous. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. yeah. All right. Um. So, Dennis, we are on to number six. Okay, <clears throat> for me, this record, you guys already kind of talked about this band, but the sound on this record, and at the time I was listening to music, I was really into like bands like Metallica, Exodus, and like Laz Rocket, and those kind of bands. And I had I had, had this band's first record, and I heard this record, and I'm like, man, that's fucking heavy. Like, I thought this band was going to get lighter, but for me, this band got heavier with these tracks, and that's Armored Saint, Delirious right. Nomad. Mm -hmm. Oh man, this just a fucking banger of a record that really not a lot of people talk about. Um, doesn't get mentioned a lot in their catalog. Not sure why, but the songs on here are amazing. Uh, Long Before I Die, Nervous Man, like the guitar tone on this is, it's heavy as shit. Um, Over the album. Edge, The Laugh, <clears throat> Aftermath, man, that song is a fucking masterpiece. Um, but yeah, every song on here is really, really good. And this is a really heavy record for at the time when it came out, it didn't sound like it just, it didn't, it didn't fit. Um, you had glam and you had thrash and then this record right. came out and it was like a heavy, heavy metal record. Yeah. Um, which it didn't, it didn't get a lot of love because people didn't get it. Um, even when I played this for my thrash friends, they were like, nah, dude, that's not heavy enough. And then some people were like, oh, that album's cool. But it was it was kind of a divided. And this album cover didn't help the record much. Right. Uh, Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think, Dennis, I think you're right. Armored Saint always struggled with having where did they fit in? They did not fit in with the yeah. ground team. They did yeah. not fit in with the metal church sort of vibe of the Northwest thing. They didn't fit into the thrash thing because they weren't really a thrash band. And they had yeah. this singer that was, as Nick pointed out, had almost a bluesy rasp, but he could fucking just biting. He had a biting a tone to his vocals. And they just, you know, they were successful because they're still around. They're still putting out decent albums. That last one from, what, three years ago or whatever. Yeah. Very good album. album. I think it's a great album. But it was like, and then, of course, they had the, the, the down years where, they kind of disappeared because Bush went and joined Anthrax, which I did right. not like him in. I'm not going to no. lie. I did that not made no it. sense. And I, I always no. felt like people wanted to put Bush where he didn't belong. Like Metallica yeah. wanted him as a singer. If you can, you watch the live stuff in San Francisco with him singing. I mean, he fits in with Metallica, but he wouldn't have been the perfect singer for that band. Just like he's no. not the perfect singer for Anthrax. No, um, he belongs in Armored Saint. Yeah, and he, he was perfect for this band. And this album, I think, just, it took, um, you know, their first record and, like, elevated musically where they were going. And then, you know, Raising uh, Fear came out, and that album was awesome, too. But this album, for me, like, I love every, I love the tracks on this and the way that everything is produced. 
And yep. the guitar tone on this, man, that shit just is so fucking heavy. Yeah, just I just picked up I just picked up that in the um the debut on the reissued 40th anniversary. Just, I don't know, man. This record it's great album. It's great album. I mean, and yeah, aftermath as a record cover for this kind of music. It just like if I'm a kid and I go into the record store and I see this, I'm like, what is that? Like yeah. you go from their first album with the you know, all the you know armor and everything armor, like that. You know, that, was their, that was their shtick back then you know wearing mm -hmm. armor and being like you know you know in the renaissance or whatever it was and being knights and all that shit and then going to this they were just like in this transitional phase i felt like with this record but they didn't know how to like express that besides with the yeah. music yeah to, to be honest, but, back in the day when I saw that in, uh, I, I said it, it took a while to come over to the UK, but I saw that in like Kalang. I thought they were like a progressive metal band. Yeah. I, I thought they were Plog. It, it looked almost like a like weird, a like a Fate metal Warning band. type of record cover. Or something yeah, like. yeah, it does maybe, look good. Maybe, maybe yeah, a Queens like that. type thing. I, mm -hmm. I thought that's what they were. Yep. But, no, it's an awesome album. And it you have to good. remember too, because we're we were buying records based on the cover, not on exactly. The Unless they had a video on MTV, we don't know what it sounds like. Yep, which yeah. was pretty, it was still pretty, quite a bit pre, well, no, I guess that wasn't pre-MTV, but I don't know, did they, I don't remember ever seeing any videos. I don't remember album. a video for that record. I remember, uh, me neither. you know, they have Can, one for you, Can Deliver. you Deliver? They have one for yep. Can You Deliver. What was hmm. the single off that album? Do you remember, Dennis? Was uh, it Nervous, Nervous Man. Man? Yeah, ner Nervous there Man. might be one for Nervous Man. There may be Probably one. Probably is, there. but they never yeah. played it. Hmm. All right, Nick, what you got? Uh, well, a band we've already brought up. I'm not going to match the sexual energy that Kellen uh, exuded for uh, Animal Magnetism, but Great Taken album, by man. Force. Killer album, yeah. Uh, I, I adore this album. This is probably my favorite Scorpions album because In Trance is way up there, too. Uh, speaking of sexual energy, and yes, I do have a copy with the nip slip because mm. that's important. Um, it is important. This was my first. Thank God, thank God no one picked Virgin Killers yet. Yeah, <laughs> no, and, and hopefully there's no one out there scouring for the original art too, because yeah. oh boy, questions. Yeah. Um, but this was my first Scorpions album that I ever bought. Like, you know, this was another one. It, me under his MTV watching religiously. Of course, Scorpions came up. You know, Blackout, Love First Thing. You know, those videos were absolutely golden. Yeah. But uh, I just kind of like, was like, eh, you know what? When I got out of like the, the hair metal, heavy metal phase and was getting into like heavier stuff, I kind of just like put them on the back burner. And then a buddy of mine on the record store was like, do you ever jam like early Scorpions? Like, have you ever heard of Uli John Roth? I was like, nah. I was like, dude, just, just buy this. And I was like, yeah. all right, cool. I'll do it. Yeah. And uh, it's absolutely amazing. Kind of maybe bordering on the proto metal thing. I mean, this was mm -hmm. what, 78? 78, you know? yeah. 77? Uh, 78. 78, yeah. Might have been 78, yeah. So, I mean, at that point, metal, I don't know if it necessarily has, like, a name or an identity quite yet, but this is definitely one of the bands that was kind of pushing that. But, man, the songwriting on here is fantastic. And that I'll be solo honest. solo one, Sales of Sharon. Dude. Wow. Solo? Jesus. If Uli, Uli was Yngwie, Uli. Uli was Yngwie. Right. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. uh, every, I mean, uh, we'll burn the sky. I, I think the burn the sky is fucking epic, yeah. dude. Uh, riot, the riot of your time. Love that song. Tracks. I mean, but I mean, sales of Charon is is the one that seals it. Then yeah. he's a man, she's a woman, or no, he's a woman, she's a man. Yeah, fuck that up. Great anyway, fucking track, man. Yeah, uh, this this is just like riffy, aggressive, but it's Uli's playing on here. Yeah. It's it's so damn good, like. Yep. virtuoso levels and yep. the, the songs are hooky they're fun you know this this was kind of like a again like sort of a, a lightning striking my brain moment because i'd only associated them with the 80s stuff i didn't even know now, they were around that, first is, before. that is uh from 77 like i thought okay 77? december december oh, 4th yeah almost yeah. 78 um the only thing about U Uli was they could not convince him not to sing a track. Yeah, no, that's the it's the only the only thing he doesn't <laughs> sing as much on this one. But he's I got to be free, which is yeah. not the worst song on there. But the ride of your time is fucking amazing. Yeah, uh, Steam Rock Fever, man, yep. it's killer, yep. man. Um, he's a woman born to touch your feelings. Is nah. I hate that the song, song title. Man. It was like the. I don't give a fuck. That song. Yeah, that is sounds killer. like a hard. <laughs> Nick, um, don't you understand? This is not about you. It's about me. 
Listen, I don't talk about feelings in my channel, all right? <laughs> we talk about metal, bacon, and dick. That jokes. song, though, on this album is the under yeah. it's the underappreciated track. It's killer. I mean, I love the whole thing, and it this is. one even has some bonus tracks on it that are absolutely killer too. But uh, yeah, um, this this album's fantastic. If they, again, if they just convinced Uli not to sing, which it was another reason I had in trance. It was like ah, maybe this one, but <laughs> Uli sings a little bit more on that one. I was like, yeah, God, he does. Robot I, Man's on there, right? And he's just so bad. Like he's, uh, he's so flat. And was like, dude, do you know? Like you, you're out of every key. Out of all of them, yeah, he he really did not get it at all. But, um, but yeah, this this is absolutely fantastic. Like early Scorpions is still the way to go, and my cutoff is right about where Matt is with the uh, first thing because everything after I was like, well, okay, yeah. I think also real quick, I I personally for me the seventies guitar players I and mean, this is pre Eddie because Eddie was seventy eight whatever seventy eight yeah. Right. Um, before him, I always, I always have to pimp this dude. Of course, there's Lifeson and Steve Howe and those guys. But as far as shredders go, Uli was the guy with the exception of one dude. Frank Marino was the fucking guy. He was the fastest player in the 70s without question. And I know he's more of a blues cat, but he fucking ripped. Uh, and, and I hate to break it, but Nugent. Nugent was pretty fucking huge in the 70s too, man. He was a hell of a player, so dick of a human being, but a hell of a player. All right, so we're moving on to Logan. All right. Um, one more new album album I want to talk about before moving on to the, the next heavy metal scene. Uh, probably one of the most underrated bands out of that scene and the most hardworking band, like, you know, no one, no one really talks about this band, and they're still touring. They're still releasing albums every couple years, every two years. Oh, yeah. fucking yeah. Raven! Yeah, no one, no one talks about Raven. Or no, I mean, yeah, people do, Raven. but like somehow they're just yeah. okay. It, <laughs> I take it back. I'm sorry, <laughs> Raven. You're, people talk about you. But, yeah, yeah. Uh, but wiped out is my favorite so far. I'm, I'm definitely so still like kind of diving into to their discography. So yeah, first three, great. But, yeah, they, yep. they have an interesting one because like right after this, uh, maybe it's two albums after this, they get into the the yep. iffy. What was it? Atlantic they signed to, and they yep. uh, yeah, they signed up. Yeah, they, they dumbed down the sound or whatever. They were yeah, they were right. sports metal for a little bit. Athletic rock and hockey pad. Athletic athletic rock. <laughs> <laughs> but man, this one is just a fun, fast paced. Working man's like a yeah. hard rock album. I mean, you can definitely tell it's metal. I think because of the energy, but it's it's not like uh, Angel Witch. This is definitely more that uh, you know, brawling in a bar kind of kind of metal music. Faster than the speed of light. Better than uh, Iron Maiden's version, or you know, uh, Bring the Hammer Down is a great fucking song. Firepower. Oh, to the limit, to the top. So many great great tracks on here and they really are all just relentless you know back to back uh it's like they're the energy or anvil of the fucking uk scene yeah like they don't yes. get the credit like yes and their live album is amazing live at the yeah, end album rules is amazing it's what got that one was that live album i'm i'm gonna be seeing them live at the end of this month they're yep. doing a, a u.s tour currently they're great live i can't wait yeah. uh it's with vicious rumors, I believe, yeah. and they're they're coming through here in yeah. I think the twenty fourth. Yeah, that's gonna be badass. So I'm excited, and I'm curious, like how many people are gonna be coming out for that? Because I always hear about the stories of went to go see Raven, and there was like, you know, twenty people. <laughs> so I'm I'm wondering what kind of reception they will receive because the new album, uh, what is it? All hell's breaking loose. Yeah, yeah that's good. Fun. That, it's really yeah. good. I. Yeah, Dude, Mike Heller on drums on that man. <laughs> Dude, that yeah. is the most intense drum performance I've heard on a heavy metal album. Yeah, he's great yeah. in Homes Deep as well. Great, uh, great drums on here too. Probably pushes it along. Uh, the the two Gallagher brothers do a great job. Yeah, but yeah. Raven wiped All out. Right. Yep. Uh, shit. Where's Kellen? Why is this all out of whack now? Why does he keep? <laughs> There's Keep Kellen. Jumping. I don't know why it's jumping all out of whack. Sorry, Kellen, what you got? 
it's all good. You know, when Logan, when you mentioned uh, Angel Witch in terms of like an aggressive new album record, like my first place my head went was that Raven record. I was like, I'm pretty, you know, Raven definitely fits the mold there as well. Okay. So let's talk about a newer band. Um, this is from Greece, and this band is called Wrathblade. Mm. Um, Great cover. Um, Into the Netherworld's Realm. Uh, is the title here from 2012. Um, so they play, I mean, as the artwork would almost uh, lead you to believe, it's a kind of an epic heavy metal sound. But um, what's cool about this, and we are kind of at the beginning of the stream talking about how sort of uh, genres and, and where they can potentially move sonically over time. Um, this band, because they're newer, you can tell they were very much listening to sort of the components within Greek black metal. Um, because if you like Verathron and Rotting Christ, one of the things that stand out to me for their guitar sound is it's a little bit warmer in character versus some of the other sort of black metal regional contributions. Um, and then if you like think about Macabre Omen or Nocturnity, they're black metal bands that play in a little bit more of an epic style. Um, you can tell that this band, you know, merging here in 2012 with their first full length have been listening to that. And there's a few times on this record um, where it definitely leans a little bit more aggressive in terms of the ripping style. So uh, that's kind of a unique contribution to an epic heavy metal listen here in the 21st century. Um, vocally, it's got a lot of almost like Borkus Helm, that like epic heavy metal warble thing okay. going on. So it can be a little bit of a uh, what do you want an acquired taste, um, but it's a hallmark within the genre for me. And the riffing style, along with all the traditional epic heavy metal tropes, long extended six plus minute song passages, um, are on this record as well. They have one other full length that came out in 2017, um, but I don't know if they're going to have another one on their way. But anyway, it's a new epic heavy metal band that I highly recommend. Um, what year is that one? This is 2012. Okay. And Greek, Greek band, you said? Correct. All right. Sounds very interesting to me. Um, okay, Matt, you're up. All right. We already mentioned it, or you already mentioned it. But let's get to it. My number seven choice. Get out your pitchforks for Kiss. This is Kiss <laughs> Night, 1982, last album with the initial makeup. It's a hard rock band, of course. They're more pop rock and on other albums, but I think this is the closest they get to heavy metal. They that were is, kind of yeah. plugging it as a heavy metal album. If you saw interviews with Paul Stanley at the time, yeah. he was using yeah. the term left and right. Okay. He thought more so than I did, but I still think it's in the camp a little bit. Of course, I love it loud. Great track. Also, War Machine, uh, co-written by Brian Adams, by the way. Um, right. Yeah. Those are the songs that definitely got me into this album. I saw the video for I Love It Loud, and I ran to the record store and bought it like the next day. It was 50 at the time. Man, the song Creatures of the Night is a ripper, though. Great That's song. the metal track on the album for me. Yep. Yeah. But it just has that cr crazy screaming guitar tone and... You know, yeah, anthemic sort of metal vibe to it. Yeah, there were a lot of guest guitar players on this record, on that track in particular. I think there were a couple of them. Oh, is there really? I didn't know that actually. Yeah, there's no Ace on this record whatsoever. You could literally go like that. Well, because it's Ace. Yeah, Ace. You know, it's funny, man. As a guitarist, Ace had a profound effect on me wanting to play guitar in the '70s. Him okay. and Lifeson and 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 John um, Steve Howe. But Ace is a really sloppy, shitty guitar player. I'm just going to say <laughs> he straight is. up. He's yeah. not a good... There's a reason that um, Bob Kulik was playing solos and yep. Dick uh, Wagner was playing solos. Right. Because Ace Clear. just can't fucking play. He looks cool. Yeah. And he has. he's the cool guy. And he's yeah. got a good voice. I mean, back I in I think then. he would have held this band down in the 80s. Oh, big time. A bunch. Like, they needed the guitar players they got. Yep, yep. Also, Eric Carr is amazing on this record. Yeah, he's... drum sound is just crazy, thunderous, amazing. Yeah, uh, short he's the lived, best man. They ever had oh, by far. Down. Yeah, yeah. It's yep. a shame. It's a yeah. shame what happened with him, Eight, man. Nine, a very tragic sort of story. He was very young. Yeah, I think he was only like thirty-two. He was a little older than that. He might have been was closer he? to forty. 30... Was he? He might have been. 
I didn't think he was that old. It's okay. 19, Maybe 1991. Right. When did he die? Something crazy like that. Yeah, it was heart cancer. Was it heart cancer? I remember it was yeah, one it was, organ that you never think of. Yeah, heart which is super duper rare, but a, a very aggressive and kind of weird. It's the same, I believe it was the same cancer that Chuck Billy did survive. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, all right. Good choice. Good choice. Um Roger. Yeah, my next pick uh, doesn't look like a heavy metal band. Uh, the uh, band name is not uh, very heavy metal, <clears throat> but I think it's a heavy metal album, and I love this album. Teletubbies? Cinderella oh, Night Oh, that's a great album, man. Yeah. 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 Killer killer yeah. album, but uh, it really doesn't look like a heavy metal album, more like a glam. It doesn't sound like how it looks. Absolutely. <laughs> nope. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, just fantastic album. Uh, one of my favorite from back in the days. And yeah. um, I still play this several times a year. Just to, That's the uh, only Cinderella record I like, and I love it. I think the uh, second album has some killer songs, but it's okay. very uneven for yep. me. But uh, but uh, this album I, is just uh, killer, in yeah. my opinion. I mean, yeah, read, read, read some first of two songs albums. Excellent. Night songs is killer. What's yeah, that? Sh what Shake that? me, uh, nobody's fool, nothing for nothing. Uh, you got hell on wheels. Somebody save me, push push. All that good stuff. Yeah, again, very album. bluesy though. It's very bluesy. Now the second but, album is more bluesy than this. This, yeah. Year, oh, yeah. but they do do have some guitar sliding here, of course. But uh, and uh, great guitar work on this album. So uh, yeah, heavier. Yeah, pink, pink, uh, pink heavy metal. <laughs> pink heavy metal. Yeah, and Fluorescent. right after that album came out, what year was that? Was that eighty six? Eighty six. Yeah. yeah. So in eighty seven. I went to see Leopard for Pyromania. And it's a funny story. I'll make it quick. Um, we, After the show, we went around to see if we could see Def Leopard, And they were down under the bowels of this giant fucking the spectrum down in Philadelphia, which was where the, the Sixers played. It's not even there anymore. Um, and we couldn't get to them, but we saw another bus sitting in the parking lot. And it was Tesla's bus. So we went over and we banged on the door and I'm fully expecting nobody would open the door and boom, it opened. Now it helped that my friend had this beautiful, exotic looking Asian girlfriend at the time, Grace. And I think that was the reason those dudes opened. It's the, the only reason. It's the only reason. Exactly. <laughs> hey, oh, precisely. fuck. The other boyfriends. Precisely. So we, we get on the bus, we're hanging out with them and out of nowhere, there's banging on the door again. And guess who walks on the bus? Jeff Labar from Cinderella. When he goes to leave, we get off with him, get out, out of the bus with him. And he's, of course, he's got some super hot chick with him, too. And he goes and gets in a brand new 911 Targa, Porsche oh, yeah. Targa with the whale <laughs> tail thing on it. It's like, fuck, yeah. man. So, yeah, funny, funny. They were they were swimming in some money at that point in time there for a short while. So that Is album. He gone now? Yeah, he died. Yeah. Like two, three years ago, two years yeah. ago, something like that, yeah. Had a had pretty bad alcohol problem for what, what yeah. I understand. So sad. Um, okay. Uh, where are we at? We're at Eric. All right. I'm uh, agreeing with Nick on this one. Yeah. Uh, open by force. Yeah. The better. Coverage. I mean, yeah. Uh, yeah. We did the Scorpions deep dive a while ago. I forget. I think this was my number one in that too. Um, again, like with my other couple picks that i already mentioned you could say there's some hard rock songs on here bordering on heavy metal but again uh as with dio um close minor of uh, i think dio or vocalist? like just yeah so intense so evocative and just like um visceral i don't know just a great voice and really takes this kind of stuff to the next level but uh, man, Uli's guitar work is just so amazing. Uh, love pretty much every song on here. Um, yeah, my least favorite might be "Born to Touch Your Feelings," just because it's I don't know. It's a great song. It's just right, kind it of good scene, Eric. Thanks for stopping in. We'll talk. <laughs> <a little bit. laughs> it's just, it's just. I don't know if it's the greatest way to close the album. If it had been like second last or something, maybe. I would like it more, but I mean, it's so great. Every every other song on here is fantastic. The Riot of Your Time, Steam Rock Fever, Will Burn the Sky, Sills with Sharon. I mean, 
Nick already talked about this a lot, but yeah, just absolutely amazing. I I was lucky enough to grab a copy of this with the original cover. I I wasn't even gonna bother picking up the one with this because that's just yeah. like I don't know. Lame. It's just lame, lame as all but yeah. Yeah. Love it. Nice. Great, great, great pick. I mean, it's hard to go wrong with any of those Scorpions albums, although they are kind of quasi on the borderline. <laughs> I mean, sure. The, yeah, anything, everything, anything from in trance up through like uh, Love It First Sting, I would say is mm -hmm. perfect on this list. Yep, agreed. All righty, Johnny, what you got? Uh, well, must admit, I would would have gone for Love Drive for Scorpions myself. That's my. That's a killer album, man. Yeah, killer album. Great. Um, How are you doing on like... time, Johnny? What time is it? Uh, well, all right, yeah, I've got a good hour, so I'm good. Okay. At least, um, I'm gonna go with Jeff's Flag. I'm oh, nice. of the Transcendence. Yeah, I didn't do um, them because I yeah. I already picked them for Prog Metal Island, but you did. Um, One of my top but, uh, five albums. Uh, my right. favorite Crimson. Glory. I'm gonna pick it as well because for me, this is. Yes, there's progressive elements to it, you like, but it's it's still metal, you know. It, oh, yeah. it, 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 you know, the guitar sound is absolutely brilliant on this album. Sounds so good. This is a music on vinyl, the big press. Um, but I just needed it on vinyl. I had it on got an original C D and just want needed a vinyl copy of it. Such a good album. You know, back in eighty eight when this came out, it was just like everybody raved about the original Midnight's voice, obviously, and the masks and all that and then this came out and it just seemed to just push up to another level uh i know there are people out there that prefer the first one for me transcendence is always oh, been my, there. i love them both but that song. album no that yeah, one that album's mind-blowing yeah. it's a fucking Absolutely masterpiece yeah. yeah yeah so it looks like we got this on plug island and trad island as well so uh mm -hmm. it should be all right Little island yeah, yeah, <laughs> no bad songs on this and i'm, I'm you know no nope. If someone so someone comes up to you and he goes, "This is a heavy metal album." You can't say it isn't. So, um, yeah. and just an excuse because I obviously gave all these a blast uh, in these last week or so. Just I was looking, flicking through, and I go, "I'll give this another listen." And I went, "Yeah, no, it's got to come onto Heavy Metal Island." So, yeah, bit of Crimson. And they're back. The they are back, and they've got two one uh, track out there that is really good. Is it you know? They're going to face that problem of how do you replace an irreplaceable yeah. singer? Uh, well, they had, I, think, I think that Todd Latore was about as close as they were going to come to Midnight. Yeah. But yeah. even he was not Midnight. And he was with them for quite a while when they did a, live sh a lot of live shows. But I did yeah. an interview with Ben Jackson, about a two-hour interview. Go check that out. There's pretty big things, hopefully, on the horizon for Crimson Glory. The new singer is very good. And the new song well, is very well, good. I mean, that was going to be one of my honorable mentions. You know, yeah. um, I do like a bit of Armored Saint. And for me as well, this is my favorite. And with Dennis, there was something All about right. this album, as you say. I, I ignored it at the time. I thought it was too progressive. To, I just the yeah. cover looked shit, so I couldn't be asked. And back then, you could only buy a certain amount of albums. And if the cover didn't hit you, you just sort of didn't buy right. it. But going no, back, you. Um, also, you mentioned this one. This is yep, the latest one they brought out. Cracking album. Um, it's one of these annoying where album. they they put it as a double album on four on two discs, so that you have to pay an absolute fortune for it. But oh. it, his voice, John Bush's voice, still works yeah. on this. Yep, really good album. Well, very yep. worth having. Great album. Just give this a mention while I was on. All right, I'm going to go with one that I had kind of forgotten about until I started looking into. Uh, you know, bands that I wanted to feature and things that I had, and I realized that I haven't had this album on CD or vinyl, uh, or none of the band's catalog, and because I had all their uh, the first three or four maybe on cassette from the OG days, this is the 80s. And many of you that know me for a while now know that I lost all my cassettes back a few years ago when they they took my uh, storage unit and I just never replaced a lot of that stuff. Well, I absolutely had to replace that this album because I just absolutely forgot what a fucking banger of an album this is, how much I love this album. I want it to be a little higher, but this one is one of those kind of, are they hard rock or are they metal? I think this album is pretty metal overall. They were always kind of talked about as a metal band, but 
I could see where you could say, eh, they're a little more hard rock, but I, I don't, for me, they're not. They fit on this list perfectly, and they have some of the coolest artwork ever. And that would be riot fire oh, yeah. down under. <laughs> Man, I got that on vinyl two days ago. What's that? I just you got that on OG vinyl like two days ago. Yeah. I, I I've got all the other That's stuff. Fire. I got Narita. I got on Green Label OG. It's my favorite though, Fire Down I've, Under. I've got yeah. um, the Rock City. Yeah, but I could not find this one on vinyl that I could get it here in time at a yeah. price that I was cool with. Yeah. So it turns out that the one local record store around here that does stock a lot of metal. I called up there Thursday night. I'm like, please tell me you have Riot Fire Down Under on yeah. CD. He's like, yeah, man, I got one copy. I'm like, whatever I got to do to hold yeah. that till tomorrow, please. It. Grabbed it on the way home. Um, every track on this album. Swords and Tequila. That's I mean, a It kicks off with Swords and Tequila, yes. which is a banger. It's got yes. Fire Down Under, which is a yep. badass tune. I uh, feel the same outlaw is killer. Mm -hmm. Uh don't bring me down. Don't hold back. Altar of the Kings. Yeah, oh, yeah. man, that's the second banger track on here. But they all rip. No Lies, another monster track. Um, Run for Your Life is Killer. Flashbacks is probably the least, the final track. But, man, I fucking love this band. It's for first four albums. First four albums I love. And I, I'm not going to waste any time, but, again, just grab all the OG. I will get this on OG vinyl. There's yep. no doubt I'm yep. already hunting. This uh, bonus, <clears throat> this album has uh, Misty Morning Rain, You're All I Needed Tonight, One Step Closer, Struck by Lightning, and then a live remix. I'm sorry, a live track, uh, a live yeah, a live Rock City and Outlaw remixed and edited. This is the Rock Candy reissue, which I think came out in 2000. 18. If you don't know Riot, man, dudes, just get the fuck on this album. It is a banger. Love this band. Love this album in particular. And I'm looking to try to get Rick Ventura to come on the show for an interview to talk about these old days. Because unfortunately, Guy Speranza, who is the vocalist on this album, oh, man, that dude's voice. So yeah. good. Um, then, the, you know, I could have even maybe gone with Restless Breed or Narita. Uh, I love Red Forrester too, but man, what a weird band. They've had so many tragic, weird deaths. Guy Sparanta yeah. dies very young, 46, I think, of pancreatic cancer. Mark Reale dies of something to do with Crohn's disease in 2012. Yeah. Red Forrester is killed in a carjacking in Atlanta yeah. back in the 90s. So they've had very strange. This is one of those bands that you're like, why? Wasn't this band fucking massive? Yeah. Especially because of this album. But anyone that doesn't know this album, get the fuck on this album. It's killer. Again, right. a question of questionable Never. album covers. And Dude, yeah. I mean, mascots. What the fuck is this? Yeah, thing? it is weird because they went with the mascot and then they, they felt kind of tied to it. But it, what's the name of the seal? Do you know, Matt? Do you guys oh, remember? Yeah. Is it the Mighty Tior? <laughs> I might be right. I'll have to look up. I don't. Which is remember. funny because TR is not Riot backwards. It's Royt. But anyway. yeah, looks like I, there Daniel is a name. I'll look it up. Yeah. All right, Dennis, what you got? All right, we're going Stone Cold fucking classic, man. Sabotage. Silence. Nice. Yeah. We we're gonna talk about that band later. Yeah. Yeah, but this record, man. When I yeah. bought this again, another blind buy when I was a I kid. Came in I love that this album. album. Yep. I bought yep. this in Dungeons and yep. uh, I bought them used, I think, at the yeah. at the local record store. Probably like they were intended to be dollars. together, those two records. Oh well, it makes sense. I mean, yep. obviously. Yeah, they just couldn't um, and fit this it was all. on combat too. So and it, yep. you know, obviously this isn't the original because that was right. self-relief. Um, but yeah. it's Johnny the Mighty War. Just real quick, it's Johnny the Mighty Tior is the name of the seal. There you go. <laughs> yeah, there's the original cover over there with the, sh with the yeah, shit. Got? Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me pull up. Yep. I love that cover. I actually like that cover a lot. Yeah, yeah I like it a little more. The other one's kind of like a Dungeons and Dragons. It is. Yeah, it's, or, uh, uh, it's J.R.R. Odd. Tolkien. Thing. Yeah. Yep. It's like a bunch of elves in the sewer or something. I don't know what's yeah. going on, but... <laughs> Uh, but for me, man, this record just fucking 
pedal trap. It blew me away. Even like back when I was a kid, I was like, holy shit. And I don't remember if I bought this before. So if you guys have ever seen the Ultimate Revenge video with Venom, yep. Slayer, and Exodus, they talk about sabotage. They're like, dungeons are calling, siren, sabotage. Like <laughs> this guy comes on at the end and like talks about <laughs> yeah. all these like records coming out. Yep. Um, but so I might have bought it because of that and thought they were yeah. like a speed metal band or something like that. But man, even when I bought it when I was a kid, I was like, this album's fucking sick, man. I love this shit. Um, it starts off with sirens and then fucking holocaust. And I, I will say that the first side is definitely the banger of the both sides, but um you get I believe in rage, and then the only thing I don't like about this record is the closing track with Out on the Streets. It's kind of like a commercial yeah. type of, of track, but every other song is just pure fucking adrenaline pumped heavy metal, man. Um, and obviously, we know where this bad went with um, they got more progressive and got even like um, like Hall the Mountain King is a great record as well, but Man, for me, those first. Oh, those it's better than years. a great record. Sure, it's better than a great record. Okay, <laughs> I just want to clear that up right yeah. now. How is it better than great? It's exceptional. It's beyond exceptional. It's superlative. <laughs> All right, better than average. Lots yeah. of stroking better than here. average. But this yeah. is this is <laughs> rawer than that, and it's less power metal. This is more traditional heavy metal, um, and it was kind of an unknown band, so. Yeah, man, just a banger of a fucking record. I mean, I'm sure everybody knows this record in the chat and all that, but yeah, man, sabotage. And yep. and they had their downfalls with, you know, they try to get commercial with power and um, what, what was that one with the Rock with in the Rock Fights or whatever? Rock. That oh, when they did Fight for the Rock. Yeah, yeah that was a not crazy. that was their one serious misstep in the early right. the early albums, man. Because you know, Power of the Night. Gutter Ballet, Streets, all those albums are fucking. Yeah, Power amazing. of the Night was good. Banger. I like that record, yeah. but it wasn't yeah. as good. Like they started right. getting trying to like get more radio play. It was almost yeah. like a Raven thing, where they were just like, <sighs> right, we're trying to get like more like video. Well, that was play. a that was a label deal that we tried to push yeah, them. That's, in that were they on it? Like, I think they were on Atlantic or something at that point. Uh, it was Atlantic. Yeah, I believe it was yep. Atlantic. Yeah. Um, yeah. real quick, just to so this is. This just came in the other day. The green label. Capital is that E Honda one. from Street Fighter? Capital label. It is. That's Johnny, that's yeah. Johnny the Mighty T or to you, buddy. It looks like you got sunburned to hell. Worst fucking rec record covers ever. Dude. I mean, this isn't even like like it looks like what, to me, it looks like what Photoshop might have looked like in the 70s and eight, early 80s, right? This is weird. Like uh the you know, I it's weird in a weird way. I hate them, but I kind of like them. I mean, here's this seal with a Captain America body and a seal head and then a, a giant scythe or a giant, not a scythe, a uh, battle giant axe. Broad, broad axe, battle axe. Standing it very delicately. Too. What a weird way to hold an axe, too. He's like, yeah, it's like he's not fingers. even very menacing. It's like he stroked yeah. the axe. Like he just found it. Like, ooh, look at this. Yeah. This is kind of cool. And if I just I noticed now. People would say it was AI produced, wouldn't they? If, they, if you brought that out, <laughs> yeah, Kenny, yeah. That out on the album cover, you go, that's AI produced, definitely. Mm -hmm. 80s, eight, 80s AI, <laughs> 80s AI is what it is, yeah, for sure. So, all right, um, give me a sec here. I don't know, I'm all fucked up now. Where I think it's Nick, 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 it is Nick right? Yeah. Yeah. I gotta readjust everybody. All right, go ahead, Nick. Well, I mean, you already brought it up. It was in my stack, too. Right. Uh, yeah, right. Found fire down under. This album's amazing. The album Puppy cover's copycat, terrible. Copycat uh, doofy McFluff Nugget or whatever his fucking name is. Um, <laughs> it's it's terrible. It's a terrible album cover, but oh my God, every song in here is absolutely amazing. Like, yeah. I dare this album to be catchier. Like, it, it's almost impossible. Yeah. Every harmony just sings out that the vocals are absolutely outstanding. Outlaw and Altar of the King, that's those are probably two of my favorites, but I love all this. Like, you know, an opening track like Swords and Tequila, uh, you're ready to party yeah. right away. I'm yeah. signing up for that. That sounds like the kind of party that fucking Midnight would host, yeah, and I'd be there too. But yeah, like everything about this album is super catchy. I, I got this just because I saw like constantly people were talking about this one in terms of like just classic old school heavy metal, and I might. Have seen this as a child and just looked at the cover, and like, nah, 
that's no, there's no way that's good. It can't be. Look at that cover. I was wrong. Sometimes amazing things come in gloriously stupid packages. <laughs> and right. this is exactly that. Yeah, it's it's an absolute banger. There's not a bad song on here. It, all of them, just, I think. Just a side better. note, too. Every Riot record was in the fucking bargain bin back in the day. It was <laughs> like you can get it for probably. Like $10. The fact that they kept not going anymore. Not anymore. Trust me. Like you know, they like, it's like no, we're gonna keep with the the whatever the yeah. hell that thing is. It's like no, we're just gonna keep doing this. It's like, dude, people hate it. It's like ah, it's our thing. It's like no, stop it. <laughs> Well, that's well, yeah. definitely one of the questions I plan to ask Rick if I get him on. Is like, why did you guys? Because you did not help yourself with those covers, man. No, yeah, no. I, like I said, I, I, I again, I might have avoided it because I saw um, the one you just showed uh, <laughs> with with E Honda. Uh, yeah. yeah, like I, I saw that multiple times in news bins. Like, that's too stupid looking to be good. There's no way that's good. It's, it's good. It's good. No, no, I, I, I know. I've heard it. it. It's like I got to pick that up and make fun of the album cover eventually. But yeah, uh, this album's flat out amazing. Like I guess. they they had a lot of member changes. Mark Reale was the only like consistent guy. In and out, they disappeared for a while. Mark would come back. They just never had like consistency at all. And the 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 power that they had behind. Or not the power, the push they had behind Fire Down, Fire Down Under didn't translate into massive sales. They opened for Rush. I didn't know that. Must have been there. I said the word. I said the magic <laughs> fucking word. Uh, yeah, they 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 did open for Rush. <coughs> must have been before I. I don't know when that was because I saw Rush from 1980 on every tour. So I must have not. They must not have been you know, opening for them when I went to see them, but. You would have thought that would have helped, or you know what I mean. But it's just yeah. weird. They just I think did it. it. And then when they came out with Thundersteel, they got rid of that mascot thing. It was a, so, a totally different band then, almost yep. completely yeah. different guy. They yeah. just came out with their fucking total '80s cover with the weird robot bulldozer. Yeah, band. I have that one too. I just picked that one up too. So good album, probably the last one I really feel like I yeah, need. That's although that, that, I think although the one after are, that's pretty good too. Yeah, there are a couple in there that if you dig a bit. There's solid albums in there. I wouldn't say they're anywhere near the level of the first four or five, but and I know Brian likes uh what's it called, Brian? The one you like Born in America, I think. Terrible album cover on that one, too, by the way. I'll I'll dig it up and we'll take a look at that. Anyway, um moving on to Logan. All right. Uh enough of the power uh of the party metal stuff. We're going to war now. We're uh I'm breaking out my drinking horn, which can be used as a weapon, just in case. Oh shit! You know, uh -oh. In case did you say you're drinking, did you did you say you're drinking whore or you're drinking horn? Oh, horn. Okay. <laughs> oh. <laughs> be I, I was like, hey man. Either or, I don't know. I mean, <laughs> are we allowed to bring those to the island? You can bring whores to the program. I don't care. Okay. I'm, I'm, I'm already I'm bringing whore. Bush, John Bush. Sorry. <laughs> 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 So we're, we're we're changing we're changing uh, scene. So from new album we're going to uh, the American like heavy metal scene, and there's definitely a different tone overall. It's a bit more serious, a bit more fantasy, a bit more even post apocalyptic. Like uh, makes me think of uh, Mad Max. Not? Mad Max. Thank you. I was I was thinking Blade Runner. I don't know why. Fucking Mad Max. And of course, the first one I got to pull is this one. Oh, so, Logic. Got yeah. Got to talk. Yeah. Uh, Manila Road and Crystal Logic. Yep. Such an amazing band. This is unfortunately this is the only CD of theirs that I own. I gotta same get yeah. more of their stuff. It's you never run across them in in the wild. I mean, definitely gotta put in a uh, an order somewhere. But this is such a consistent album all the way through. Like, there's not a bad song on here. Uh, and it really does have like that mysterious, uh, almost doomy tone. Of course, Necro Necropolis is right behind uh, Angel Witch for like the catchiest song. Uh, that shit gets stuck in my head all the time. Uh, Flaming Metal System on here was actually supposed to, supposed to be a bonus song, but I like it just as good, if not more, than a lot of the tracks on here. The one that might be a weird one is feeling free again that's like a, a weird 70s rock song yeah that is definitely out of place on this album but i still i still like it and then it ends with uh tracks eight and nine uh, the veils of negative existence 
and Dreams of Eschaton, probably the most apocalyptic and just ambitious tracks of the album and uh, really do a good job of setting the tone. So, yeah, we're, we're in America. We take stuff more seriously over here. No, no fun. <laughs> and Manila Road sums it up pretty well. It's a band I like, but I really struggle with his voice. So yeah, I, gotta, I can see I gotta, that. I gotta work on it. Gotta work the on it. the production on that record is it's of certain taste. I love it, yeah. but I think a lot of people don't like the production on that. It's very raw and demo quality almost. Okay. What you got, Kel? Kellen? Oh, um, Tim, that explains it. I did not catch well, Rush you're, on. You muted, I think. Go for it. Okay. Did you want to comment on the what you pulled up there, Jeff? No, I was just saying that, yeah, Tim, I, I did not. The one tour I missed was, believe it or not, uh, that tour. Um, I did not catch them on moving pictures, so that explains why then. Okay. So for my, I've mean, got some uh, cleanup to do here, some other records that I mentioned. So Dennis um, pulled an Omen record. I have Warning of Danger. Yeah. Hell great yeah. one love that uh, one i guess i mean he did a great job describing the, the style um what they're all about the <clears throat> me, like so i have another middle of the road record here in the stack but the like other bands that were playing in this style from america at the time definitely like if you listen to i think eric is frost and fire in the background there and um you know, early Manila Road, there's definitely like 1970s jam band. You know, yes. Logan just kind of mentioned that. Omen, you can tell in California sort of the sonic, you know, life that is brings them uh, to record is definitely a bit more like in that California thrash speed. A speedier, style. much yeah. speedier. Yep. Yeah, yep. it's it is the precision on the musicians on this is totally different. There's a, it's tight. Um, yeah. So you don't have this sort of like wandering, sloppy kind of epic heavy metal. It's pretty straightforward. Um, and then the comment, I, I this could be sort of my hot take um, of the uh, the show today. I, if I had to pick a heavy metal vocalist, um, I mean, as much as people may love Dio, I love Kimball's voice. Yeah, he's yeah, got right. a super metal voice. Yep. He's got, he like, he navigates this, like, he can sound gruff and, you know, like he's singing from his chest, but he also has a little bit more dexterity vocally to hit higher notes with greater oh, for conviction. Sure. Um, yeah. I, I just, I love his voice for a heavy metal band. So, um, the, I mean, the first, I guess, definitely the first two. Um, Omen records. The third one's also pretty good. Uh, after that, they kind of just fall off the scene. But um, dude, yeah. that third one, that third one's a banger. I like it. I, I I'm gonna yeah, I like it. I always will lean towards the first two. Oh, yeah, of course. But I mean, the intro to the Axe Man, that like Conan sort of lead in where he's yeah. vocally, they did not fear the lance, like that whole shit, like a hundred percent. Yeah, yeah. Um, Kimball died. Love- Kimball died quite a ways back, almost like 20 years ago. I think he had cancer or something like that. But he did have a killer metal voice. Now, uh, Dennis, was what was the name of the album, though, the Omen album, that I was like, what the fuck is this? About? Yeah, that's the third one, dude. What oh, the, that like, thing's terrible. Come on now. No, it's not. Oh, come on now. Those vocals are fucking heinous. No, <laughs> <laughs> dead are fighting. Yeah, that's why you don't are like you the third crimson. That you don't like the third crimson glory either. That's a fucking. No, bad. I don't really love that. Album. You're right. <laughs> and yeah, I finally right. got. And I finally got the fourth one. And I really thought, oh man, I really don't like that third album. But I think I like the fourth album less. The music's cool, but yeah. Wade Black, holy fucking shit! I don't like that. Mm-hmm. Oh, he just goes over I, the. I top. like the third one because it's different. It's it it's is. Not, yeah. It's so like out of the ballpark. No, the good tracks on the third one are really yeah. great tracks. The the weird kind of quasi world tracks on there. Anyways, I don't know how we got on that. Yeah, from I don't know that <laughs> third Omen album blows chunks. I'm sorry. No, it doesn't. No, it doesn't. <laughs> All right. Um, good pick, Kellen. That's I do like that first one quite a bit. Need to get that. So all right. Uh. God damn it. Where the fuck am I at here? I am at Matt. Yep. 
So my number six choice is from an artist who should have packed up a long fucking time ago. Uh oh, John Bon Jovi. Albums for me are untouchable. <laughs> Zazie oh, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I can't disagree. Yeah, I can't either. I love yeah. Blizzard a lot. That's so a killer the album. This work on this is more complex. It's more interesting. It's more varied. I think this tells us that he could have gone even farther if he had survived. So <laughs> it's definitely not. Yeah, but album. yeah. But, What's I thought you were talking about Ozzy. It was like, well, I mean, he is. No. Ozzy, no. Uh, <laughs> Randy Rhodes, man. Yeah. Hey, but I don't know, man. I don't know. Hot take here, but sure. I fucking think the ultimate sin rules, and I really like Barton yeah. Moon, too. Yeah. I love Jake. I love Jake, man. Love him. I love Jake, yeah, too. Don't He's forget about the live show. album with, uh, what's his, Brad Gillis. Brad man. Gillis. Yeah. I think that was a great album. Yep. I mean, do I think that Jake was more suited to Badlands? Yes. Yeah. That's his style. And I love Badlands, and they're gonna be an honorable mention, but they're kind of not really heavy metal. But that first album is pretty fucking heavy metal. But that album, I mean, that album is worth it just for Dire of a Mad Man Alone. Exactly. Yeah. Thank My you. That song I love Believer as well. Oh, yeah. 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 yeah, I can't argue with you, man. I don't know, like you know, Sharon honorable keeps trotting his corpse out there now with these new albums and they're they're pretty uniformly pretty bad. So. Of course, we have a couple of misattributions on the packaging here. It's not Rudy Sarzo and Tommy Aldridge. It's Lee Kirkslake still and uh, yeah, Bob Daisley. Right. right. Oh, well, yeah, but that was done on purpose. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Imagine being married to her. Seriously. Like, just no. picture it. Picture <laughs> no. it for a minute. I'm not even talking about. No. The obvious things like having sex with her, which I yeah. you probably couldn't pay me to do that. But she had a powerful dad. You could pay me. That's it. Could I, how much would we have to pay him? Oh, uh, just like maybe a hundred grand. <laughs> I don't know if I could, man. I just don't <laughs> think I could. But anyway, yeah, um, yeah. What an awful, what an awful woman. Sorry, yeah. she just is. She'll have my stream shut down. My channel will be shut down tomorrow. <laughs> so, um, good pick, good pick, Matt. I stayed away from him. You know, and it is tough between the first one. I think I've heard the first one so much I don't want to hear it anymore. Okay. That's my choice of albums, but I really do like the ultimate sin a lot, man. Yeah. I mean, okay. the ultimate sin's underrated. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I mean okay. that's that's the one I would have picked for Ozzy. Okay. Ruger. Yeah, and the next one is more uh, a artwork album for me. Um it's a great album, but uh I just love the artwork and um uh, Mm. Warlock. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's a great album, man. Yeah, it's a great album, but uh, you know, have to have something on the wall when you're at the island. So this is just fantastic, and uh, yeah, a great album. And uh, who did the artwork? Yeah, yeah. good question. Hmm. I might find it out. But um, gonna make your old man eyes work here. Yeah, doesn't really say. But who are the guitar players? Rock. Who's the guitar players on that? There's only like Nico, Doro, Tommy B, Tommy H, and Michael. I don't know. Okay, so it was nobody that. Okay. I'll try uh, to see. It says, it says the illustration was Jeffrey Gillespie, from what I can okay. tell. I don't know who that, is. who that is. Yeah, it says kind of Gillespie down there. If you... That's a killer album. Killer album artwork and a, a nice ripping. Heavy metal album with a female. Yeah, and vocalist. nice to have a female vocalist as well, just to yeah, mix it up a little bit. Yeah, yeah. All right, way to go, Roger. Um, let's see, Eric. <laughs> All right, I know the uh, the main guy from this band always just called them a rock and roll band. I mean, you probably know where I'm going with this, yep. but there it is. Oh. Gotta have some Motorhead. Um. I mean, again, a not yet another band where you could pick a, a, almost any album, to be completely honorable honest. Mention. <laughs> I haven't heard all of them. Yeah, I got yet. an honorable mention. Yeah. This, this one's my favorite. I mean, just every single song on here is yeah. just fantastic. And they kind of already have a bit of a formula at this point. Every song, I don't know, it's just such a cohesive album. It has... a. A uh, one sound that they kind of stick to for the whole thing, but the riffing and stuff in each song is just perfectly different enough yeah. that it sounds exactly like Motorhead, but each song is catchy in its own way and distinctive. 
and uh, I forget how long this album is. It's I think it's under forty minutes. It just yeah, it comes kind of in, yeah. kicks your ass, and gets out. I mean, all the songs are pretty short too, right? Most of them are four, four minutes, three minutes. But uh, yeah, Overkill, the just kicking in with that title track, uh, proto speed metal. Again, early double kicks. Um, but yeah, every single song. I'm not going to go through them all, but absolutely perfect album for me. Yeah, you could go pretty much from Overkill all the way up through Iron Fist. At least another perfect day, if not a you know a little yeah. bit or or Orgasmatron. And you're really not, you know, I have not that one, but I have one that you know is definitely an honorable mention that I wanted to put in. So yeah, that's a killer, this, killer, killer album. This is also one of the heaviest albums of the '70s, I would say. Oh one of the my most God. intense. Yeah, and fastest. Is that the first double bass performance? Uh, besides Sin After Sin, maybe. Oh yeah, I guess. And yeah. metal. You already mentioned that one, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, wait, what year was that? That was before Sin After Sin, wasn't it? That was, well, no, it was, this was 79. 79. Sin After oh, Sin 79? 77. Yeah. 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 Okay, all right. Mm -hmm. I was thinking that was 76. I don't know why I thought that. Okay. Uh, just to let you guys know, there's not going to be a Grind Island. <laughs> Come you on, Jeff. Jeff, let's you do it on your own. own. On, Jeff. Mutiny. <laughs> you can do it on your own, but I, I'm not. I just it's not my thing, guys. I agree, here, man. It could be your thing. Just give it a try, Jeff. You just don't shine hard enough. Stop, Nick. Stop. All right. Okay. So we were talking about the greatest heavy metal vocalist, and you know, I'm so, I'm shocked. Excuse me. No one has picked this as yet, but uh, I did not go the rainbow is it my route. Turn, Jeff? Is it my oh, turn? shit. Oh, I apologize. Oh, <laughs> my goodness. What have you done? Man, that's, that's the first that's time I fucked up. He was upset about Grand Island. Island. Grand Island, yeah. Yeah, yeah, you guys, <laughs> yeah sorry about that. <laughs> Fuck me up with Grand Island. There we go. Go ahead. There you go. Right. Um, talking of Motorhead, by the way, um, I've been watching a load of um, old 80s interviews uh, uk interviews um we like music press and new shows and all that sort of thing uh early 80s lemmy did not say they were heavy metal i think it's only later on when people kept pestering about it and, it, and he just couldn't be asked but back in the 80s he was more than happy to be on the, the heavy metal thing with with all the guys that's why yes he was we were touring with girl school and saxon and all that sort of mm -hmm. stuff so I said, you know, these interviews said also oh, you're, all, you know, you're part of the new heavy metal thing, and and he said, yeah, yeah, we, you know, we we like this heavier music, we like the heavy metal, because he definitely didn't want to be associated with punk. So I think it was just the the next thing that they that was, you know, he, he more associated with heavy metal than punk. And I think as time's gone on, because metal evolved a lot more, it was like, well, no, I'm not mm -hmm. really part of that. When we're, we're, we are more rock and roll, but back in the eighties, he did say he was. Anyway, I've got a. Mm -hmm. Uh, Motorhead one myself to show in a bit. Uh, next round. Uh, in fact, what time is it? Um, Jeff, is it okay if I rattle through my? Yeah, and you want to double up? Off, you want to double up? Go ahead. Yeah. Cool. Um, like quick one. We got it. Uh, Here's just let me interject for one sec. Yeah, we got to move a little bit quicker because otherwise we're definitely not, not going to make the four hour mark. But I'd like to keep it under five for like Roger and. Uh, uh, Peter, uh, by the way, Peter's not coming on. His kid ah, is. Fine. His kid's autistic and he was not doing well. And he said, "I'm he's going to send me a, a list." So um, I'm not well, telling you don't talk about the albums. Just we just got to try to in your own internal mind keep things moving. So go ahead, Johnny. Well, hopefully it should be a bit quicker with me out of here anyway. So I'll <laughs> I'll do all mine now and then I'll I'll hang on for as long as I can. But I'll just do my five to to one now and, and get it over the door. Oh, you want to do that and then maybe do some HMs? Okay, well, okay, go ahead. Yeah, go yeah, ahead. Or, or, or whatever. I'll do all that now. If I'm still here, because uh, I've only got my 25 minutes or so, I might oh, not all right. the okay, next okay. Round, so gotcha. I'll get them cleared and hopefully once I'm gone, you should get the next lot through quicker. Uh, I'm right. going to go for something that came out in 2021. Um, they're part wow. of what's called the new wave of traditional heavy metal. Um and these are the UK band called Heavy Sentence. Now, look at that album cover. I love now, that album. That, yeah. If that doesn't scream <laughs> new wave of British heavy metal, I don't know what. Look at them. They're just a proper UK pub heavy metal band. Yep. And basically, that's what they sound like. It's absolutely brilliant. 
Um, I went to last year. There was a um, traditional heavy metal tour that was doing the UK. Uh, Riot City were playing a band called Seven Sisters and yep. these guys. And these guys are absolutely brilliant. Um, cool this point is going through the, the songs. And I presume most of you won't have heard of them, but they're definitely worth checking out. If you like, that, they do just sound like in the Wobbin band. They've got that slightly punky edge in the vocals. They're fast. They're, they're, they're just absolutely got sing-along choruses. Absolutely brilliant. In fact, when I saw them live, they, they were selling, um, they had a single out back in the day, a seven, it was say back in the day, about a year ago. Um, and and they, 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 they had a cassette out. Look at the cover of that. It's just so cheesy. It's like, it just looks like a, a proper demo tape, something that Dennis would have. It's just <laughs> absolutely brilliant. Uh, and, and I just love the way it says it's seven inches on tape. So it's basically, it's, they, they just got the, instead of doing the seven inch single, I thought, should we release it? Now nah, we'll do it a tape. And they, they just did very basic, four songs. They sound like a heavy metal band and, and it's just great. So I thought I'd chuck that in there. As I said, I just, one of the new bands that I'm championing and they're, they're really good. Looking forward to some new stuff. I don't know if it's anything's coming out. Did you say you've heard of these, Nick? Oh, do I own that album? That album absolutely rips, dude. It's, it's it just does, pure it? fun. Yeah. Picked up the, the CD yep. as well, which is brilliant. It's just just a great album, isn't it? Really, it's, 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 it's pure new wave of British heavy metal love. They they just have a laugh, and I said live, it's they they sound like the way they look. They just they just go for it. They have a good laugh. They scream at the crowd. You know, they get everybody to have a, have a they're just great stuff. Proper UK British pub band, excellent stuff. Uh, right, that was been number five. Thought I'd chuck that in there. Uh, what's that number six? I can't bloody remember. Six. Number five. Um, I'm going to have to go this. I've got to have a bit of yeah. King Diamond. I was very tempted to go with this, I must admit. Merciful Fate, mm -hmm. because it's probably slightly more heavy metal, I guess, but the same vocalist. And this is the first thing I bought by King Diamond. Merciful Fate. This is my original copy from back in the day. Uh, just, you can't beat it. Fucking... Mickey D's drums on this, the the the, you know Andy Lalock and Pete Black on this are absolutely stunning. The guitar work is just top notch, pure pure heavy metal, and it's always been my favourite. Uh, what have we got next? So look, uh, oh yeah, so, talking about Motorhead. Um, my number four is this one, Another Perfect Day. Um, I hated this when it came out, but I hated it because the Everyone told me I should hate it because they had a guitarist <laughs> who had short hair and heavy metal Fantastic people didn't work. have short hair back in 1984 or five, whenever it was. Yeah. Uh, but as time's gone on, I've absolutely adored this album. Um, I did a ranking. Favorite. Yeah, I did, did a, a, a ranking with a couple of guys, uh, motor ranking, and this was number, number three. I must admit, um, Ace of Spades is always going to be my number one, Overkill number two. But this has gone from being, you know, one of my least favourite to my third favourite. And five years' time, this might be my favourite. I absolutely I think it's got love the it. best. And I think, yeah, I think it's, the, got it's, the best, it's got the best guitar work on it. It's it the has. Most, the guitar the tone on this sound. album is just absolutely yeah. brilliant. You can tell he was in Thin Lizzy. But I'm yep. an absolutely stunning guitarist. Uh, but it works. Um, obviously, they went back and didn't do anything like this again they've never done an album that sounds this but for me this is the most heavy metal uh the other ones have been maybe more punky maybe more rock and lowly but this is their most heavy metal um miss plug island oh we didn't do a plug rock island we did a plug metal didn't we but yeah I yeah we're gonna do uh, raccoon we're gonna do prog rock one of these days coming up that's you know Classic prog rock, not prog metal. Oh, I can yeah. do that one as well. Like right, next up, number three uh, band. I don't know if people are interested in, but this is heavy metal to me. Mm -hmm. um, this yep. isn't glam. That's their metal um, album. Yeah, this is a metal album. Under the blade, it's so heavy. They're, they're just yeah, they're, they're, again. I think everybody, if if you didn't, if you weren't there at the time, and you didn't hear this album when it came out. The cover kind of confused you, obviously, but I, <laughs> it was almost like. The first Motley Crue album, uh, uh, or, the, or that Wasp album, that first Wasp album, this uh, even Cinderella. There's something. This this is a heavy metal album. So, you know, every track on it. What you don't know, Bad Boys, Look and All of Your Life, Sin After Sin, Shooting Down, Destroy It. Just everything under the blade, just heavy, heavy, heavy. 
and they just the guitar works great the bass is up in the mix drums rumble all the way through and d snyder is one of the ultimate flump man he's not the best sure. metal singer ever but he's one hell of a fucking flump man and you Agreed. see him up there and especially if you're as short as i am he's about 12 <laughs> foot tall he's huge right. absolutely massive bloke but yeah that and they put on a show obviously people just know him from the videos on mtv and they were then once they started doing that they carried on doing it and i don't dislike the other albums in fact i love them a lot but this is this for me this this they this is absolutely brilliant and the uh, i've got uh, the ep is it sh the shooting down 12 inch or something but yeah the first twisted sister album uh let me go into the what, uk what as well version is that johnny secret mm. is uh, yeah secret? secret one yeah okay. secret one with the yellows yeah the, the remix is. Yeah, the yellow secret. I, yeah, a remake that, that they did when they, they came out on Electra and re released yeah. it is so that's bad. it, yeah, awful, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. stick with the original, yeah, it had to be done. Uh, I've had this for a long time, but yeah, love this album, love the band for me. Heavy metal across the board, that's my number three. My number two, as you say, you can't have heavy metal without Dio, but for me, I'm, I'm of the camp of I love all the uh, Black Sabbath stuff, and I think do. Doom Island, um, the box set I've got with the first four Black Sabbath albums was my number one because that's for me doom metal. But the first heavy metal album that had all tracks that were full on heavy metal, I, I first heard, I think it was 8081, whenever this came out. I heard Neon Knights, um, my mate went out, yeah. it was, came out, and we uh, bought the seven inch single. We both went to the same shop, and it's like you both wanted it. It was, we heard it on the radio, and it was that good. We didn't get a lot of, um, metal on the radio uh, or hard rock in the uk and we still still don't but we didn't get it back then it was only um it was only later on when the likes of john peel and all that and that was only in the evenings you didn't have it in the day at all there was no radio shows in the uk that would play any of it, it was it was shitty pop music so uh you just had to go to record stores and ask them to play the stuff that you saw in sounds melody maker kalang and all that sort of stuff so but yeah uh neon nights for me blew me away this was yeah. heavy metal. Yeah. Sabbath had moved into the 80s, uh, as yep. far as I was concerned, and it's yep. just absolute beast of an album. You've Die still young. got... Oof. Yeah, oh, my word. It's just uh, absolutely <laughs> brilliant. There's, there's not a bad track on here. Yeah. Absolutely brilliant. Heaven and Hell is... So the title track is fucking awesome. Lady Evil, Children of the Sea. Yep. Not a bad track on it. Just an absolute beast of an album. And I've always loved it. It's always been my favourite Sabbath album. I've toed and throwed with the, which is my favourite Aussie album. It's probably Sabotage at the moment, but it could be Masters of the LT, whatever. But that's always been my favourite Sabbath album fully. And my number one, um, which is, this is the first out band I got obsessed with back in the 80s, and it has to be Saxon Wheels Steel. Um, yeah. For me, Saxon are heavy metal. Um, people talk about different styles of heavy metal, and I think the traditional Nawabum style of metal, for me, it's not Maiden, it's not Feast, it's Saxon. This is my OG copy of Wheels Steel. Seen a lot, a lot of use. Um, I was tempted to go for this, I must admit, uh, this is a really plus mine original got trashed um this was the uh then all i was the first new sax album my saxon album i bought um i missed the first one all all together sometimes back in the day no internet you'd miss albums i missed the first saxon album um this was already out when i picked up a copy of it but denim and leather I, I remember queuing at the local record store to pick it up when i came out and love this band so yeah the I didn't bother with Saxon after Power and the Glory, maybe. Mm. Um, I'm dipping in in and out these days. Right. I, I haven't got the new one. I got the last one. It's mm. okay. New but new yeah, really the new one's supposed to be very good. Uh, it is. I've not heard anything off it. I'm, I'll probably pick it up on CD, but Wheels of Steel for me, just right not on. a bad song on it. Um, nope. I do like um, Strong Arm of the Law as well, but it's got that six form girls on it which is very cheesy and very dodgy and a bit poncy so i'm i can't <laughs> listen to it these days but yeah wheels of steel motorcycle man but it doesn't right. have much more heavy metal than that so um yeah that's my picks um i got a few on the walls but i'll i'll leave it right. we'll um, rip around that I'll, on the last last time yeah so, um, yeah uh if, if i'm not about i'll stick them in the in the um 
comments before I go anyway. Jim. All right. Sounds good, Cheers, man. Guys. Sounds good. Okay. So uh, we talked about the greatest heavy metal singers. I'm shocked no one's picked this yet. Huh. Um, yeah. It was kind of a no-brainer, wasn't it? Sort of, kind of? I don't know. Yeah. Um, you know, I guess maybe potentially because we already had him in uh, we already had him in Rainbow and Elf, if you want to go way back. Um, and and then in uh, Sabbath, and then he comes out here and puts out this album. And you know, this is 1983. This is uh, 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 just a, a killer fucking album. Start to finish. God damn it, man. Hold on. Sorry. <laughs> um, so every track on here, this is the remixed version, which I hate to admit. I've got this about two months ago. I've yet to throw it on yet um but this is the joe barisi 2022 mix i believe it is okay yep and yeah 22 and it's got you know the the joe barisi mix the original uh the original mix is on it then live in fresno i'll take some singles and then you got the uh 2022 remaster uh man you know it starts out with stand up and shout come on man there is there a more yeah. of a metal anthem than that track <laughs> Right. Holy Diver. Yeah. Holy Diver. Right. A couple of times. Gyp have you heard that song, Nick? A couple of times. <laughs> a couple of times. <laughs> Gypsy. Fuck, I love Gypsy, man. What a killer track. Call in the Middles, killer. Don't talk to strangers. Amazing. Uh, Straight Through the Heart. Another. That's kind of like a sleeper track for me. Love that track. And then you've got Invisible, which is another killer one. I even like Rainbow in the Dark, which is I love that song. I, yeah, That's it's kind of like the, the attempt to be a, a radio hit, but it's killer. Dio uh, grew up to hate that song. Actually, I asked him one time. Oh, really? Too. I asked him in 2002. I hung out like five or ten minutes after show, and he's like, "I hate doing Rainbow in the Dark live." <laughs> I why? It. I wonder. He got tired of it. Yeah. yeah. I looked at him. I was like, "But the kids love it," and he's like, "Yeah, that's why I do it." I got it. Yeah, yeah. All right. And then Shame on the Night. Yeah, oh, great man. Song. What a banger of a closer. That's so, the banger right there. You know, absolutely. And I mean, you know, you're talking a young, kind of unproven Vivian Campbell here who comes out and is just a monster act slinger. Doesn't last long, only lasts two more albums. Um, but, uh, you know, and all the weirdness. And now, strangely, Viv is kind of, you know, and he has a right to because he wrote a lot of those songs. But now he's kind of plying his trade doing a Dio cover band. Amongst his other things, mm -hmm. um, he's a killer guitar player. I I really love love the re the reimagined artwork here. Really cool. Um, yeah, Dio, Holy Diver, man, it's fucking Holy Diver, man. Last, I might have had last, last in line. I might have last, that, in line. last in line. I, I I'm a slightly bigger fan of Last in Line. I yeah, love that I album did. too, but yeah. this is this is the one that does it last for me. And favorite. I really like, you know, I even like some of the lesser albums like Magica and uh, Dream Evil and Lock Up yep. the Wolves. So I just, it was weird. After the first four albums, I kind of dipped out on Dio. And then I got the box sets recently and digging back through. And there's a lot of good material there. Not as good as the first three or four albums, right. but a lot of really, some, some nice stuff there. Master of the Moon, yeah. not as bad of an album as you would think. Right. Um, I'm trying to remember the other one. Um, Killing Strange the Dragon. Highways is good. Killing yeah, Dr Strange Highway. Strange Highways rips. Strange Highway is killer, doom. man. Killer. Mm. So, all right. Very doom. We shall move forward here. Uh, we are at Dennis. Where are you, Dennis? There he is. All right. <laughs> no one's talked about this band yet, but I'll be the first, and uh, it's going to be Exciter Heavy Metal. Nice. Main yeah. Nice. Um, man, just a yeah. classic fucking record. <laughs> um, obviously, starting out with Holocaust, um, the intro to Stand Up and Fight, and then Heavy Metal Maniac, Iron Dogs. That's a track. Yep. Such a banger. Red banger. Um, just a just like another one of those pure like heavy metal records where. Yeah. It's like there's you can't describe it as anything else. Yeah, you might it can go into the speed metal wheelhouse yeah. slightly. Yeah, but... it's there for me a little bit with like Raven too. Yep. Just edging in. Yeah, it is. Uh, Rising of the Dead, Black Witch, Cry of the Banshee. 
Um, it just has those tracks that are like evil and kind of fun too. It's not super serious. You don't take it as like a serious record. I mean, but you get like when twilight burns across the sky, you better run and hide. The beast will roar from deep inside. Like I love records with quotes on the back like that. Yeah, yeah, that's killer. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's just like when you when you put this on, you know what you're gonna get. So yeah. it's just a banger of a record. Like obviously Canadian. Um, I think I always felt like this band always got D class, like classified as like a thrash band when they were never a thrash band. Right. Yeah, I've always they, thought of them as thrash too, but they're they more got a little lumped band. in back then. Yeah. Yeah, they got lumped into that for yeah. I don't know why, honestly. Um yeah. like a lot of the thrash bands name dropped them. Like it didn't sound like they were name dropping them as an influence, you know, a contemporary. Yeah. It was just they when you talked about exciter people were always like, oh the thrash band. It was like they're not thrash. I mean I don't I mean, they had some thrash elements, maybe, but it was more speed metal and just pure. I mean, it was definitely uh, Judas Priest influence for sure. But um, the name. I always loved um, the first three records. Long Live the Loud is probably my favorite by Exciter. Yeah. Maybe. But I think this one is just more of their pure heavy metal record. And again, it's one of those bands that came up through the compilations. Um, I think they were on the U.S. metal um, comps coming out I got them I'm not here. positive I thought they were on that even though they're not US but I think they were on that yeah. I think they were I can't remember what track that was on I think it was World War three maybe it was on metal massacre I'm not sure but um I'd have to look yeah but that's yeah, this is, this, is, uh, this but, is definitely a band I need to put a little more time into they're yeah, one you that definitely got to because yeah. those, those first three records even the fourth one the fourth one unveiling is a pretty good record as well mm -hmm. but uh, but those three, Violence and Force and uh, Long Live the Loud, and Loud, this one, right. yeah. just fucking pure heavy metal. And even that album cover with the switch yeah. blade cutting open. Yeah, the cutting the Marshall open. I mean, that just screams heavy metal mania. Man. Fucking classic. I just saw them live last year and got my copy signed by Dan and Alan. Oh. Yeah, really Dan Beeler, man. That guy's yeah. underrated as a songwriter yeah, yeah. and a drummer. Oh, yeah. And a singer. Um, well, Silvani oh. from Aruba joining hey. us. That's pretty cool. I don't think I've ever seen anybody in a chat from Aruba. That's pretty badass. Uh, are you on vacation or you just happen to, or do you live there? Okay, that'd be really interesting to note. So, anyways, go ahead, Nick. Uh, well, before you start, Nick, pretty... Nick, before you start, buddy, cool. can I? I I'm going to have to bounce. So, um, oh, I'll catch you guys later. Uh, thanks, everyone. It's been cool. Oh, sorry, I was late coming on, and I've got to bugger off early. Hi, Johnny. Anyway, see you, buddy. Good to see you, Johnny. Yeah, yeah, guys. Thank you, see you, Johnny. Guys. Thanks very much. I'll catch you later. See you, bud. Okay. Yeah, this one already got brought up by uh, Eric, and yeah, uh, again, you can't go to Heavy Metal Island without Motorhead uh, because they're going to bring the party, the sleaze, True. It's and the cocaine. And the cocaine and probably, you know, 18 yeah. barrels of Jack Daniels, oh. 50 cartons of cigarettes. Uh, yeah, I, I, I need kind of the, the sleazy underbelly of heavy metal. And that that is Motorhead. And that is overkill for me. Like, yeah, the title track is an absolute standout. But these songs, while they have like the heavy metal elements, there's a lot of that just gritty hard rock, blues rock. Like, I mean, no class. No class is tush, if we're being honest. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it's, yeah, it is. It's the same fucking riff, but I don't care. Like, it's that good. I I just kind of want that sort of, like, filthy energy. And this band has always been great at that bridge between the rock fans, metal fans, the punk bands. Like, this is the band we can all kind of, like, yeah, we'll go with Motorhead, but I don't want to listen to your Iron Maiden shit, or I don't want to listen to this butt rock band. But, yeah, Motorhead, because, you know, Lemmy, respect. But, uh, yeah. Can't go to Heavy Metal without Island without Motorhead. It's that simple. And, you know, that's a way better mascot than uh, Riot. Like, 100%. Like, <laughs> I agree. <laughs> Hi, Logan. What you got? All right. How does it go? Other bands play. Man of War, War. kills. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Hail and kill. Hail and kill, oh. hail to England. Uh, Real men covering themselves in baby oil. 
you know, <laughs> if, if you guys are on the island and you hear the the chorus to uh, "Kill with Power" come on, watch out. There's about to be a uh, a drunk shirtless dude barreling through with a, a, a drinking horn in his hand. Take this banana boat and massage my shoulders, boy. <laughs> <laughs> it is steer clear, I guess. Uh, man, yeah, another uh, American band representing. But I feel like these guys wanted to be in uh, well overseas in England. Right, really, yeah. like their their sound was definitely a, a bit more polished, and I think they wanted to be virtuosos. Where there's definitely like a little less uh, um, attention to like technical detail for like uh, Manila Road and some of the other like American bands. I think these guys wanted to be like a you know over the top and technical maestros. Like look at Black Arrows on this album, right. where it's just kind of unnecessary i mean it's kind of <laughs> it fits it perfectly fast. and makes the album right. too but uh yeah it, and then of course we get to uh what the sound of steel or the one with the uh the achilles song which is like a 20 we you know with uh, a achilles drum, a drum and solo and a bass course. solo and stuff in it but uh, this one is straight uh some some great bangers on here uh blood of my enemies uh each dawn i die yeah and then bridge of death is a great great closing song too yep so had had to bring some uh some man of war for uh well, <laughs> well we'll see what happens with that I, I i like there's a quote on here from uh kirk weinstein from crowbar they see, he says that in high school they created a man of war drinking game. They would set up a shots of beer on the table and listen to the record. Whenever Eric sang "Die, Kill or Blood," they knock back a shot and they'd be blacked out by "Kill with Power." So <laughs> there you go. For sure, trust Kirk. Nate, I think you and I are too too girly manish for man of war. I think that's what the deal is. Like, I just never got it, man. I just I tried I, that album in particular and. I'll have oh. to try again, you, but I just this yeah. one hasn't clicked with you at all, or huh? nah, not really, man. But I you don't, don't even own a loincloth, you closer. I well, I'm not going to share that. <laughs> Leave the hall. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's my stream. <laughs> um, I'll leave the hall, I guess. Uh, no, no, no. Uh, you guys can like what you like. I just never, it just never clicked with me. Anyway, I, I, maybe I'm I'll have to try here again. I didn't like King Diamond for many, many years, so maybe it, may, and I finally clicked a while back. So who knows? Maybe I just need to try again. Try harder, bitches. Yeah, I okay. Think, I think people take Man of War too seriously. They're, they're yeah. not. <laughs> yeah, probably is. So, Kellen, what you got? Where are we at, guys? I honestly I don't even know what we're on. We that was my six. I have four left. So okay, yeah, six, four okay. left. All right. So uh Eric already talked about this, but um the synapsin is uh my Judas Priest record of choice. Nice. Um for any for any how else I'll say this. Like out of all the bands that have came from the 1970s into the 80s trying to introduce or codify what heavy metal was, I think Judas Priest probably should be credited for most of it. Um, on this record, I think they navigate sort of the 1970s rock thing into a more crystalline version of what heavy metal is. Um, so like the, the polarization of this record is pretty intense, but when they go heavy metal on it, um, it's perfect. So, uh, I'm going to say this is the, the record I'll go to from Judas Priest. I'll pick it over any Iron Maiden record. And, uh, <laughs> and, <laughs> and uh, that's for me. I think it does. I think it does uh, the best job in terms of bridging one era into the next. Yeah. I mean, I, yeah. I can't live without Sinner or Dissonant. I agree. I agree. Yeah, it definitely was. It definitely was the Br bridge album where we we get into the we get from the '70s stuff into the more I guess the more new wave of British heavy metal thing, right? Yeah. Okay, uh, Matt, I believe you're up next. So my number five choice is definitely album number two from this band. Also after this, diminishing returns for me. Got to go with it. 
It's Motley Crue. It's Shout at the Devil. Oh, look at you. I mean, that's a damn good album. I mean, yeah. that. <laughs> that's what caught my eye when I saw the ad in Circus Magazine in like right. October, November, 83. I was like, I need to hear what the fuck that sounds like. Vince Neil wants his abs back 50, 40 years. <laughs> yeah. right? You mean Vince Meal? Yeah. Vince Meal. Yeah, yeah, Vince Meal. Yeah. Amazingly, voice- amazingly. Vince Meal couldn't really sing back then either because I saw him on that tour. And he was a studio creation, I think. Yeah, very oh, yeah. much those yeah. artists. Yeah, they looked good back metal, then. Air metal. Mm-hmm. Yeah, a lot of good songs on there, man. Like Bastards. Bastards, um, great. Ten seconds. Ten seconds to love. To love. love Red Danger. Hot. Yeah. Yeah, really, really good stuff. And they were great live, man. They had that thing live that you know it was. I saw them. You'll appreciate this, Matt, and and probably Dennis. I saw uh, it was Rat on Out of the Cellar, okay, and except for Balls to the Wall Damn. and Motley Crue. <laughs> That's a great fucking huh. show. Yeah, yeah, yep. And it was weird because there'd been a terrible rainstorm during um, during right before the show started, like terrible, like lightning. I thought they were going to cancel the show, and a follow spot started to fall off the. The, the transom or what the, the 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 tower they had out in right. the field we were way back man we were probably you know 60 feet from the stage or something like that 100 feet from the stage and we but we had to be right where the snakes were for the follow spots in the board and when they came on the pa and they're like hey we're we're gonna the show's gonna start in about a half hour we gotta do something with the light board whatever we me and my buddy he just hits me he's like Grab, grab that cable because all these roadies came out and they're like snake they're, they're carrying the snakes in we just jumped in line went right to this right to the right up against we couldn't get on the stage we, although i don't think they would have stopped us quite frankly i think they thought we were part of the road crew and we got right against the stage and watched the whole show from literally right on the huh. on the, the barricade in the front so during that that show it was a great show great show cool all right good pick um Roger. Yeah, I'm uh, definitely not going to an island without this band, except. Ah, nice. It didn't necessarily pick my favorite album, but uh, I love this album as well. And, you know, you could go with uh, Restless and Wild, or, mm-hmm. you know, any any of these early albums, I think, are kind of or not, the, the, not the two first, right. but, um, but up to this album, it's. Uh, Top class for me, one of my favorites. Um, heavy metal albums back in the days. So, you know, TV War, Monster Man, uh, Aiming High, uh, Walking in the Shadows, uh, killer tracks on this album. And uh, Udo Dirk Schneider is unique vocalist. Oh, for sure, man. I did, I'm, I'm trying to think. What was the... Hold on, let me look here. Yeah, I kind of fall on that metal heart and balls of the wall was one that always got me because i used to see i mean that's the tour i saw him on yeah but there was a local band that always did balls to the wall yeah. I, they used to sound so fucking heavy and that has like i believe that has london leather boys on it yeah yep uh does it have russian winter on it too no no winter dreams sorry winter dreams. dreams losing more um losing more than you've ever had that's yep. yeah great great yeah. stuff they didn't make my cut but but no, I normally yeah. I normally pick Metal Heart, but I showed that so many times on stream, so I just went with another one. Mix it up one. a little bit, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, good, good, good pick. I'll be wondering if you're the only accept guy. You might be, unless unless Matt has something. Uh, I have an honorable mention. Okay, me too. There she is. <laughs> All right, That's uh, what I got. Eric, <laughs> you're up. All right, I'm finally into the '80s. Um, yeah, that looks familiar. <laughs> agree with Logan on everything he said with this one. I mean, even just from the cover art, you look at that and it instantly makes you want to listen to it. Um, I don't know what art this is. It looks kind of old. I'm I'm not sure who did it, but uh, I don't know. Is it Ronald? Very Bosch? cool. It it is uh, an older oh. painting. Let me see. What is it? Yeah, I don't know. I can't. I can't find anything on here. But anyway, yeah, just such a an amazing album. Uh, 
1980, super early for the new wave of British heavy metal and just really intense. There's a lot of super heavy stuff on here. Angel of Death, uh, Devil's Tower, Atlantis, White Witch. I mean, then you have the, the super catchy stuff like Confused, Sweet Danger, Angel Witch. Yeah, like Logan said, that, that song like pops into my head all the time. Um, uh, I think it was Johnny said he saw them live. That's be so cool to hear that song live. Um, yeah, I don't know. This is just a total masterpiece to me. Um, one of those bands too that kind of fell off the radar. I think they had some lineup changes and stuff at, right after this. Um, it took them like another four or five years to get an album out, and they kind of just missed the boat. But uh, this is just a timeless classic. Their their two newer ones too in the last few years are awesome as well. Yeah. Um, yeah, but just perfect, perfect '80s heavy metal album. Yep, I had that uh, as a honorable mention as well. The nice yep. deluxe edition. John yep. Martin is the artist. Uh, the Fallen okay. Angels, Fallen Angels entering <laughs> Pandemonium. There you go. Um, yeah, <laughs> that's pretty metal. All right, I don't have much to say. We've already talked about this. Uh, I, I stained class is my favorite, nostalgic favorite. Love sin after sin. Uh, but this is the one I almost always reach for the most. Yeah, so good. My only issue with it is the drum sound is a little canned. You know, sure. What's that? Canned. It's, it's got that '80s canned drum sound of it. Yeah, it's just very reverby and very yeah. roomy and flappy. But I still, the the quality of the songs on here are what does it for me. Mm -hmm. We talked about them all. Free Will Burning, Jawbreaker, Rock Hard, Ride Free. I love that song, Rock Hard, Ride Free, man. I don't know why. <laughs> love Bites, man. That song. Love yeah. Bites. Love it. In the dead of yeah, night. night. <laughs> love Bites. Bites. Uh, Eat Me Alive. I love that track, too. Heads are going to roll, man. When they play that live. Roll. Some heads are going to uh, And actually, the one track on here that live is so killer is, is Defenders of the Faith, man. Yeah. Like, it just is that anthemic you know we are the defenders of the faith um and then the sentinel i already said it the sentinel man greatest freeze track ever so um amongst a lot of killer tracks so there you go moving on see i didn't even talk that much there look at that guys how about that <laughs> it's a new record <laughs> all right i'm going uh we're going to sweden right now man and we're going to pick uh, probably somebody might have this. Maybe not, man. I got Oz firing. <laughs> wow. No, maybe that one. Honorable <laughs> mention. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, man. This record, man. This is so, like, energetic and, like, just screams metal all the way through. Very, very super catchy record. Um, that's And then you got Corthon right here holding a fucking skull. Uh, which is adds to the mystique of the record. Um, a search, like, I mean, every song. I mean, I can go through like Black Candles and yep, that's uh, the one. Yeah, that's a badass song, man. But this is Gambler, even Fortune, like the way he sings on this. So I, I, I don't want to compare this to Sarathon Gold, but his vocals kind of have that. You have to either love him or hate him. Like he has that kind of that vocal delivery that is odd i guess yeah i i struggle with tim man yep um but yeah man this record it's a fucking banger like so catchy and so uh what's the word i want to use like it's very um well yeah all started in finland and then went to sweden uh but man such a banger of a record um it's very like off the cuff, like it doesn't sound like a band that like rehearsed a lot. It sounds like they went in the studio and just made a metal record. Exactly, that, that's yeah. the exact vibe we're getting because you can yeah, count like I get. it's, it's so like weird. little hitches here and there. Like eh, I didn't quite nail it, but yeah, it's like yeah, I, okay. I went into the studio with a case of beer and this is what I came up with, <laughs> and that's what it sounds like. And it sounds like fucking heavy metal. And man, I I put this on and. uh 
it is so now nah, it's not 3d printed because you know what man i had this actual skull when i was a kid it's a halloween candle <laughs> <laughs> and it melts if it, it melts down you get blood out of this thing so um oh yeah, wow man. that's, that's right. cool that's cool now that's banger, better banger that's of a record and highly recommend it for anyone i'll have to try that one out but if he sounds like no he doesn't he doesn't he sound doesn't, like that i just it's, said it's, he, it's really gritty old school metal like flat out like it, it sounds like it was jammed in the studio it's fun i dig it yep. uh guys cool. surprised this one hasn't come up and uh you know since we all offer praise to the dark lord we have to talk about saint good album man. according to the act debut album i pretty much got this on a whim same guy that uh sold me on early scorpions and that oz album it's like you ever heard of satan's like i mean how are you asking that <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, he introduced me to this. This is the Metal Mind reissue, I think. It's the, yeah, Gold Disc. And uh, he's like, dude, this is if you love Iron Maiden, you love all that shit. He's like, well, yeah, so check this out. And honestly, like, this man is almost it's like a proto speed metal, proto thrash metal vibe to it. It's very heavy. Like, the riff work feels like slightly more intense and. There's a bit of darkness to it. Like it isn't all like party and fun. Like there's a mystique, like an occult aura about them. And flat out, I love all of their albums. This band, the the riff work, the guitar play between. Oh god, I find their names in here. Uh, shit. No, uh, whatever. But both guitars, they both roll. I think they're still both in the band too. But yeah. Flat out amazing, very intricate, like unique melodies. Like they're not just like your traditional new album harmonies and such. And uh, I've been a fan ever since I picked up this album. And yeah, all their recent albums have been absolutely fantastic. Did the frontman's like in his 70s or about to turn 70 this year? And he still has a fantastic range. Um, yeah, nothing but bangers from this band, in my opinion. But yeah, I was kind of surprised this one didn't come up, but. I don't yeah, know. Man. It's kind of hard for them my, to kind of take off. One of my biggest off. regrets was trading the OG fucking press that I had oh. back in the day. But OG press traded an OG press. Yeah, something not <laughs> right with that. Something not right with that man. <laughs> that was the that was the day that the Earth's axis tilted the other direction. <laughs> <laughs> but I can see why this band may have fallen into some obscurity, just because, like you know, you can't even hide at that point. Like, oh no, mom, this is just a, a, a rock band. Like, what do they call it? Uh, Satin. Satin. Satan. Satan. <laughs> something. It's not. It's not what you think, mom. <laughs> Oh, fun. Mm. All right. Uh, one last uh, classic American heavy metal band and album. Surprise, this is the first time we're talking about uh, Sierra oh, Thunder. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's a good yeah, one. Yeah. Yeah. I know well, there's, we just didn't talk a about them a bunch. We just talked about them. We we're talking about this vocalist. Yeah, but. Were you, you here for that? Me. Were you, you here for that, me. or did you dip out mentally for a couple? Seconds? I might have dipped. That might have happened. Did anyone show Sir Thungle already? No, no we but just we were talking about the vocal. Yeah, yeah, but that that doesn't okay. mean he's coming to the island with us. That's what I'm talking okay, about. All right, okay, all right. Logan's making sure he's coming to the island. He's coming to the island now. The vocalist <laughs> right. is coming to the island, and he's gonna be crooning for anyone who's interested. Uh, yeah, this is probably the most. Uh, depressing of like the the american bands i don't know like it, a lot of uh post-apocalyptic and just uh you know the world is ending you know humanity Dude, take is that out of the case. Kind of vibes yeah you're gonna like <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah, there, yeah. There. it's late afternoon here so i guess the glare is getting worse jesus yeah, i like, I I like the album cover you know what that al album cover was for oh what that album cover was originally for a Michael Moorcock book called Elric of Melnibone. That was the um, Elric of Mel Melnibone was the series. Elric, the he was an albino warrior. I forget yeah. Elric is, is something this, or whatever. Is this Elric over here? He was like, he was like a Conan, like a young like, Conan. Yeah, right. Kind of in that. Vein. What was yeah, that I don't know. last name again? Michael Moorcock. What Come you... on now. Can we grow <laughs> up a little there, fella? No. Um, 
but it's a true story. That was the original album or the original artwork for the. Mm. I think that might be the first Elric Meldebone um, thing. And Michael Moorcock worked with the Hawkwind guys and did a bunch of stuff and even oh, did yeah. stuff live with the Hawkwind guys. Yeah. What weren't those Elric made into comics too? Weren't they? Probably. I, I think don't so. No, since we don't have any Brits here, Johnny probably would have known. Maybe kind of would have known, but yeah. I love that artwork. Cool artwork. Yeah, great. This is actually, I think this is my favorite. Uh, is it Kirith? Alan's not I here. don't know no, how you I'll, I'll just call it Sirith. Sirith. I always said Sirith. It's, it's pronounced Kirithungal in the books, I think, originally, but the band all, always said Sirithungal. I was going to mix up Thank which you. one is, because I know that's wrong, but right. Uh, yeah, I, I like this one. It's a bit more to the to the point, to the to the throat. And kind of hard rocking as well. And there's yeah, some. It's a, it's a killer record, man. Yeah, some of the catchiest uh, songs are on here from this band. Friggin' uh, Chaos Descends. Yeah. Uh, Hundred miles per hour. In the yeah, so Doom Planet, like that chorus. <laughs> yeah. I, yeah, I, I I've really grown to like this album. And originally, I was gonna try to pull King of the Dead, but I think I like this one better. Believe it or not. Just it's quicker and the songs are. It's, it's my favorite fun. for sure. Yeah, I, I think I'll be with See, you. Here's another one. This is another one of their. Uh, that's that's the one um, that Eric uh, has behind him, yeah. right? Yeah. Uh, yeah, that yeah. that was one of the artwork the debut, interviews. right? So, so Elric know. is on all of their album covers. Oh, is he? Is he okay? There's the other one. Yeah. 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 Big Michael, big time. Michael Good. Whalen. Michael Whalen does the artwork there oh, oh is that who it is yeah. partnered with all the sirathongol uh so unlike a, a seal that's their mascot so. <laughs> yeah it is right right, right. right. Because the, the last album had him striking quite the uh the sexy pose well is I that mean, whale is that whaling guy still alive yeah well, how old is he Oh, let's see. I don't know how old he is. Got to be up there, man. It's gotta I be mean, he's, he's been doing work for fucking years. I mean, dude, dude, Arise was the first piece of artwork I ever saw by him. I was like, holy shit. This oh, is yeah. Cool. Oh, shit, where am I at? Who was next? I'm sorry. Um, Kellen was next. <clears throat> Michael Whalen would be uh, 74. That's what I thought. He was pretty young when he did those Elric covers. But that was in the 60s, so... Okay, so we'll look for a, a new band here. Um, this is uh, Mystic Storm. Yeah, with their record uh, from Ancient Chaos. So this a uh, this Russian band. I mean, you can tell by the album what we're kind of the like a epic heavy metal thing, but they're heavily influenced by like speed metal. Think Chastain slash Holy wow. Moses. Detent. Ooh. Yeah. It's it's a little bit more towards the speed thrash thing, but they also sing completely in Russian. So the lyric content's a little bit different in terms of getting into it. But um, the there's like some slower parts here, uh, but for the most part, I would almost classify this as closer to like a speed thrash metal listen right. almost. What year did that come so, out? Uh, 21. Oh, okay. 2021. It's on Jawbreaker Records. Uh, I think it was originally independently released. On tape. Um, on set, then Jawbreaker assigned them. I think they've moved to High Roller since. But Killer female vocalist. Yeah. Yeah. She sounds a little bit like, uh, you know, uh, more like Dawn Crosby and oh, nice. that okay. type of, yeah, just a fantastic album. Have to check that one out. If you dig Chastain or Holy Moses, then I love both those bands. Okay, okay. <laughs> yeah, wait, are we talking Chastain with Leather Leon singing? Yeah. yeah, yeah, more, more, more like that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Mm. They do a cover of the Tents on the album, so oh, okay. that's kind of uh, also in in the way of of that band. Yeah. Matt. All right, number four. We've already talked about it. It's Wasp. Self-titled yeah, debut yeah. album, nineteen eighty-four, Capitol Records. Love this album. 
immediately bought it when I saw it. Didn't need to see anything about it. I'm just like, get this album. Right. Uh, of course, it's got Love Machine and I Want to Be Somebody. Great songs. I really love some of the other stuff, though. I love Tormentor. Yeah. Torture Never Stops. Some great stuff on the B side. Um, also, Wasp was in the movie Rage Wars, also known as the Dungeon Master. They play the Devil's Band. And there you go, man. Oh, really? The Dungeon Master was coming yeah, out. That movie great. rules. <laughs> See that movie. Damn, I didn't know that. I had oh, no yeah. idea. When, what yeah. year was that? Uh, I want to say 80, 45. Four or five? Yeah. yeah. Is yeah. Tormentor playing? playing? They're, They're playing Tormentor, Tormentor aren't they, the up there on the stage? Yeah. They perform yeah. Tormentor. And it's an alternate version. I think it's like an earlier version because it's not quite this version. Yeah. The lyrics are slightly different even. I don't know if it was a demo version at the time. But yeah, it's pretty cool. Hellion's badass too. And yep. man, I mean, honestly, is there a better metal track than I Want to Be Somebody, man? That right. fucking song yeah. rules. Yeah. Just song right out of the gate. Yep. And we, you know, we talked about this on our episode. Uh, Kellen and I, you know, I went with... Um, Headless Children, okay, because a little more proggy, a little more sure for you, yeah, dynamically a little deeper for me. But yeah. I can't argue this album. And frankly, other than the semi kind of radio friendly, uh, um, Sleeping in the Fire. No, 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 no. Oh. Um, oh, that song rules. Inside the Electric Circus. Oh, you're uh, the album. Okay, yeah, yeah. Uh, the first five albums, everything up through Crimson yep. Idol. Yeah. It's just a fucking amazingly killer band. And like nobody sounds like Blackie, man. No. Blackie doesn't sound like Blackie now live. <laughs> <laughs> well, there might be that. But, <laughs> but you know what? I'll probably still go to see that Armored Saint uh Wasp tour when if, yeah, if, they, sure. if they end up doing that again. They were supposed to do it and then it got kibosh because Blackie had surgery. But I heard that you know it was great, but you could tell, I mean, well, you could see yeah. you could see live stuff where he had all the backing tracks. Swears it's not, but right. You know, come on, man. You know. I remember seeing the first tour for this. Uh, they opened for Kiss. And oh, really? The, Meet, the Tormentor rack. It was all of that. Yeah. Oh, lucky the, you, man. The mystique yeah, was, of this record, especially with uh, Chris Holmes on the fucking, uh, uh, oh, shit, what was that video? Decade or. Oh, uh, uh, Decline 2? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah watch dude. Your dude. Oh, man. <laughs> I've yeah. never seen a man more drunk. Yeah, right. <laughs> but his mom. allegedly, though, I've heard stories that maybe it was just water and he was putting on, but he claims he was. Fucked no, up. it he, wasn't. He doesn't I like know. the fact that he looked that bad was... like that, you know. Yeah, yep. um, his mom was sitting right there. Too. Yeah, <laughs> look how she sees some shit. <laughs> and she's drinking so many... too. That's the thing. That's what's well, I would too if that was my kid. I mean, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'll tell you what, though, man. Pound for pound, and I love a lot of Wasp songs, a lot of Wasp albums. Yeah. But man, is there a cooler track than Wild Child? Man, that song is good. I yeah, love. That I don't song. know, man. Blind in Texas is a killer track too. And see, now I, that's why that's the stuff I don't <laughs> like, man. I don't like when huh. when he got like poppy like that. I like when he was that's more mysterious poppy. and dark. It's on the yeah, same record. It's a killer track. Yeah, okay. All right. <laughs> That's not one of my favorites on that album. I just love Wild Child. Anyway, good I'm, like, I'm with you, Matt. Though I think that that's the record, and Love Machine is the song. Off yeah, that. Uh, Love Machine is fucking good. killer, man. Yeah. Killer yeah. track. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Hey, Jeff, oh. I got I gotta dip out here in a bit because I gotta go down because uh, there's a show that I guess technically we're promoting. I don't know, <laughs> uh, but I just got three left. I can run through them real quick, and I, a few honorable mentions that haven't been brought up because everyone else brought them up. Well, that kind of fucks everybody else then if it's one of their choices, you know. Well, I mean? uh, uh, go go for it, Nick. No I, sure. I, yeah, because I'm reasonably sure only only one of these is going to pop up on anyone else's list. Uh, okay. Maybe another one, I don't know. But uh, I'm well, just wait. Gonna... Let me let me finish this okay. round and then we'll come over there. So I've got Eric and wait, who do I have yet? I have Ro Ro Roger and Eric and me. Since we talked yeah, about it, so, um, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> so we have already talked about this, so I uh, don't need to. Uh, Widowmakers on there, right? Yep. Yeah. I mean, it's just uh, killer. Yeah. Fistful of Diamonds, Last Command. I mean, I fucking mean. rules. Oh, yeah. Um, Last Command's a great track, too. I'm yeah, 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 yeah. Absolute killer. And, uh, you know, Blind in Texas is a great song. So, 
Ah, okay. <laughs> if you swear by it, I, I just uh, think they should have, you know, uh, used uh, that wasp instead of that. Yeah, one. it's like every album had a different logo. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So. Uh, oh yeah, that oh, logo yeah. with the with the yeah. Killer, killer album. Okay, Eric. Speaking of killer albums. Mm. Uh -huh. <laughs> no, no, no. Um. Yeah, uh, Johnny already left, but I'm totally with him. Um, I always had trouble with Bruce Bruce Dickinson. I don't know. He's a great singer, but I just I I've never loved his voice. So um, I do love a lot of Maiden records, but the first two are definitely my favorites, and this one is just perfect to me. Um, it's a little bit less raw than the debut. The production is definitely better. Um, Man, every song on here just rips. Uh, Genghis Khan, maybe my, one of my he uh, favorite metal instrumentals of all time. Yeah, it's is. fantastic. Um, obviously, Bruce is a better singer, but Paul Diano just fit this material he had something so well. well. There's no doubt. He right. had that punk. He had that punk attitude edge that made him yeah. street more yeah. street with that. Yeah. Just a real quick. Um, I got this actually off of m my buddy's dad's ex-girlfriend. Um, her brother used to be a roadie for Priest and Maiden back in the 80s. He passed away a few years ago, unfortunately. But she had a, she inherited all his Maiden stuff. So I oh, yeah. got this. I got the, the mug that I showed off. I got a pair of these. Oh, oh sure. They're Look pretty at those. cool. And, uh, those are awesome. Check, check this out. It's too warm to wear it right now, but... A Christmas ah. sweater. That's cool. It's pretty sick. That's pretty. So, that is really sick. Had to show that off. Yeah, <laughs> amazing album. Anyway. All right. Um, I need to check my list. I totally forget what the hell I had up next. Sorry. Um. Oh. Yeah. Who was I supposed to ask for this? Uh. I think. Um. No, no, not, not that yet. No, no, not yet. <laughs> Thank you, Robert. You just blew my uh, top choice there. Um, I think it was Matt. Matt, you pulled up somewhere, right? What? I don't remember pulling anything for you. Uh, was it was it a band that began with S? No, it's Maiden. Who had? It was you... is uh, fucking uh, Raj. Roger, Roger picked that one already. No, no. Oh, was it you that picked that, Roger? Roger? Yeah. Roger, sorry. Uh, no, no, I, I picked out the uh, S album. <laughs> okay, hold on. Somebody. Wait, come on, somewhere gonna, in time, right? Somewhere in time, right? Somewhere in time. Yeah, I had yeah. Some, somewhere in time. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, all right, we've already, we've already kind of, we know what it looks like. So there you go. There we go. There we go. Uh, best album cover by far. The artwork so fucking killer. Uh, I love this album, man. Every song is great. Uh, the my favorite song by them, possibly. Man, I think it's my favorite song. In fact, I, no, I'm sure it is. The lead-off track, man, Somewhere in Time, is just yeah. fucking beyond epic, man. That's the, the best song on the record. Oh, my God, that intro, this, the synths, and the, mm -hmm. the, 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 the... Ah, it's such an amazing song, and Bruce's vocals on it are amazing. And, you know, I mean, I get where some people may not, may have a thing with Bruce's vocals, but I love them, man. And I do like... I really like the Deano stuff too, but I, I just really love this album, and I would not want. I guess I could have chose something else if we're all stuck on the island. I could just borrow Rovers, but I mean, you know, I, I, whatever. <laughs> right. so, uh, but yeah, man, it's just, uh, it's just a banger. And you have the the kind of the perfect mix of the more, I guess, radio friendly to a degree. You got Sea of Madness. You got, uh, of course, you got fucking Wasted Time. Or I'm sorry, wasted years. years. Um, you've got uh, what's the other? What was the other big track off there? Well, Stranger in a Strange Land was was the Adrian stuff, and Adrian Alexander really started the, the great Alexander the Great. Um, loneliness and long distance for runner. Great song. Love. Don't forget, heaven can wait. Heaven can wait, and then isn't uh, yeah, what's see the, on season madness too? Is is deja vu or still life on there? Deja vu. Deja vu. Deja vu. Deja vu. Yeah. I love that song. And it's really funny because that's the album, in my opinion, where Adrian's writing starts to really 
be, he becomes a real big player as opposed to just Harris and Dave Murray and it's or just Harris for the most part. He really starts to assert himself as a a killer writer. So yeah, okay. Deja Vu is a great song. Great song. Let's see. All right. So let me do. Um, let me do. All right. Yeah, that's quick, and then we'll jump onto you, man. Cool. Thank you. You're you're muted. You're muted. Muted. Sorry. All right, here we go. Fucking U.S. banger, Queen. Oh, Royce. that's a great album. Almost, I almost picked that. Still need to get wow. that. One. God damn, this fucking record rules. Um, Love that album. Yeah. Yeah, you have the EP, which fucking destroys, and yep. this comes out. Yeah. And, man, dude. God, somebody um, does Warding. And then one five six. And four. And then one five six. Yeah. And four sanctuary. Golden Even deliverance. The, uh, yep. <laughs> Take hold of the flame. Even the radio song is just a fucking right. killer track. Roads to Madness, man. Come on, Moses. I mean, his voice oh, and the music in this, you can tell like they had these songs. You can yeah. tell they had these songs even when the EP came out and they were like yeah. waiting to unleash us. This is Child a of Fires record. on there, right? Yeah, you can tell, man. This record is like it yeah. doesn't sound like a commercial record, like. Right. I think people that bought this record, even for Take Hold of the Flame, when they got it, were like, what are we listening to right now? It didn't, <laughs> it didn't like fit the mold of what was coming out because you had Molly Crew and Dio and all those bands coming out. And this band comes out and they're like, okay, it's like, I mean, you can kind of compare them to Iron Maiden, definitely with the EP, but oh, yeah, yep. Yeah, but this, it took it to another level. And uh, I remember just like sitting. Like in high school, waiting to get picked up by the bus and listening to this, like on my walk, man, like man, like just being blown away. Yeah. And um, well, and the thing up. about the thing about them, Dennis, that was you know, you had had the high pitched King Diamond thing, but yeah. Jeff Tate was Jeff Tate was a different animal because he was the thing I've always struggled with. King was it always was right on the verge of being cartoony sounding. Yep. And Whereas, I feel like with Jeff, he was very no. controlled. He was very oh, 1 million percent. Yeah. 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 It was operatic, but it was still yep. heavy. Right. Yeah. And he was, and I don't know if that was a studio thing. Cause I never saw these, these guys. Oh no, he was, oh, no, no. I saw him back in, um, for operation mind crime when it came out. Yeah. Nah, he could fucking hit those notes easy. Yeah. Right, but man, yeah. I mean, I mean, even the live stuff. If you listen to it back then, he's like on point with all these uh, live in Tokyo home video. Yep, that's yeah. That tour. yeah, amazing. So it's on YouTube. It's perfect. great. Just yeah, I fucking... mean, I mean, Jeff was the template for all those singers. I think even over like John Arch and Ray Alder and. All oh, yeah. the all the high pitched screamers. Jeff was the guy. Like he was I mean, the got, first. Even if you go back and listen to like what you're saying, because they're always going to reference Jeff. Like, yeah, Jeff was like who we're trying to emulate in these kind of vocals that we're trying to do, yep. which was really really um, original at the time because no one else was doing these kind of things. Exactly. You had Bruce, right? Who was kind of doing those operatic things? Yeah, but Bruce isn't in Jeff Tate's range. No way. Right. No way. But Jeff had a different. He had a different emotion in his vocals. Where I felt Bruce is always very, uh, very like centered on his vocals. Where Jeff took it to another level. Where Bruce always knew where I can only do this. Where Jeff was like, "Well, I'm going to do Bruce, and I'm going to do it, and then I'm going to go there. that much further yep. with it." Yeah. I mean, yep. just take. Just take the top end of Queen of the Reich. Yep. Nobody out there was doing that. Not even Halford, man. No. Nope. Not even Halford was doing that. Yeah, just a fucking banger, man. Yeah. Fucking stone love that album. Nothing, yeah. Right here. Love that album, but I'm gonna be honest with you. In recent year or two, that's always been my favorite. Man, I'm telling you, Rage for Order is pushing it hard. It's a great record, man. Yeah. Pushing well, it well. hard. It fights for first place with me. Yep. Rage. It's just a killer album with a lot of there's a little more diversity on the rage for yep. out for yep. uh order album with I mean it's not as songs. metal as yeah, right. not quite, not quite. It's a little, quite. It's a little, little more record. proggy. Some, a little yep. more proggy. Yeah. Catchy. And then you get operation, which is completely overrated in my opinion. Well, they, <laughs> uh, I still love that album, man. I do. Yeah, I mean it's, it's good. It's just it's not 
I don't know. It's just but it's, it's overrated. It, That's all I'm saying. Eh, you might be right about that, but it's also the album that kind of really put them on the map overall. Yeah, and did, then but... also it's kind of like what a lot of the other epic prog metal bands started to emulate as far yep. as the concept album. So all right, Nick, what do you got? You got three, you said? Yep, I got my last three here. Uh, sorry, I wish I could stay a little bit longer, but I got a place to be. Uh, well, first one, already been brought up once. Uh, yeah, Saxon, Wheels of Steel. I like this band because they kind of sit in between Iron Maiden and Motorhead. Like, you still get the rock sleaze, okay. but huh. it's a little bit more maybe refined. It's less punky than Motorhead. Right. But, I mean, solid, solid songs in here. And I got this in a... Nice package of all the original albums, which this was a nice find. But uh, this has been my favorite out of the batch. Strong, Ar Strong Arnold Law is kind of up there, too. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah, dude, I mean, the title track, 747, Strangers in the Night. Mm -hmm. Absolutely love that song. It's just yep. super catchy. Yeah. But, yeah, fantastic, old school. And these last two are newer. And uh, it's kind of part of that whole thing where I said, like, Trad, I kind of felt was more about, like, the retroactive thing. And big one for me was In Solitude, uh, their self-titled debut. This album is absolutely fantastic, bordering on almost perfect. Like, everything I love about heavy metal is on here, but it also has a dark, sinister, kind of a culty vibe. Admittedly, it's a little close to uh, yeah, Merciful Fate. And vocally, kind of similar, though. I think this guy has a more controlled range. Like, he's not reaching for those uh, kind of cartoonish highs that King Diamond does that just still kind of makes me like go, eh, not yet. But uh, musically, riff after riff, it's fantastic. Unfortunately, this band only had a three album run and all three of the albums are brilliant. But this debut is probably my favorite out of the batch. I mean, I feel like, again, you like Killers and just that old school vibe. It's here, but it's darker, spookier, more mystique to it. And then uh, the other one <clears throat> might be on Jeff's list because we were talking about this one. Night, Voices of the Great Crying. album. Yeah. Not on my list, though. Yeah. yeah. Dear God, this is one of the catchiest albums with it is. some of the weirdest vocals. Like the vocals <laughs> sound like the yeah. ghost of Lemmy wheezing through an air conditioning vent. It's, right. <laughs> it's haunting and creepy, but I mean, it's effective. It it's works. Cool. It's really songs, cool. Yep. And I, I dare this album to be catchier. Like every song in here has solid hooks and they're again, more driven by the harmonies and the leads, you know, not so much by the vocals. Like the vocals have their own unique effect. Like they're, I, I mean, I won't even call them blackened. It's just, yeah, they're, they're not, they're kind of ghostly like, lemmy. Yeah. The ghostly lemmy sort of vibe. Yeah. But I mean, every track in here is absolutely killer. Start to finish, like the opening track, Archeron, like those ascending harmonies on there. It's it's an instant earworm. Uh, Liber X Doctrina, one of the best songs on here. But I mean, everything on here, absolutely fantastic. I this was a year ender for me when it came out, and uh, coming back to it, it's it's such a banger, and it's like a short album too. You can burn through this one super quickly and just start it right back up and conjure Lemmy's ghost again. And it's awesome. Every time that's a fun album, really fun album. And then yeah. my honorable mentions are pretty brief. I mean, uh, another retro band, black trip going under Don't know uh, that. more like it, it's definitely has that early, uh, heavy metal sound, like kind of bordering on hard rock. <clears throat> this band, I think actually has, uh, some members in here that went on to do tribulation. It's Ooh. just straight up retro rock, great harmonies, but it's a little Ooh. bit more, again, like kind of thin Lizzy ish, but it has like a more metal sheen on it. Gruffer vocals, like they're not super sing songy. Uh, it's it's fun. It's just got a lot of grit to it. And I think the songs are super, uh, sorry, super uh, catchy, like Voodoo Queen, the opening track on here. It's just a banger instantly. And <clears throat> I went older with my Def Leppard. I, I got this like last year, the year before. Catcher than hell. Like this is like kind of like the hidden gem that I think everyone kind of overlooks. Uh, unless you're like, you know, a diehard no album fan, then you go out and find this. But yeah, dude, this this album is absolutely amazing. Dude, when the walls come tumbling down. That's a good track, yeah. That might be one of my favorite Def Leppard tracks now. Like that is so well written. I mean, the hooks, everything. Fantastic. Wasted one of the first guitar songs I learned back in the in the uh, nineteen eighty or so. 
I think the only song I didn't like that much was "Hello America." Is like you're, you're from, yeah, it's a little. Yeah. You're, you're from you're from England, and I feel like you're already trying to appeal to the American audience. But I mean, they knew their target audience; they knew what was going to sell. Rock song. Uh, I did have Dio, but different Dio. Uh, Mob mm, Rules. Great album. Amazing. I'm, I'm I'm one of those weirdos that I like Mob Rules a little bit more. I do too. Just yeah, like, but hell. I just I don't know. I, I think like yeah. it's just got some stronger songs, dude. And yeah, uh, Logan Logan tipped my hand a little bit last night. And he's like, oh, you got a maybe a song on there about a sign sign that goes kind of like a little bit south, maybe. I was like, yeah, I might. Uh, but yeah, that song alone, "Sign of the Southern Cross," I think is uh, I don't know in over terms of the New York era. Yeah, it's like one of the best. Standing yeah. on the edge of the world, man. Come on. Yeah. Oh, dude, voodoo. That fucking baseline and voodoo, man. Oh, it's got pelvic thrusts all throughout it. Mm -hmm. But yeah, that one. And then the last one I have, newer one, almost made my year end list. Night Demon Outsider. Uh, I've heard a lot about this band. I gotta check them out. You'll you'll dig them, dude. Just kind of big rock hooks with a good metal backbone to them. Great harmonies, great leads. There's a lot of stuff on here that I would say if you were a big fan of the sword and you just kind of wanted. Okay. Um, yeah. like a more heavy metal centric version of it this one really good kind of gruff vocals like not quite like john bush but in more of that arena than say like you know bruce dickinson or you know, rob Halford or anything like that but yeah classic retro super catchy like yeah. every song in here just has big monstrous hooks and uh yeah i, I like all of their albums honestly they have i think this is their fourth or fifth and yeah, so far all bangers. Yeah, you you probably dig these guys, Jeff. I'm pretty sure I would. I'm seeing them live in May. Oh, nice. Yeah, I, where are I they from? North life. Carolina. I'm going out to uh, Denver again. But is that a North Car? Aren't they from North Carolina? No, they're from California, I think. Oh, are they Cali? Okay. Right. Yeah. Bye, right, Nick. Well, yep. Yeah, thank you guys so much for having me. I wish you could nice say to see you. Now get the fuck out of here. Oh, <laughs> stop being like that. He's going to talk about Rush the rest of the time, guys. Get out while you can. <laughs> Get out while you can. Yeah, all right. Thanks but, uh, for joining me. Thank you, Remy. It was awesome doing this. And, uh, yeah, looking forward to Grindcore Island, which is definitely yeah, – I'll, I'll call you soon about Grindcore Island. <laughs> <laughs> don't right. don't, don't you hold your later. breath. There. Yeah. Yeah. Later. All right. Where are we at now? We are at uh, – who's next? I'm sorry. Logan. Logan. Yeah. Hey, all right. So from 1986 in this one, we're jumping to 30 years in the future with the traditional heavy metal picks that I got. Or the, the new wave, sorry, new wave of traditional okay. heavy metal picks. And this is uh, my favorite oh, of champion. the bunch right here. Oh, yeah, Eternal Champion. Yeah. Eternal Champion. Armor of Ire. Yep, the their armor. debut, Armor of Ire. Yeah. Absolutely awesome. love this yep. fucking album. Yep. This this thing is amazing. It's it's just like the perfect balance between it's almost like the epic doom, like almost, but I still think it kind of fits squarely in the you know, this uh new wave of traditional heavy metal. Just yep. probably just because of the, the, the time the time period, and it's not quite as slow as you would get for uh other, you know, epic doom bands, I think. Um now is this the um yeah. Is it, this is Arthur another Arthur Rizik band? But is this um, is the singer the same guy that's singing for the latest Summerlands? No, I don't think so. Hmm. Okay, no, I, I don't think Arthur Rizik is in. Or was it the part. guy that sang on the first? Oh no, he uh, Arthur, he's the drummer. He plays drums on this one. Uh, Jason Tarpley, Tarpy is vocals, and he I'm trying to think oh. of what other bands he's he's in, but. Kellen they're they're, they're Denver based, I believe. Kellen knows. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so the like he's in Iron Age is another band that he used to be in was like a crossover band. Okay. Mm -hmm. He's oh, contributed yeah. to Visigoth as well. But oh he's a Visigoth. Okay, all right. Sense. Okay. Yeah. I don't know why I was thinking it was one of the two Summerlands guys, though. Well, R Rizik is on drums too. So I mean, like, you know. Well, Rizik plays guitar in Summerlands, but yeah. He produces all their stuff, and and I know I just I, for some reason I was thinking that the singer of Eternal Champion was the singer on one of the two Summerlands album, but I guess huh. not. Huh? There's a little note that says Arthur played bass on this recording as well as lead guitars on 
Armor of Ire, Last King of Pictum, and Invoker. So that's yeah, three three out of six songs here. So I mean, he he was definitely all over. Pretty this involved, thing. yeah. Yeah, uh, I don't know, some of the tracks on here are just perfect. Like the most anthemic, like marching off to war. Like the the closest I think you could get to uh, Conan, kind of uh, the opening track. I am the hammer. God, I love I love the vocals on that and like that how uh, he introduces the the vocals and that main riff that comes in. And then uh, Blood Ice and the Cold Sword that, that lead lead into each other. Great. Uh, track six, Invoker, might be my favorite on the album. It's more of like the ballad, but it has a, just an amazing riff that kind of comes in. And they're, of course, talking about invoking like uh, Cthulhu, uh, otherworldly demons and stuff. And, of course, there's a whole bunch of lore around this. Like, I believe they made their own... Uh, fantasy world uh based around uh okay music so they were like uh i don't know if you if, can let me know more about this than i do like because they're releasing like books or something or hmm. yeah so <laughs> Someone the, help me out. I, I do also would say that it is another band that's going back to the michael moorcock so the uh-huh. eternal champion is part of that saga as well oh you know? it is yeah hmm. That's from the, one of the series or from, from one of Moorcock's series? Right, yeah. Which, which one? So th- I think the Eldrick series also will reference the Eternal Champion. The Eternal Champion. Oh, okay. Interesting. Interesting. Okay. Yeah, because Moorcock did a couple different ones. He did the he did the Black Sword Chronicles, which actually BOC wrote a song about because uh, and actually um Moorcock was involved in the off of Cultusaurus Erectus. And then he also wrote one, man, I can't remember the name of the the Chronicle, the Sword, the Chronicles of the Swords or something like that. Was another six-part series that Moorcock did, the the Fui Maior. And it, yeah, it's crazy, crazy wild I imagination. Also, I think he's also got a connection to the latest Smolder album, I want to say. Moorcock. Okay. Does that sound super familiar? I can't. Yeah, that sounds Long right. Day. I mean, I or think he's day. still alive. I think he's like eighty. Or did he yeah. die? Not sure. If he died, it'd be more look. recently, I think. But yeah, yeah, I, I, I think he might still be alive. I'll have to look yeah, that up. But. Possible, yeah. Yeah. Oh, I know. Probably my f- favorite album of the uh, the new wave of traditional heavy metal releases. Okay, where are we at? We are at Kellen. <clears throat> Okay, well, I'll go back here. Um, so for my Manila, he's Rose eighty-four. Choice, by the way, he's eighty-four. He is still alive. Cool. Um, Open the gates is my choice for a Manila Road record. Um, the arrival of Randy Fox on drums changes the sound a little bit, and if there was any sort of hangover from sort of their space jam session, the opening track, Metal Strum kind of puts that to rest. It's a pretty aggressive sort of driving song. Um, it's So this was originally released on Black Dragon Records. I remember them. And the, when it came out, the track listing, you know, you had two songs that have, I originally heard it digitally. Um, the Ninth Wave and Witch's Brew were released on a separate seven inch. Okay. Um, but on the new sort of pressing that I have here. And when I heard it digitally on a CD in a format, um, the ninth wave, which is the big sort of lady of the lake epic that sits at the center of this is like nine minutes long. It's, it's they're one of their best sort of long format epic tracks. Um, anyway, I think this is probably the turning point when the band started to sound more metal, so to speak. Right. And I think, up through mystification, they kind of kept this this sound. Seventies rock vibe, right? Um, and uh, but this is, you know, I think the Deluge suffers a little bit in the sense that it doesn't have the same kind of consistency. Um, I also want to reference um, Eric Lenoy does the album artwork here. That's and, cool. Uh, he, album pro- he does this album artwork and also the Deluge. Um, he was responsible for that one as well. Um, the original Air Apparent album artwork. He oh, also, wow. So there's a bunch of, he's like, 
there's not a lot of his work, but he's an important artist that contributes to the epic heavy metal, traditional heavy metal genre in the 1980s. So as the more, uh, his artwork, I think is probably a favorite of mine as well. So for Manila Road, I'm always going to choose Open the Gates if I have to pick one. That's the one I've always been told, that or Crystal Logic. But I think Crystal Logic is more the, the jammy 70s stuff. Well, I mean, it's an it's a big turn for them. Their first two records, in my opinion, are far more jammy, so to speak. Okay. Um, Crystal Logic's like the first real... I think that and King of the Dead are probably the best sort of moments when epic heavy metal outside of Manowar start to like gain some sort of um, like shape form. Like you understand what the genre is. Uh, so Crystal Logic deserves credit for that. Open the Gates, though, for me is like that turn where it becomes similar. Like they start to sound closer in terms of their guitar work to something like Omen. Where it becomes okay, a bit yeah. more like established metal. There's metal, fast riding right. in it. There's double bass in it. So there's not the same kind of like riding. It's definitely more structured. Yeah. 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 Okay. Um, we are at roller. Nope. No. Nope. Oh, Matt. God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, my number three choice is from a band. A lot of people pick the first album, rightfully so. It's great, but I am a Don't Break the Oath guy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Personal Fate, 1984. Great album. Both of them are great. What can I say about it? Uh, a Dangerous Meeting is Killer. Desecration of Souls is one of my favorites. The Oath, Come to the Sabbath, killer album. Almost got this as a tattoo when I was 18. Didn't do oh, it. Oh, shit. Mom time. would love that. It's going to be a back piece. <laughs> Yeah, she would have been pleased. My whole back <laughs> was fucking <laughs> merciful fate. Nice. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, it's hard to pick between those two, but, but that one, and, and certainly the imagery on that. I mean, Melissa's fucking haunting and scary, man. Mm -hmm. I mean, I remember I heard Melissa like yeah. right a, a, two, a month or two after it came out. I bought them and together, and I think it was like a month after this came out. Yeah, it was uh, Melissa was eighty three, right? Yeah, yep. I, think, I think I heard it that summer. Yeah, and my buddy had it, and it was weird, which is weird because I'm way ahead of the curve on him metal, but back then he was a little ahead of me. And man, I just he put it on right away. I'm like, ah, oh. <laughs> when it was music, and then the minute I heard, yeah, the voice, yeah, when I heard fucking King start doing the, oh. <laughs> I was it's like, funny. I gravitated what? to it right away. I loved his voice. I, a lot of people did. I was one of those guys that was like, this stuff is, well, I won't say what I said, but I'm sure I probably <laughs> said that word. And then I got over it. And it took me 18 years of getting over it, but I finally wow. got over it. So, yeah, it, I only really got into King maybe about the last six or seven years where I started to go, okay, I get it now. I, wow. I don't know what was I struggled with, but I definitely struggled with it. Right. Yeah, I think mom would have loved that back patch. That would have yeah. been or back tat. That would have been yeah. awesome. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. Okay. Now Aurora. Yeah, going back to Norway. And Arch, Arch, Arch another return. Arch, this is more of the heavier heavy metal, you could say, but a uh, killer, killer album. You know, another return to Churchill, uh, Loaded, Metal Life, Shoot to Kill, and uh, especially the last track, Reincarnation. That riff, opening riff, is so fucking heavy and, uh, yeah, kick-ass um, song. So, uh, yeah, love these guys. That's one I need to check out. I've, I've often heard that well-spoken of, and I just never have Yeah, it's a great it. album. It's great to have a metal album. And, what year is uh, that? You know, uh, this is 88. Um, 88. The second album was uh, Let Down. Came yeah. out in 91. They signed to Metal Blade and got way more kind of ra radio friendly in a way. Okay. So uh, that uh, that album is, has... Where are they of, from again? Uh, it's Norwegian. Norwegian, okay. Yeah. Or yeah the same, it, vo it. Vocalist is from Iceland. Eirik Urhaugsson. And uh, about, apart from that, it's, it's a full Norwegian band. So... Uh, even though they have taken uh, Brent and Jill and Jack, st <laughs> stupid. Uh, They're not shit. around anymore, right? Uh, yeah, they are active, but they don't. I mean, they play live some sometimes, but uh, not like yeah, they haven't released anything new since uh, '91. 
All right. One of those bands that kind of get like super hyped at the time and then nobody really listened to them. And then, I mean, yeah, I like, think, yeah, especially metal forces and stuff. But man, that, that, yeah. that album kills. Yeah, it's a killer album. All right, Eric. Nice. All right, I'm going to bounce off a of mat a little bit here. Right on. Um, <laughs> this is the first one I heard. Uh, Oh. Man, talking about like this being kind of weird and creepy in 1983, I heard this in probably about 2010, and it was weird and creepy and kind of uh -huh. scared me, <laughs> to be completely honest. Um, and like most people, I mean, I I could not, I just didn't get King's vocals at first, um, but there was something about it, just how weird it was, that brought me back. Um, time and time again and i didn't for whatever reason i didn't check out don't break the oath for a long time after i heard this i do love that album now but this is always going to be my favorite or has been so far anyway um love every song on here i will say satan's fall is a, a lot of people seem to have issues with that song it is kind of I love all the parts of it, but the transitions between the pieces... Transitions are a little rough. Yeah, yeah, for sure. This, uh, I don't know. This is just such a cool album. The the guitar interplay from Sherman and Denner. Yeah. And God. just... The, yeah. the, I don't know. I, I think King Diamond deserves a lot of credit, too, for like how far he was going in the two different directions that he was doing i mean his his he's doing some pretty harsh vocals on here as well for the time yeah. um but yeah just awesome awesome stuff and i know it's not a uh a tattoo but i do have this that i gotta nice. put on my holy shit me. look at that thing man yeah. god damn that's like that's like big time back patch right there man yeah um yeah, I, uh, Satan's Fall kind of has something similar to uh, Black Rose Immortal on uh, Morning Rise, where everybody yeah. raves about that track. Oh my God! It's, and it's like it's three different tracks, and they're not very smoothly put together. You know, it's just you know, like the lore about the track is a little more than than it's. I love it, but I don't think it's very smooth. You know, they might they get much better as as they move, go along so yeah i mean that's one thing about this i mean it's a debut album right they're still kind of a little bit figuring out what they want to do and and i would say their sound is more solidified and perfected on don't break the oath but there's just something maybe it's just because it's the first one i heard but that that's still my favorite is melissa yep i get it totally no arguments here man all right so this one and it might be it might be really pushing it to say this is a metal album. I think it is uh, overall, but you know, I guess this could have gone on the glam stream, but I love this album. There's a lot of heavy fucking riffs on it. Uh, if you know me, not gonna come as a shock at all. Mm -hmm. uh, most of you I know I know that. Dennis knows this album. The rest of you, maybe not. Hmm. I fucking love this album. Oh, oh shit. Love this band. Uh, well, this album in particular. I just found out that their second album, which is way more commercial, way more radio friendly, I still like it, is being reissued from uh, music on CD. I guess the, the music on vinyl CD they're okay. reissuing a remastered copy, but Stone Fury, if you don't know who this is, Lenny Wolf from Kingdom Come right. on vocals, his first uh, uh, recorded project, Bruce Gowdy, who then went on to do World Trade, which is more of a prog band, sort of a prog, prog radio friendly band, and then also Unruly Child with uh, Marcy Free, not Mark Free, if you know who Mark oh, Free right. is. Mark Free was King King Cobra's vocalist, and then uh, one of the very early earliest trans um, uh, people to come out and and actually do a, a, the surgery and everything. But uh, Bruce Gowdy, the ah shit, what the 
the bass player went on to become a pretty a bass or drummer i can't remember which one um became a pretty renowned producer after this but this album man i don't does anybody know this other than dennis mm. matt you know a little I know bit of it. it for sure um the song burns like a star dark mysterious evil sounding cool as fuck uh tease man heavy as hell uh you got um Bre break down the walls was kind of a little bit maybe radio mtv friendly the song on here that rips the two that really crush our mama super fucking heavy and the banger on this album is i hate to sleep alone that out that song some of the most killer riffs ever monster solo i guess it's probably a little bit on the maybe it just maybe it would have been better to be on the glam or the you know the the la hair scene thing they weren't i don't think they were la well they probably were but this is 84 hmm. um so they don't sound like rad they don't sound like crew at all okay. they don't sound like any of those bands and anybody know who does everybody know who lenny wolf is kingdom mm -hmm. come right uh -huh. no okay some of you may or may not yeah. Killer voice, man. Uh, Zeppelin, -y, they were Zeppelin, -y, very Zeppelin. -y, yeah, yep. this doesn't sound like Zeppelin though. This album is no, not that like record. Zeppelin. Not no, but his his voice is very Zeppelin. -y, yes, very Robert Planty with a little yep. bit more of a right. a little bit more of a German accent. Not quite Udo though. So all right, that is number three. Sorry guys, hold on. Ah, shit. And we are at Dennis. Okay, we're going with another U.S. banger from SoCal. And, uh, yeah, banger it is. We're going uh, Savage Grace. I knew you were going to pull this over. I, I knew it. I was going with it, man. <laughs> oh, I did. I knew this and Omen were coming out. There was no way those two weren't coming out. They weren't. <laughs> you knew out. it, man. These are, like, just the fucking quintessential U.S. fucking heavy metal records. Um, <clears throat> and this borders on the line of, let's... Let's do uh, the first two Maiden records mixed with a little bit of U.S. speed metal, and what you get is Savage Grace. And uh, this just pummels you in the face all the way through. This is like a record you put on, and you just want to like drink like ten beers and listen to this record because uh, man, this shit kills. Just look at the cover. Look at the cop. Yeah, <laughs> right. <laughs> you know what you're gonna get when you buy this. Get my, you're gonna get my stream band today. Uh, <laughs> man this is so badass even the back i mean there was an alternate cover with nipples so i mean it had what's her the with, what's the one with gene hoagland on it was remember one? yeah remember the, gene second, the second yeah. one. oh is that the yeah. second one okay yeah, yeah. but uh he's got the hood on but he's yeah sins of the damned fear my way Master of Disguise, Betrayer, Sons of Inequity, No One Left to Blame. Man, this shit just rips. Like, all the way through. It's another one of those records that's very, like, in your face. Like, we're just going to fucking jam through this shit and kick your fucking ass, man. Um, this is, uh, am I wrong? Is this the Christian Logue band? Yeah. <laughs> Remember that story? <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll save that for after. But I have a, an interesting kind of weird story about the guitar player for this band that we'll, yeah, we'll talk about later. We'll talk about it after. Yeah. We, um, but yeah, man, this, this record takes no prisoners and is, uh, I mean, you guys know this record, right? I do. We did, uh, yeah, yeah. metal gems. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, man. Uh, if you guys haven't heard this, definitely check this shit out, man. Yeah. Um, what year was this? Like 83? 83? Something around I there. think so. I think it was 83, I think. Yep. Yeah, it's good. It's a good album. It's it's um it it's weird because they had they definitely have like a European sound to them. It, I definitely I I did I said maidens, like the yeah. first two maidens. They yeah. have that gallop in the like music, but it's it's like a unhinged maiden. Yeah, yeah, very weird. Okay, oh. <clears throat> let's see. We had Nick and then Logan. Yep, yep, yep. All right. <clears throat> One of the We're nice things, down, guys. We'll, we'll get it done in five hours, I think. So, <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll we'll see. Uh, 
one of the nice things with the new wave of traditional heavy metal scene, a lot of the bands I think are feeling at liberty to kind of do their own unique take with the sound. Like they're not stuck <laughs> on just worshiping the past. And one of the bands that is doing that, and you probably know them as Unto Others, but to me, there will always be Idle Hands. Idle Hands. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 This is their debut album from 2019, Mana. And this is like uh, Judas Priest mixed with like Typo Negative and Sisters of Mercy, kind of. Wow. It's just, Man. it's like a, a heavy, heavy goth album. <laughs> yep. Really. It's, man, it's, it's great. It's extremely consistent. A lot of the songs are just supremely catchy. The vocal performance is really what makes this. He's got a unique uh, vocal style, all his own. Uh, he does almost like these, they're not like death metal, like grunts or whatever, but they're almost like uh, Tom G. Warrior, like, oh, you know, kind of, yeah, kind of grunts. And it really helps some of the songs just kind of stand out from one another. And uh, supremely catchy. Uh, man, Nightfall. Uh, Give Me to the Night, um, Double Negative are all just like really intense, fast, but still like kind of gothy tracks. And then when he slows down, they get a bit more like uh, ballad, like melancholic. Those tracks really stand out too. Uh, my favorite on the album is Don't Waste Your Time, track four. I definitely recommend uh, this album, Mana, and I guess not this band, but you should check out Unto Others. So. Copyright infringement or something cut them off from being idle. Idle. Oh, hands. really? Okay, so, interesting. Yep. So. Yeah. The only problem I have with this band is you know what to expect when you hear them. You kind of um, yeah. And I, I I I compare this band to a band called Twisting Tongues. Yes, mm -hmm. actually, that's where you kind of know sound. it's a different it's a different genre, but it's like a life of agony type of. And okay. like a hardcore sound, but you know what to expect, but it's still good. That's what I like about this. It's almost like a, a, a homage to the older bands and mix of styles, which I, I kind of like. I actually do like those kind of things. Their, so. their influences are on their sleeves, but I right. think there is just a unique combination of influences and the, the twitching yep. tongues too. Yep. But you're right, they're like approaching it from like that hardcore. Yep, like Life of Agony vibe versus this is, I think, definitely heavy metal Judas Priest at its core. Yep. yep. I don't know if that's what it was. Maybe it was the, the movie. Although they're two different Maybe. forms of entertainment. I don't know why that would be. That's kind of yeah. I wouldn't think it would mess with them. No. But um, while we still have a bunch of people here, uh, just want to mention again. Go check out the video on the uh, Gas Mask and Hand Grenades t-shirt. Tells you how to order them, uh, how to get in touch with me to pre-order. And and also, uh, if you aren't subscribed, subscribe, man. We had, uh, I'm just going to come right out and pat myself on the back, um, you know, because that's what I do. Uh, last month, 14, 15 fucking interviews in the month of February. All wow. of them. Wow. Supreme bangers. Guys like Stephen Wilson, Ben Jackson. Fuck, I don't even know. What, I don't even know. Those are like legends. Lots of legends yeah. in there. So, like, if you guys don't know, go subscribe to Jeff, man. He's got yes, so many yeah, great interviews. Absolutely. And you guys need to, like, go up there and listen to these things and, like, subscribe to him. And subscribe yeah. to all these other guys, too, man. They got great fucking... Yeah, stuff. I was just going to say, all these guys' info... Everyone that was here tonight, their channels are in the subscript are in the don't subscribe to me, but all the other guys. <laughs> that, guy, that guy right there. Oh dude. um, but yeah, subscribe, like, share, blah blah blah, whatever. Um, and uh, you know, things coming up real quick. I'm just gonna drop you one. You want to do it at the end or no, hang on, I'm just gonna drop one name right now. Do you want just to switch? Right Cliff Reifert's coming. Up. Oh yeah, cool. sorry, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Chris Reifert from Autopsy coming yep. up. So uh, check that out. That's coming soon. Nice. A bunch of other cool dudes too are coming up. So yeah. Um, okay, we were at uh, Kellen. 
All right, so I'll jump in here. Another kind of follow up, Logan with a newer band. This is a, a trial and they're a little bit of, yeah, like there were bands like uh, In Solitude or Portrait from Sweden that were very much playing in like a merciful fate yeah. style. But this, you know, uh, Dennis brought up Warlord earlier and I don't know if anyone's gonna pull um, Francis Sortilege but they're another sort of traditional heavy metal band that Trials inspired by. These are at times slower paced songs. So like the Warlord and Sortilege that kind of have like slower, doomier elements to their sound um, are, are part of this trial record entitled Vessel is the name of it from 2015. But um, the fact that like they're not, I think In Solitude did a really good job bringing like a dark atmosphere, but they never offered the kind of technical flair that Merciful Fate offered. Um, this band, I think, are a little bit more adept as individual musicians but I also enjoyed the change in pacing for it. They, they, they offer greater dynamics in terms of faster musicianship at time, but also sort of slower, doomier elements as well. Man, Dennis just showed it. I cannot fucking believe I didn't think of Sortilage. Holy shit. Damn it. Are you kidding me? All right. Well, that's, I just, Dennis can double up for me in my uh, honorable mentions for Sortilage. That, that should have been in my top 10. I didn't even think of that. God damn. Ah, well, shit happens sometimes. Um, yeah, that's interesting. I'm glad you and Logan in particular are pulling some newer bands that yeah, absolutely. we might not be thinking about because I'm not as connected to that newer thing. So I'm glad, you know, Kellen, that you and, and Logan thought about that. Maybe, uh, Eric, nice you'll do that as well. maybe you'll have one or two, uh, yeah. No, nah, no, nah, Eric's like, no, don't. man. <laughs> Stuck in the 70s like you, you old fucker. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay. Uh, Matt. Right. Two albums left, and I definitely they're from the big two. Uh oh. Classic the heavy two? metal. The big two. I'm going to, I'm going to, Priest and Maiden. Is that what you're getting at? Of course. All right. Uh, let's go with Maiden. Number of the Beast. Mm. Yeah, oh, cool. Nice. I love that. the Diano stuff too. I think I love Diano and Dickinson for very different reasons, but love right. them both a lot. Um, and the band does change sound a little bit once we get, yeah, they definitely do. Yeah, yeah, they they really settled into the band and stuff like that. Yeah, I love this album. Um, I initially would have had this be my very first maiden album. Uh, I know I've told the story before on my channel and how I tried to shoplift the cassette. <laughs> when I was oh, nice! <laughs> nice statute of limitation, that. bitches. <laughs> What's that? Statute of limitation, bitches. Well, yeah. <laughs> so what ended up happening is, the, uh, months later, Power Slave came out. So I bought that first, then went back and actually paid money to buy this. So this actually became my second Maiden album. Then I got the others, kind of piecemeal. But yeah, yeah. I mean, it always stands out to me. Um, the first one with Bruce Dickinson, of course. Um, I love the songs. Uh, the title track, Hallowed Be Thy Name, is still my favorite Maiden song ever. Yeah, Tons of good stuff on this Fuck it. I, I, and you know what? Let the Prisoners on there, man. I love yep. that track. Yep. 22 Acacia Avenue's on yep. there. I even love Invader. Children of the Damned. I mean, come on, man. That fucking album rules. Yeah. Yep, absolutely. Yeah, and I'm, you know, Matt, that's 82, right? So you're, mm -hmm. are you in, you're still in middle school, right? Maybe so I didn't find Maiden in 82. I discovered them in 84 when Power Slave came out. So uh, okay. All right. Yeah. Back. So real quick story on Maiden. In in 82, when that album comes out, my yeah. buddy already kind of knew about them in, in 81 with okay. Killers, right? The first tour they did in the States. Yeah. And he had all the 12 inches, even the you know the women in uniform and everything. And, yep. and we, we, after school one day, he lived right across from the high school. We're in ninth. Well, no, 82. I'd have been in 10th grade. So maybe it was killers was 81, right? Yes. Yeah. So it was actually, it was, it was, yeah, it was ninth grade. Well, yeah, it was ninth grade. Um, and he's like, dude, you got to come over to the house after school, man. We got, I got to show you this band. And we walk in right away. I see the killer's artwork. I'm like, 
it has to be like satanic or something, man. Am I allowed to listen to this? You know, that kind of thing. Not allowed. And yeah, I'm like, should I listen to this? Does your mom know you have this? You know, that kind of shit. No. And it's like, wait, does your mom actually know you have this? Because like, man, this is rad. You know, that kind of stuff where yeah. you're looking to, to do stuff behind your parents' back. Sure, and man, he cranked on killers. And then right away when this came out the next year, it was like, man, I was I was all over, you know. Yeah. Yeah, just amazing. But it did throw me because when I first heard this album, I was expecting Deano, and it was huh. not oh, him. It. So it, it threw me off a little bit at first, but I right away I totally gravitated towards it because I'd never heard of Samson before that, right? You know, so I yeah, didn't really I know who either. Roach was. But um, yeah, Here's killer that. album, hard to, you know, again, it's hard to go wrong with any of the first up through Seventh Son as far as being your favorite, being the, yeah. the album. Yeah. You know? yeah. Yeah. All right, so Matt, Matt. You didn't hear this until '84. Yeah, yeah, I know. <laughs> Even run to the hills because it was on MTV. I know. I didn't have MTV as a kid. I had to oh, get a few shit. friends, basically. <laughs> yeah, he, had, he hadn't summoned Satan as yet. No, oh, well, I yet. summoned him back in '81. <laughs> so yes. good, good thing. <laughs> no, nah, that's about when I came in. Was '81 too? Might have been the like very late in the school year. On like you know. April or May of 81 and 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 it was but I I of course knew a priest before because I got hit the priest you with Maiden um, or Pete priest no priest I got I knew before Maiden because of Unleashed yeah. the East that was the first thing yeah. I heard from from them so I mean that was which the is big, weird I, a lot of people at, like they always talk about Unleashed which is weird to me because I never heard of Unleashed until way after hmm. nope that's where I first heard of them was Unleashed was was the summer of going from eighth grade into ninth grade because at least was 79, I believe. Right? Yeah. I yeah, so. I, I think so. Yeah. You're right. Yeah. 79 or 80. And that was the first. And then I kind of was like, whoa, because then I had to kind of go back and, and, and get into. And I remember like the first couple, like my freshman year, I was trying to sing for this band Storm. And, you know, all the raging tracks were living after midnight and um uh, breaking the law you know all that stuff like that but maiden was when maiden came in it it, it was a game changer for me as far as like because well, yeah. i just felt like they were a little bit more progressive and a little more i don't by the time that album came out that matt showed so hmm. all right Roger, what do you got yeah uh, well i'm uh, wearing the shirt so uh, shadows a yep. newer yep. <clears throat> newer band from chile yep uh, great, great, uh, kind of in, in the way of Summerlands, uh, Ooh. musically, but yeah. the vocals Ooh. are, um, he's, he's got a little bit of varied vocals on this because, uh, this uh, album has the EP that they released a couple of years ago okay. with a uh, little bit harsher vocals, but the newer uh, recordings of, he has more like the Summerland vocal style on it. Um, uh, all these guys also play in, um, apostasy from, from Chile, the thrash metal band. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, that's the <laughs> same. The guys, rips, yeah. Do the Shadows guys kind of look a little gothy looking, though? Yeah, okay. Yeah. I have heard these guys. They're real good. Yeah, yeah I got it. Those, guys, guys, have to, those yeah. guys gotta be in their 50s, right? Uh, no, the, I mean, it's the only the, um, the uh, vocalist, guitarist who is back from, or from the back in the days, oh, I think the rest of the guys are a little yeah. bit younger. But uh, he, he's so he got the uh, one old dude and the young guys. Yeah, because he, Apostasy released their first album ninety one uh, or yeah. something like that. So uh, he, he's an old guy, but I think the rest of the band is is newer okay. or younger dudes. But uh, st still yeah, growing up. These guys out. I gotta yeah. re-listen to that. And maybe yeah. pick that up. I uh, fucking love this album. This when did that so come out? Old. When did that come out? Uh, like two years ago. Twenty two, I think. So the vinyl was a little bit late, but I think it's 22. 22, yeah. yeah. I can't yeah. remember when. Yeah, I got to check that one out. Good pick, Roger. That's a good one, man. Glad you brought that, reminded me of that one. Because I remember <laughs> I don't remember how I fell into it, but maybe I saw it on your channel. I don't remember, but that's maybe. one I got to dig back into there a little bit. Okay. Um, Eric. All right. Um, uh these guys did get one mention already and uh, see the poster up here, but I'm going with this album. Ooh, look at you. Um, 
<laughs> like Kellen uh, mentioned earlier, the I mean, I love I love Frost and Fire. It's like neck and neck with this for my favorite. I love all the Sirithungo albums. I don't think they have a bad one. I even like Paradise Lost. Uh, there's one or two songs on there I'm not crazy about, but um, yeah, Kellen mentioned the the early the, the these guys' first album and the early Manila Road stuff as well. Uh, I think what did you call it? Wandering, sloppy '70s metal, sort of. Um, yeah, I mean, you listen to Frost and Fire. It's kind of all over the place. There's bits of you hear bits of rush. You hear um, some metal stuff. There's a lot of slower songs and some uh, acoustic stuff. The the last song doesn't even have drums on it. It's just kind of weird. But I love that about it. But this is their like straight up metal album, uh, along with K uh, One Foot in Hell as well. Like Logan showed, another great album. This one for me is is just killer almost front to back i could probably do without the toccata instrumental but besides that it's just so good adam smasher black machine master of the pit uh finger of scorn i mean i i ah. love this stuff um, a track named finger of scorn i have yeah. to check that out <laughs> yeah that's you my do. favorite is finger have you of never scorn. you've never heard this not that one. I've yeah. heard uh, no. the one behind you on the wall, and right. I forget which uh, one of the other ones. Maybe the one <laughs> that uh, Logan showed. I can't remember. One foot in hell, Jeff. That's right. the biggest one, though. That's like the yeah, this but one, yeah. the most well known. Like, Is it okay? King of the Dead. I just always I mean, struggle with. I just always kind of struggle with Tim's vocals, man. They're just kind of yeah. weird as fuck. But, they are. They are. And first time I heard them, I was like, this guy sucks. This is terrible. <laughs> yeah, maybe but, I'll get into it after giving it a little bit more time. I don't know. Yeah, again, kind of like Merciful Fate, there was just something. It was so, so off the wall weird that I, I had to come I back and that. check it out again. That. Yeah. Yeah. So, and I absolutely love these guys. They've become one of my favorite bands in the last three years or so. So, yeah awesome awesome album and that that artwork is just so cool killer i mean yeah yeah i mean that that too i i never checked these guys out for a long time but i remember seeing this album cover um when i first was getting into metal and i'm like i i immediately had to check it out but i listened to one song and i couldn't i couldn't stand it so <laughs> took, can, can took we highlight while. the logo too the logo is oh awesome. yeah as well like the the two, two spring skeletons yeah. yeah fucking awesome that's so cool killer. yeah mm -hmm. okay man i cannot believe that i'm putting this number two because it was at number one since i started this i, I mean I, I, no one was touching this until i went and listened to an album that Roger already kind of snuck up there and cheated. Me <laughs> and I forgot how much that album just blows my mind for a bunch of reasons I'll get into. But if you know me, guys, and you know, to know me is to love me, right? Eh, debatable. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you, Eric. <laughs> um, man, this album means so much to me. It, it, I, I just... Every track is perfect. The vocals are perfect. The riffs are perfect. The solos are perfect. The drumming's awesome. The artwork rules, even though the band kind of hates it. If you watch the interviews I've done, I've done individual interviews with the drummer and the guitar player, and I've done a band interview uh, back in July when they put their fourth album out, which is really good. But this album means the world to me, and oh, I shit. fucking Fuck. love Fifth Angel's debut album. Um, it it just and the funny thing is, if you look at the back cover, you'd be like, "Oh man, this is a glam band or something," right? <laughs> Except for that they're in jeans and not spandex. Although, although um, James <laughs> James is in leather, I think he might be. In, this guy isn't even on the album. He doesn't even play on the album. Um, he play he plays bass. And Randy Hansen, who's a 
Hendrix guitar cover dude plays ba uh, bass on too. But uh, Ken Mary, fucking killer drummer, plays with a whole bunch of different bands and has Alice Cooper, House of Lords, uh, Flotsam and Jetsam now. Uh, this guy is an orthodontist making way more money than he ever made in metal, I'm sure. James Bird, fucking stellar guitar player. But uh, does anybody other than uh, anybody other than Dennis not know this album? I do not. I know it a little bit. I know later stuff from Fifth Angel. Oh my god, this record fucking. Well, there wasn't a whole lot of later stuff. I mean, there oh, was. Was it only time? The second album, which I'm thinking about. Yeah, but that was kind of the more commercial one. Where yeah, it was. Yeah, that's there. why I don't. It's still a great album, but that's I mean, a good record. But I'm telling you right now, if you don't know this record, Matt, you yeah. need to go check it out. Kelly, you got to have the album. original cover too. I know this album because you've talked about it and how yeah. much you love it. <laughs> exactly. I wanted to stop what I'm doing with my life and listen to Fifth Angel. Yep. So, yeah. If you do not stop what you're doing in life and listen to this album, in the next day or two, I will haunt your fucking <laughs> dreams. Um, and and how about it, uh, Dennis? You didn't know this album. No. I mean, I knew it. I just never listened to it. I knew the cover, but it's so bad I never wanted to buy it. <laughs> Fuck you, it's bad. That is the most badass I mean, fucking album. Badass in its way, but when you're like 14, you're like, I'm not going to touch this. What the fuck is a unicorn doing on with wings coming out of this? So fucking it's not even is that the original cover? It's not even a unicorn. It's like a, it's like a fucking. It's like mule. a Pegasus. They call it the flying jackass, the, the guys in the band. <laughs> <laughs> Roger, do you know this one? Yeah. Okay. Uh, Killer, very U.S. power metal, but not yep. power metal in the European way. Killer riffs, man. I could sing every song on here. Uh, you know, in the fallout, shout it out, call out the warning. The songs, the double banger of Fifth Angel and Wings of Destiny, man. Holy fucking shit. The night, oh my God. Only the strong survive. Man, every song on here. Not a wasted note, not a not a not a duff note. The vocals are killer. Uh not a screamy, not a high, you know, uh Queens thing, even though they are from Se Seattle and they grew up right down the street from the Queens uh, guys. Scott um I think Ed said he lived right down the street from um Scott Rockenfeld, I think, where they practice. Um man. Fifth Angel debut. I don't know what else to tell you, man. It's fucking, it's it's a masterpiece, man. That's, that's all I have to say. So um, is this the alternate cover, or what? When was this? The no, that was or? the that was the alternate cover, the one okay. you have. Yeah, yeah, that so was got, when they that's when the original Epic, one you have. Okay, so when this came out, it came out on Shrapnel, which was oh, the okay. Shredder yeah. label back in the eighties, right? Um, and actually, this is the very first right. album that Ter Terry Date produced, and Terry uh -huh. Date, of course. Pantera um, yeah. producer later. Who owned, um, who owned Shrapnel? Well, I, I did Carl Mike, Kennedy. Carl Mike Barney, Kennedy Barney. did a lot of production on those. Mike records. Barney. <laughs> Mike Barney. Oh, Mike. Okay. Yeah. And his his claim to fame was doing the guys like Tony McAlpine and Michael Lee Perkins and right. Greg Howe yeah, and all those Shredder guys, right? But yeah. that was one of the few bands that, that he grabbed the band and put them on. And then they were bought out. Because it sold so well for Varney, they uh, Epic contacted Varney and said, we want to buy that contract out. And they got this like $21 million contract, but it really wasn't. They explained that in the interviews. that It was kind of all smoke and mirrors. And then they made them, they wanted them to go much more commercial on Time Will Tell, which is the second. Yeah. Uh, the third album, which I do not own, which is you can only get from Europe um on nuclear blast over there and like the import was going to cost me like 50 bucks for a single lp and i've been reluctant is called the third secret how about it dennis that album fucking rules yeah that's we're a talking about a guy sounding like dio that is like yep mint dio yeah, and it's a riff dio, fest man that album is fucking killer now the new one steve carlson sings on and it's a little more power medley euro yeah. sort of sounding but it's good a little more um, you know, I would I would say I yeah, I like the, the new album quite a bit. It ended up like third or fourth of the year for me, but it's a good record. Good. It's it's a little the production for me is what little little modern, little yeah. modern, yeah. 
But I'm just saying right now, those of you that don't know Fifth Angel, go listen to that debut album. You're going to come back to me and say, man, you're right. That, that thing's a banger. So, all right. We are back to our final one, and then we'll rip through our our honorable mentions very quickly. All right. So for me, uh, my final one is like a great fucking record that everyone should own. It's called Iron Maiden. By yeah. Iron Maiden. Ah. <laughs> you know, Man, this record. I never man. heard of them. Never That's heard a of small them. band really? Nick likes. Yeah. And I, I, I like Killers as well, but this, I love the raw production on this. Um, and the songs on there, Prowler, Running Free, Phantom of the Opera, Transylvania. Come on, man. This shit fucking just kills. Yeah. Like, you get, like, these guys just run through this record like teenagers making a metal record. That's what it sounds like to me. And that's, this is heavy metal, man. Um, it takes the punk from the UK and mixes it with kind of a new style of metal that no one was doing at the time. Obviously took inspirations from Sabbath and Uriah Heep and bands like that, even um, Yes, and brought this kind of progressive sound to um, a new style. And that's what Iron Maiden is, man. And you can say like Black Sabbath and all these bands, but I think Iron Maiden took all those things and they made heavy metal. And this is a record that did it. So this is a very, very um, like, like a seminal record for heavy pivotal, metal. Pivotal, pivotal, album pivotal, album. very pivotal, man. <laughs> um, and the songs are very um, in your face and no bullshit. Um, these guys and the early <laughs> Def Leppard stuff and early pre stuff. That's new wave of British heavy metal, and then you get Diamond Head and bands like that. But for well, me, well, more like. Let me interrupt. More like the middle of Priest, because the very early Priest was like rock and roll. It was very fucking yeah. That was very very uh, rock. Yeah, very uh, psychedelic type of stuff, and very you know whatever. But I like that stuff too. Don't get me wrong. I love the early Priest stuff. Um, but this shit, this is the and even the cover. This is where Derek Riggs. I mean, you can say Iron Maiden's a great band and everything, but Derek Riggs really brought this band to the forefront. Oh, huge, man. Art. Yep. Like, this art, this changed lives for people and a lot of artists, a lot of fantasy artists. So you can't you can't deny Derek Riggs' involvement with heavy metal and Iron mm. Maiden. So yes. right here, this is shit. Nate, I, I'm guessing you meant Fifth Angel, not Goth Angel. I don't know any Goth Angel. <laughs> I unless like that's Angel. your unless that's your your love nickname for me, Goth Angel. <laughs> I would get it though, because you know I'm pretty beautiful. I get it. Um, okay, uh, we are going to Logan. All right, uh, wrap it up. We're doing one more uh, new wave of traditional heavy metal from uh, I believe 2022. I want to say we've already talked about this band a couple times. It's great that they're being mentioned. Dude, oh, I Lord, fucking yeah. love that album. Right? Yes, I'm love glad you it. do. I I could see it because guess what? This is 80s, 80s Dawkin, 80s like Judas Priest, 80s just, just mid-80s is what it sounds like to me. All like the, the songwriting choices and stuff and because there's a good wide variety of, of tracks here, and they were kind of range from like uh, like the Sentinel Judas Priest to even some uh, like Dokken ballads. Uh, but yeah, Dream Killer by Sumerlands is yep. the album, and it's just it's it's fun and it's quick and it's just a great snapshot of I think probably where we are currently. Like fans <laughs> can take any any era that they want to and any kind of uh, influence and just kind of make it their own and put it exactly where they want. I mean, it's not, not new or anything for, for this album, at least I honestly, their previous album, the, the self-titled one felt a little more unique, but this one sounds more like the tribute album. Uh, 
I like the vocalist on this one just slightly better than the vocalist on the first album. Personally. Yeah, this is uh, he just got a cooler vibe to his voice. I think the this riff is Brendan. Are, what okay. band is he from? Is Brendan from? Uh, That's the thing. I don't know what these two guys were in. I know I looked it up and promptly forgot. You'd have to look them up. I'll I'll, I'll check. I'll check. Yeah. I thought one was in Magic Magic Circle. But yeah, one know. is Magic Circle. I think this okay. guy. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and once again, the Arthur Rizik production, and this is him playing guitar. Yep. Uh, you can definitely tell, but it's once again the main focus is on the songs and the songwriting. Yep. It's not Killer songs. you know shred. It's yeah, they're building a lot of up. melody, a lot of cool melody. Kind of, I, I tell you what, that album is great for late night driving, man, on the highway. It's so crank that fucker it's up and go, Matt. Do you know this one? Speaking of that, I do I have it? Sweet. Okay. Yeah, speaking yep. of that, the best song is Night Ride. That's I love that one. song. My that's favorite the best, too, That's yeah. the best track on the album. Uh, Roger, you have this, I bet, right? Yeah, I do have it. It's a terrible cover, though. <laughs> yeah, it's a weird, it is a weird cover. but you know. The vinyl's image of it is dark, like really dark, exposed. Yeah, yeah I, I have, I have, I have the vinyl, so it's, yeah. Yeah, yeah I, don't, I definitely don't get the cover either, but, you know, whatever they want to do. Lighter. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> It's not Other, the selling point. Yeah. No. And uh, Heavens Above is a great song. Uh, oh, yeah. The, the Every title, song, the dude. Every track. song on a killer, man. Yep. And then, then it bows out after eight. And that's a that's a Yeah, and it's, it. it's, it's like a 38-minute album, I think. Or 35. Like 30, 35, or right. Yeah. Yeah, which is great, it's, man. You're, it leaves you wanting it's more. A, it's, it's that album like, where you listen to it, and you, it leaves you wanting more. Yep. Isn't it the uh, guys from Eternal Champion playing in that? Yeah, band? there's some of the yeah. dudes are in there. That's what I was trying to remember. Who and Magic Circle, I believe, is the singer guy. Yeah, and then Justin Dettore is the drummer, and he's in yeah. Dream Unending and uh -huh. uh, what's the death metal band? He's in something uh, 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 abys uh, abysmal dimension, maybe. No. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah, so, I think it's so many bands. Are just treading members though. Because, yeah, I know. Yeah, because of, like you can like you hard know, to keep up with it. The, the barriers are down because of the you know internet and well, guys need to make money. Play wherever they want with whom. Guys they need want. to make money, man. So they they That's do true. more than you know one or two projects. So all right, uh, we are at Kellen. All right, so I mentioned this at the start. Um, we were talking about sort of what uh, defines this genre for us, um, and I thought that. You know, Epic Doom was part of that for me. So in closing here, I do want to bring oh, wow. it to the record. And for me, Candlemas, more than any other Doom or Epic Doom band, sort of bridged the gap between Epic Heavy Metal and Doom. Um, I can listen to this in the same way, get, kind of get the same kind of experience or associated sort of vibe that I would from an Epic Heavy Metal uh, record. So... I was not part of Doom Island, so this is all sneak in on here with this. Uh, <laughs> Sorry, dude. Sorry. And um, I, I just also, I would say, like, when I started to get more into traditional heavy metal, uh, Epic Doom was sort of part of that journey for me as well. So uh, there was a lot of different bands who were playing, like, Death Doom. So this was, like, a clear departure from a time period in heavy, like, heavy metal's history that was decidedly different. So... Anyway, just before we wrapped up here, I wanted to bring a, an Epic Doom record. And that's the, the for me, that's their finest moment, uh, you know, of yeah. course. But, you know, Candlemass, that's such a weird band because they've had so many vocalists. You know, I love yeah. the first album because Johan's great. Then I, I love the Messiah period. And I love the Robert Lowe period, you know, the and some of the other weird ones in between there are great too. But that's kind of their, I think that's their high water mark overall for me as well you could shoot the first any of the first four records i think are you're gonna win they're all yeah yep yeah, yep yeah, yep yeah. and i mean i love king of the gray islands man i love that album man i think killer that's record. a killer one with, with low on it right mm -hmm. uh, which is weird because i just recently picked up all the reissues and even got one or two original uh solitude eternus and like i really didn't have them on my i've known about them forever but i didn't really yeah. know about them man what a killer fucking band holy shit man 
and low just sounds stunning on that stuff i mean just you know yep all right let's see all right all right matt your yep. num number one is priest has to be right hey, we yeah. talked about it already it's defenders of the faith Fuck it yeah. always has been for me favorite priest album hands down did Maybe. you uh when did you first see them hey <laughs> i didn't do that i don't know who did that i did that I get, hang on hang on every now and again my laptop determines the and i what i'm guessing is the, the ai in my uh in my system said fuck you matt oh it said it again. i don't know I've been sitting here. The, the funniest one was the other day. I was on the Skeletal Remains guys, and I said something, and all these fireworks and balloons went off by me. Like, what the hell was that? I'm like, I have no idea. I don't know what it does. It, speech recognition. Does anybody know that's in the chat? Nate, did you tell me you knew something about that with regards to these weird things that happen, or is it reading some of our minds? Someone yeah. here is like, it wasn't yep. me and Dennis. Because we nope. picked that as our album, so maybe it was <laughs> Kellen that bastard. He was thumbs down maybe. you because it wasn't sin after sin. Yeah, I just love how it like waited to the very end of the stream to throw that in there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was so weird. It was so random. Where's Kronos Junior? He fucking did this shit. <laughs> Kronos Junior did it. I did. I did two thumbs up, and then it did a thumbs down. So I don't know. Uh, it's, an <laughs> apple. It's, it's an apple thing, apparently. Um, yeah. When did you When did you first see Priest? Matt. so i was taping albums uh priest albums off friends of mine before i got this so this is the first one i actually bought with my own money okay so before that i was probably uh, probably 81 82 i came in i know british steel was an early memory for priest for me what was your first time seeing them live did you see them oh, live she's you know it forever like i didn't see them in the classic era at all no i saw them in 86 was yeah. the first time with um yeah with Dokken doing in my dreams, you're still the same. Yeah, I saw Docket on the tour, but they're opening for Twisted Sister. I saw that tour too yeah, yeah. for Out of the What was it, Out of the Cellar? Or out of the Come Out and Play. Sewer? Come Out and Play, yeah. yeah. I always want to call it Come Out, out of the Sewer because there's a, <laughs> right, of the cover. a manhole cover, yeah. It's been um, like yeah, $5 man, million I mean, dollars to produce those records that didn't sell. Yeah. Yeah, for true. Yeah, this album just fucking rules, man. Yeah, fucking rules. Yeah. Artwork rules. Yeah, all the guys' performances on it. And again, do I need to say it? It's got the Sentinel. The Sentinel. That's it. That's all you need. Fucking love Absolutely. bites. Yeah. All right. Um, let's see. Let's see if it happens here. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> oh <There> yes! <laughs> yes! <laughs> all right, that's awesome. You got that's the love cute. bites going on over there now. I got something going on. I got something going on. All right. Um, we are at Roga. What's up, man? Let's do it. Have to have Dio. Ah, so, nice. yeah. Don't What's need to say more about it. <sighs> Holy all Diver, of, of course, but stand up and shout. Uh, yeah. All, all is good. Straight through the heart is killer rainbow. I love rainbow in the dark. So, yeah. Yeah, but yeah, yeah killer. And not only that, man, that artwork. Come on, man. That's yeah, yeah. Right. It's, when you Super. were like in nine, ten years old and looked at this, yeah. it was, uh, you know, you 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 had to have this one. <laughs> yep, yep. And I bought. It's funny. A, a couple months ago, I bought that shirt, and I'm like, I don't have that Dio shirt. I must have that Dio shirt. And they sent me a size that reminded me that I'm a fat pig now. <laughs> uh, but that, actually, I ordered a large, and they sent a medium. And two years ago, I could have slid into a medium just as easy as Kellen could. But now it ain't happening anymore because of my medication I have to take and all the issues. So I they wouldn't send they wouldn't send me another one back unless I sent it back at my cost. I'll give it to my yeah, kid. Right. And now I haven't bought one from them again. So I have to grab that shirt somewhere along the line. So yeah. Um yeah, Nate. I'm so glad you showed me that because that is coming out every single time in a live stream now. <laughs> the, the horns are going up when I say when I say the tagline, which by the way, the tagline was created by Tim in the chat here. Tim Saunders, he's the one that gave me the tagline where music melts your mind. So we'll do that at the end then when we wrap up. But um, all right, moving on here to Eric. 
correct? Yes. All right. Uh, sticking with the states, Manila oh, Road. Yeah. Um, I mean, Crystal Lo could have been Crystal Logic, could have been Open the Gates. Honestly, Mystification is my favorite, probably, but it's it's bordering on thrash at times. So I picked this one. Um, I don't know. I I love this thing front to back. Kellen said he thinks Open the Gates is a little more consistent. I can't argue with that, but I happen to love this one maybe just a tiny bit more. I mean, it's it's neck and neck for me. That artwork is so killer, too. I think Open the Gates is maybe better. Just the, the interesting color palette. You don't see purple metal album covers all that often, but... Um, I don't know. There's just something about, again, with Manil Road, um, weird vocals that turn a lot of people off. But uh, contrary to Merciful Fate or Sirithungal, the first time I put on Crystal Logic and I heard Necropolis, I was just instantly hooked. Um, and yeah, one of my favorite bands these days. I don't think they have ever put out a bad album. They put out a couple weird ones that aren't fantastic but they still there's great songs on every album and the the run of ones in the 80s um like 80 83 to 90 the, with the courts of chaos just so good um yeah mark shelton such an underrated guitarist as well oh, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. and the drumming the drumming on Open the Gates and this one especially is just absolutely insane. Like the opening track on here, Dementia, I don't know what the hell is going on in the beginning of that. Um, I'm sort of a bit of a drummer myself. And I, yeah, Randy Fox is a complete maniac. Um, yeah, just, I don't know, just epic, weird, um, not really catchy. There isn't really a lot of memorable hooks on this stuff compared to something like crystal logic but i don't know this one just does it for me and i want to do real quickly i was looking at uh the back cover of sear thungle after i pulled it i want to point out a bit of a lost art here the uh heavy metal headband <laughs> oh, i don't man. think i've seen a more well-used headband in my life than that <laughs> apart from possibly this i mean <laughs> just Man, so look good. Look at that. yeah anyway i mean seriously do those guys <laughs> look like porn star hippie burnouts or what <laughs> yeah like they look like rejected porn stars from the 70s late 70s right yeah. um all right good pick good pick i gotta get into manila road i I you just do. didn't get in. I didn't get into Tim's vocals, but I think I could get into them. Uh, or Mark, excuse me, Mark. Um, but I think I could. I, the music I recognized which, was was pretty killer. The which early, album did you check out? Uh, Crystal Logic and the one that Kellen pulled. Okay, and, yeah. And I dug the music. I just struggled with the vocals a little bit in the fashion I did with Sir Sir Thungal. Um, yeah. But maybe it's just make myself get through it a, a few more times and it'll kind of happen for me probably. his uh his vocals almost sound a little more weird on crystal logic to me but uh i would say mystification check out mystification it's <clears throat> probably my favorite tim you're correct man headbands are for lover boy why don't <laughs> you turn me loose turn me loose all right anyway um okay number one Roger already spoiled it for me. Man, <laughs> Jesus Christ, this fucking album, man. Every minute, every second is fucking amazing. Going to say a couple things. Number one, number one, Chris Oliva. If you don't know that guy's name and you don't know that guy's guitar playing, you don't know shit. Because that guy had some of the most amazing guitar tone, had some of the most amazing riffs, was a blazing shredder, but was super tasteful, wrote incredibly fucking killer songs. John Oliva, man, that voice, 
that voice at this period in time, I don't think there was anyone more incredible ever out there. The guy's voice was just magical, man. You're talking, you know, it leads off with 24 hours ago, that fucking riff, those riffs on that, on that, you know, that yeah. song alone. And you get into the next, um, beyond the doors of the, or, um, yeah. What's it called? The second talk, um, beyond the doors of the dark. Booger. What? What's the what's second track? The name of the song. Yeah, beyond the doors of the dark. Beyond the doors of the dark, man, man. The way he starts singing that when it first comes in uh, is absolutely menacing. Uh, Strange wings, that fucking song, just yeah. insanely good. Legions, um, and then the the lead off track, man. When he does the madness reigns, it's just like ah, uh, in the hall of the mountain king. You're just like, I, I just fucking love that album. Every second of it is insanely killer, man. The price you pay. There's not one mediocre track on the album. That is a straight 20 out of 10 album for me. My favorite heavy metal album with Fifth Angel right near there. So, All right, I'm going to rip through a couple of these real quick, and then we'll run around the room on these. Um, just pick this up. Had it long, long time ago in cassettes. Kind of forgot about it until I started looking into albums that I wanted to put in this for this stream. Yeah, Tigers definitely. of Pan Pantang Spellbound. John the, Sykes. Yes, the first of the John Sykes albums. Yep. Man, yep. the guitar on this album absolutely so fucking rips. Yeah, it's uh, awesome. they did. guitar player or the singer. What's his name? Uh, Eric. The first one. Is it Eric? I can't remember the guy's name. I can't remember the second one. I just remember Jess Cox. Oh, here it is. Um, Rob. John Deverell. John Deverell. Okay. Great, great, great vocals, man. Killer vocals. Just wrote killer, killer new wave of British heavy metal yeah. songs. Absolute banger. If uh, They put a lot of albums out over the years, and I know that the kind of the first three are kind of the revered ones. They got a live uh, album coming out next month. Oh, do they? Yeah, it's called Live Blood. It's a two album set. Is anybody still in the band that's original to them? Like there's one, or? one guy, the guitar player. Weir. Weir, Weir. yeah. That yeah. guy. That's it. Yeah, I'll tell you what, man. Nobody if you don't know this band, you should absolutely know this band, man. And that album in particular. Um I, again, I didn't put this on my main list because I had it on Prog Metal Island. You could make the argument that this album is right. a traditional metal classic. Yep. Uh, it is It is my favorite nostalgic pick for, um, for this band's catalog, although i got to be honest with you, I honestly feel that Ray Alder is a much better vocalist overall. Arch. He's, ju he's just a different... He's got he's got a lot more dynamics to his voice than John Arch okay. did, but John Arch super unique, super yeah. yeah original for the time. Other than he did dangerously come close to Bruce Dickinson yes. at times, yeah. uh, particularly like, on this album. And still the the dark, mystical, beautiful songs on here. Jim Matheos, fucking genius songwriter. I don't care what anybody says, one of the greatest songwriters ever. This album rules. Spectre Within is great. Mm -hmm. Parallels, probably my favorite Ray Alder album. Uh, right. Symmetry is great. Uh, anyways, so yeah. that's that. Um, you guys went the, with a different album. I went with the what I feel is the mostly heavy metal Scorpions album. That would be this one. Black Adam uh, Street. You can't, you really can't go wrong with this album, right? I yeah. mean, you know, you've got the uh, fucking Blackout, obviously. Can't live without you. No one like you. You give me all I need. Now, dynamite, dynamite. Oh, is yeah. that song ripping or what? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Arizona, when the smoke is going uh, down, and yeah. China White. This China is a perfect White, album. man. Yeah. Perfect album. Perfect Scorpions album. Do you know this one, Kellen? Yep, I have that one. Okay, all right. I just I had I had to pick one. I get you. I get you. <laughs> and I'm not faulting you for your logic. I believe what you said is very true. That. That one two punch of the zoo and uh and animal magnetism unbeatable in their catalog. Um yeah. 
All right, I'm going to throw another ride out, man. <laughs> Just because we got a lot of the artwork. But this album yeah. damn near as good as Fire Down Under. It's got a lot of great songs on it. Um, White Rock, uh, Waiting for the Taking, Kick Down the Wall, Born to be Wild, the, um, Narita. Love this album. I haven't really listened to it that much, but um, uh, <laughs> hang on. Let me just pull. Uh, I wanted to pull up um, a Motorhead album, too. And I'm going to go with uh, I'm going to go with Ace of Spades, man. Okay. Yeah. I just yeah. have to. I mean, that Fast Eddie, Filthy Phil, yeah. Lemmy, and that lead off track, awesome. man. Can you? I mean, you cannot beat that song. I also am very partial to Orgasmatron, which a lot of people probably would huh. find weird, but I like that album. It's dark and weird. Um, yeah, it is. Metal Church's debut. I didn't pull it. Yeah, I, I will tell you, Kellen. Yeah, this the one-two punch of Beyond the Black and uh, Metal Church. Yep. Damn, yeah. bro, that is a one-two punch. That's hard to beat, right there, too. Yeah, I, I almost, but they're like for me, they were on that border. Uh, yeah, 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 gotcha. Mm-hmm. Uh, Saxon Wheels of Steel could have gone with uh, Denim and Leather too because I love Princess of the Night and the lead off track. Um, ah, uh, Dennis, did you pull the Eye album out for me by chance? The which one? The Eye <laughs> album, the Eye, I see. No, I don't know that band. I see. <laughs> what? I told you, there's one thing you have here that I did that you haven't talked about yet. Well, let me I see. What is it? What it is starts it? with a V, ends with an R. Vader. Vader. This one. Oh, yeah. I was going to get to that in a minute. Okay. Um. Well, we're there now. Man, I just bought an OG of this uh, yeah, uh, two days ago. I knew it wasn't going to get here in time. Anybody that knows me knows I fucking love this album. I think yeah. Carl Albert was one of the greatest singers that people should know. What an incredible voice. Yeah. Uh, it's progressive. It's pushing the prog metal boundary maybe a little. Um, there is one or two dumb tracks. What's the third or fourth song on there? Dennis. The fourth song? What's, what, yeah, what's uh, the third or fourth song? Fire. That Mid- song. Man. Man, Towns of Fire, just some of the worst. Oh, I know what ass. you're talking about. Yeah, ICO. All right. You have it? Is that one of your – Yeah, one of your, uh... Give me a second, man. Keep talking. Okay, all, right. <laughs> all right. I'm surprised you didn't have this. Maybe you have it as a uh, honorable. Well, actually, there was two. There was – was... yeah, yeah, I thought it was that. Uh, man, yeah. dude. Dude, this that album. Prime. Yep. And, and Dennis, you and I love this album. We have a yeah, mutual love festival. So this album. It's fucking killer. Stephen Clifford's voice. Oh yep. my god, very unique, very different. They went on, became super AOR on the next album. I love yep. the next album. So Dennis sad. doesn't love the next album, <laughs> but and I will tell you though, if you, you look go. at that picture of those guys, that the second album should have been the one that they put with this picture right sure. here. Because there is more makeup on them than Donald Trump. Um, <laughs> and and we all know that is true. Um, and then the, there was one more you pulled for me, right, Dennis? Starts with a G-R. Nope, that's it. G-R. <laughs> Gamma Ray. Two words. Two words. English. English. You said you went and got it. Look through your albums. Oh, yeah. Hold on. Yeah, yeah. I see. <laughs> Dennis is fucked up. I got I to gotta, I gotta spur him on here. This one has to be on here. As an honorable, it was in my top 10, man. Ah, I had it in there. I'm like, this yeah. has to be on there. Uh, just if alone for the the, the title chorus. track, right? The chorus um, and the title track. But there's a lot of great songs on here, man. DOA. Um, man, I just, I love it. I love this album. It's one of those albums that always makes me think of, of heavy metal, traditional heavy yeah. metal. And then, um, let me just check. I think I'm almost done here. Yeah. Yep. One last one, which I just got, yes, Friday night. But I used to have on tape. Oops. And I could have gone with one of three. Well, one of two. And I couldn't – they didn't have 
the one album that I that I probably would have chose over this one, so I'll go with this one. But some Lizzie Borden, That's Master nice. of Disguise. Nice. Right. Can't wait to crank this after we get off the stream tonight. Um, the one I probably would have jumped on a little bit more than this would have been Menace to Society. Menace to Society. Yeah. Because it's the one I know Great. the best, um, like of all the ones. But yeah, so that's my uh my stuff. So uh Dennis, what do you got? All right. I'm starting with this one. You guys are gonna fucking love this, especially Jeff, because Keel was a singer on this record. Oh my uh, god. But the guitarist was Engve Mounts. Oh, yep. Steeler, yeah, yeah, yeah. Steeler. Yeah, the one and only fucking destroys, man. Um, yeah, Glove Glove it out. hot on your heels, fucking on yeah. the rocks, down to the wire, born to rock. Yeah, just a ripper of fucking heavy metal record, yeah. man. Um, just a killer record. If you, I mean, I could have pulled Alcatraz too, but man, this shit killer. Yep. Here's another one. I think uh, who pulled this? Someone pulled Twisted Sister under the blade, but uh, Johnny. Johnny, man, this, yep, this yep. is a killer record. Love this one. It's got to be on secret though, because it's not on secret. Yeah. Sounds like <laughs> shit. So. <laughs> Man, let's not forget uh, Tokyo Blade. Oh, there's one. Yeah, man, this record, that's a banger, man. Um, Midnight Rendezvous. Yep. Man, super fucking catchy. Oh, man. It's just a, this just screams 80s. I love the fucking logos right there. It's just pure fucking heavy metal. Um, let's see what else we got. We talked about this record, but uh, yeah, Wasp, OG, man. Dang. I got an OG sealed coffee right here, man. Who are you? Killer. We talked a little bit about Sword Lady. Uh, I can't believe I forgot them, man. That, yeah, that's man, yeah. that record. <laughs> oh, man. That's Although so I really cool. like Meta. I think I like Metamorphosis just a tad better. I don't know, man. For me, it's like, it's so close. I like yeah, this they record. Are close. I mean, it's, I mean, for me on this is, uh, Fucking fight the dragon, man. That song is oh. so epic, man. Oh, that song rules. It does, man. This record is so good. I love the first record too. Don't get me wrong. Um, what else we got here? Oh, here's one, man. Uh the first loudness record. Yes. Or not That's first, not the but like the first like English record for yeah. right. Yeah. So that's with their fifth the killer fucking record. Super, super catchy, man. Songs like uh Clockwork Toy. Oh my god, yeah. man. There it is, Rick. You were wondering if somebody's gonna mention loudness. Well, here it is, man. And that's got the it. album. That's the album to get. that or um what was the one before that? Disillusion. Disillusion. Yeah, yeah. yeah, oh, this yeah. Is the one I don't have. Do. I don't have disillusion. Yeah. First vicious rumors. Got oh, that. Man, it's yeah. a killer right. record right here. We did them uh, on uh we did them too, right? Didn't we? Yeah. Yeah, we did. Oh, here's one no one talked about. So just I'm not a super big motorhead fan, but in the tradition, I really like this tank record. Oh yeah, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yep. Um, yep. so if you wanna this comes with like a weird EP too. I think this is like yeah. the first press came yep. with the EP. Could have thrown uh, Fastway in there too. Fastway would have oh, worked man. in here yeah. too. Yeah, Fast Eddie That's Clark. First two albums, yep. Fastway. Yep. First one in particular. Yeah, that's a yeah. killer record. Um, here's one, man. I didn't put this in there because it's more. I feel this is a more speed metal record, but this Liege Lord record. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's you, Kellen. Right? That's one of yeah. your bands, right? Yeah. I got to get yeah. into them, man. I I got to check them out. This is a fucking banger, man. This Just is. Hang so on. Good. Is that I'm the Seattle? Out. Are they Seattle too? No, I think they're East Coast. Yeah. Oh, okay. But this is a really good record if you like like bands like um <laughs> right. This reminds me a lot of Overkill for some reason. The vocal like melodies oh, and yeah. stuff. Oh wow. But uh yeah, killer one. Got to get some Black Stanford, Sabbath Connecticut. In mind. My Black Sabbath is Mob Rules. I think nice. this record super catchy and a killer album probably their most like metal like if you're gonna say like their metal record with dio too so man great record uh well, oh here's one that really i think uh raj mentioned but for me it's always gonna be restless and wild yeah that album yeah. fucking smokes man yeah going actually, back I'm, going back to uh going back to copy. sabbath though sorry sign copy man Nice. Well, aren't you special? 
<laughs> Going back to Hang on you one sec. Grim Reaper. Reaper. I like this Grim Reaper record, man. I like that one too. I do. I love this record. It's so fucking catchy. Um, especially Fear No Evil, that track. Man, yeah, shit great, 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 great track. Yep, yep. And let's not forget Jag Panzer. Yes. Ah, oh, yeah. I forgot Another about them. Fucking classic record. I'm just running through these. <laughs> I gotta rem- I gotta get the Crimson Glory. Yeah, I should have had that on mine too, but again, it was yeah, a you should have. Yeah, yep, yep. Shit, fuck wow, it's a fucking and fucking somebody mentioned back. this, and we're like, is anybody gonna say this band? I am gonna say Running Wild. Nice. Oh, no one's yeah, you're the only it's, person. Yeah, Jolly Roger would have been mine. Yeah, this is my favorite. That would have probably been mine. And then now I don't know if a lot of people know this band, but I love this record. Shock Paris. Yep. You know, I got to check that out because I've heard a lot of good things about it. Yeah, it's a it's killer what I missed. I love the fucking artwork with the flying V with the fucking Eiffel, Eiffel Tower. Tower. Yeah, that's <laughs> yeah. Such Are a they French? Killer. No. Are they French band? No, I didn't <laughs> think so. Yeah, okay. I think they're from L.A. I was thinking L.A., right. Yep. And, that's, and then this is a live album that I think needs to be mentioned as far as like, if you want to hear like the, the entirety of the band up until now would be live after death by. Of course. Yeah. Yeah. Classic, classic, great, great fucking record. Great fucking video VHS, whatever you want. Great artwork. Great artwork. Yeah. This is the thing, man. And if you want to, you want to hear Iron Maiden, like even the old songs and up until I think this was Power Slave, if I'm not. Yeah, 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 yeah. this this is it, man. And that's it for me. Look out. Dennis coming in hot and hard. Yep. (laughs) Anyways, um, that's what they always say. That's they always say. Yeah, (laughs) those are those are. Yeah. Judas Priest terms. All right. Uh, Logan, what do you got? All right. Uh, honorable mentions. Got to start with the Iron Maiden Judas Priest combo. I already embarrassed myself earlier, so we'll just keep with it going. Uh, Final Frontier, first Iron Maiden album. Yeah, it's long. Yeah, it's probably boring, but man, I, I very, very like special album. to me. I, I can't help. I even like all of the long 10 minute plus tracks at the very end of the album. <laughs> I don't know. That's the I'm, one that I made now. I never reach for ever. <laughs> I'm sure there's a lot of people that are that are with you. But, Honestly, yeah. it's, it's been it's been a bit for me, but like. But oddly, that's I the first time it. I saw them live was on that tour. Weirdly, I yeah. always miss them every other time. Tim talked about seeing uh, Maiden and Priest in '82. I had tickets for it, but I got a wicked, all encompassing body case of. Uh, of poison ivy literally i couldn't walk i was so covered with poison ivy and so and i couldn't insane. go to that show yeah. yep was out loading wood without gloves on and went in to take a piss and, and, then, death just... and the old itchy johnson was all over from there <laughs> yeah that's that sucks uh judas priest though why no one mentioned this album. Love that album. This yeah. is my, this is my album, favorite yeah. Judas Priest yeah. album. I figured yeah. someone was going to mention it, so I, I mentioned uh, Killing uh, Killing Machine instead. But this would be my my pick, yeah. knowing that no one else was going to bring Screaming. Colin, Man there's down. no rules here that you can't pick the same thing as someone else, right? I mean, I might sound someone to kill you in your yeah, sleep. but <laughs> but if or give me a thumbs thing down as someone else. <laughs> well, I'll give you a thumbs down, or but here I'll tell you what. Instead, Kellen, or Kellen, instead, Logan, I'm going to give you one of these. <laughs> that works. Where's too. that? Where's it at? Come on, where's it at? <laughs> give it to me, you bitch. <laughs> Apple, come on, you. Oh, technology. <laughs> Fuck you, Apple. How's that sound? There you go. There you try. Did it work? <laughs> it didn't work. It didn't work. So. No, I see it. Oh, yeah. I mean, come on. Sorry. It's fucking great record. Out. And just for nice chains, point. these chains and uh, oh, that yeah, yeah. alone, man. Yep. Thankfully, this got mentioned a bunch. So happy. That's. I don't. Is it? This must be like the, the best Saxon album, huh? 
They're better just better than ever. Better than ever. Too big to truly dive in. Strong, strong arm of the law. It's great. Strong arm of the law is good that too, man. Good. All those yeah. power and the glory. First, yeah, the yeah, first power five, glory. The very first one kind of so, is kind of eh, but the the next right. two through five are great, and then it's kind of yeah. All, you know, so later. Yes. Surprise! No one mentioned this. Diamond Head Lightning awesome. to the Nation. Cover for lightning. Yeah. Am I evil? Uh, Am sucking I my evil? love. Great, oh, great song prince. title. Uh, it's, track. it's electric. Yep. Uh, the Prince. Man. Yeah. Yep. Very important album, though. I mean. Yeah. One yeah. of Lars' favorites, right? So. Demon. And then, uh, thankfully, Johnny Mac mentioned uh, Demon's debut, so I mentioned their second album. Uh, the unexpected guest. Not a very good album cover. He had the good album cover. This is well, what is this? This is a bodybuilder with like a face in it or something. I'm not sure. So but uh great songs on this though. Very catchy, more hard rock leaning than anything, but yeah, very hard rockish. Yeah, because it definitely has this the uh, more sinister heavy metal vibe at the same time. And then uh, no it's one mentioned trying, Jaguar. Don't try to be Demon. Ah, yeah. That's a great album, man. Yeah, yeah. Power yeah. Game, man. That's a good pick. Good pick, man. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Uh, really, really catchy. Just really like great choruses. Uh, no oh. lies. New album, me. Uh, raw Wobbly. deal. Very yeah. new album, yeah. me. Very. Yep. Very much the sound. Like it did not trans. You know, it didn't Rick try anything different from the time. Rick's bringing up Apollo Ra. If you guys don't know that album, you should check it out. I think, Kellen, did you check that out? Yep, yep. I need to show you that up. I, but I did check it out, yeah. Yeah, really oh, killer album, man. Very one and done sort of thing, though. Yeah, there you go. There you go. Yeah. Yep. Got to have balls to the wall. I mean, yep. tile track, uh, London Leather Boys, <laughs> um, Head Over Heels. Great, great choruses on a lot of these songs, too. Yeah. Losing More Than You've Ever Had. Uh, yeah, Losers and Winners, yeah. great one. And yeah. then uh, one more Sabotage album, but this is the EP. Killer. One yeah. EP, Dungeons. Dungeons Are Calling. Killer. Mainly yeah. doing this, man, yeah. uh, By the Grace of the Witch, track great two. Song. And then The Whip, track six. Yeah. yeah. You could film. pick a lot of Sabotage albums, man. I you mean, could. you know, they're yep. just an amazing band, but I, I still think Paul yeah. Mountain King is the, the, the tops with – Dungeons are calling probably next from what that what uh, or sirens rather excuse me yeah, yeah. really I, I picked this one because I knew it probably wouldn't be mentioned and I wanted to highlight at least just trying to be different aren't you trying to be different making mm -hmm. sure by the grace of the witch gets a oh gets a mention another riot album yeah and actually oh nice closest to their uh, good album cover too yeah. <laughs> yeah. But still, oh. is that the seal there? The that's not, is that's is not he a seal. robot seal? What, is, what the hell is that in the middle? Yeah. I, I, I got to look at my copy. I don't it, know. I think. It's like a RoboCop reject or something. I don't know. It is. <laughs> but it has a tank on it. It has a tank on it. Yeah, it's, a, it's a tank cyborg. <laughs> <laughs> my bad. And then uh, one more uh, traditional heavy metal band. And this is the biblical by fire and sword. Ah, nice. Uh, yes. Freedom will flood all things with light. This is wow. an odd band and an odd album because they very much dive into the. It sounds like there's a pastor fronting Christian this shit. album. Very, very Christian, Christian shit. And very Christian like, to, shit. To me, it sounds tongue in cheek because he's like, you know, talking like a Southern, you know, Baptist preacher. Yeah. Like, Brothers, so over the top. <laughs> it's yeah. I don't know. People people said he's legit. I don't know, but yeah. Last honorable mention. Um. Okay, we are at Kellen. Okay, so th these were already talked about, so I'll just kind of rifle through them. But yeah, don't break the oath. Night of the Unborn here is the track that it pulls away as a heavy metal listen. The guitar work on that song is unbelievable. Yes, it is. Yep. Uh, you already talked about Crimson Glory, Transcendence, yeah. you, you know, know, have it. Yeah, have it. Yep. Okay, two others. So, uh, obviously, Queensryche is the band out of the Seattle area that you need to know for like the power of Prague from the era. But I really love the debut from Air Parent. Mm. 
Yeah. I got to get into them. That's nice yeah. pick, man. That shit rips. Yeah, yeah I got to get into them. Cool album the, cover, too. Once man. again, Eric Lenoy, the same guy who's responsible for Open the Gates. The road. And yeah, yeah. they lose. That right. is cool. Yeah, that's awesome album. Is that a reissue or, new, or uh, an OG? This is a Black Dragon pressing there. So, all yeah. OG. Wow. Hmm. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Uh, Hellstar, Nosferatu. Uh, yeah, uh, yes. Yeah. I mean, this is almost like a thrash, neoclassical leads, but um, amazing guitar record. I this. Yeah, I got to check them out. Those are That's a band I yes. can get into more. Um, this is kind of, I don't know, you could say the European Omen, uh, Ostrogoth. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Danger. They the EP out. fucking kills. Yeah, yeah EP's great. And last one, a little addition here to uh, California, Lizzie Borden. Love you to pieces. Nice. nice. I don't know that one. Is that the one with American metal on it? Yep, American metal. Yeah. It's yeah, the it's debut. A good one. And yep. a creepy, odd, classic 80s album cover to it as well. Yeah. So. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with that album cover. I'm just but saying. But that was Savage Grace. <laughs> <laughs> just saying. Okay. Um Matt. So I showed three of my five that I had. I got two left, basically. Uh, I've got a Black Sabbath with Dio album. No one's talked about, and few people do, and that's a shame because it is Dehumanizer. Oh, Just got that album. the other day. It's a killer album. This album when it came out. Couldn't get enough of it. Still love it to this day. Uh, After All the Dead is one of my favorites. I love Buried Alive as an Almender killer. Also, uh, Letters from Earth is pretty cool. The whole album is really great. Yeah. Yeah, I just got that. That is a really, really good album. I've known really about album. it, but well, it's one of those ones I just never had. And man, it's killer. Yeah, absolutely. And my last one, people talk about Under the Blade, but I'm a You Can't Stop Rock and Roll guy, Twisted Sister. In fact, I love it so much. I bought the killer. British one too. <laughs> Look at you. Uh, two different backs even. But I love this album a lot. Huge. I came in record. on this record. Uh, I saw the video to the title track, had owned it immediately. So <laughs> underrated. Sister, can't stop rock and roll. Um, and that's what I got. Speaking, speaking of Sabbath, real quick though, man, you got to give some love to the Headless Cross. That album, fuck yeah, yeah. Sure. Man. yeah. good record. When Death Calls, that might be one of the heaviest Iomi tracks ever written, man. And obviously the. Uh, Every song on that album, Nightwing, every song, just killer. Go ahead. You do, by Animal House. And you do your house. Uh, yeah. Should, should have been the uh, follow up to Russian yep. Roulette, but uh, yep. yeah. Of course, Loneliness picked Ooh, Hurricane okay. Ice. Hurricane Which one is that one? Hurricane, Hur Ice. Hurricane Ice. Yeah, I don't know that one. Okay. I just bought Lightning Strikes too last week. So, yeah. Get that one. Lightning Strikes yeah. was after. Thunder of course, uh, yeah. showed it briefly uh, earlier. So, yeah, killer album. Um, do have uh, one Twisted Sisters myself. So, holy man, stay hungry. Nice. You, I don't you know, know any Twisted Sister crazy. Burn, burn in Hell. You have to have that song on the island. Yeah, uh, picked out the cheesiest heavy metal album that I have. Uh, <laughs> it's uh, Fightful Breath uh, with <laughs> Golden Glory. That? You got me on that one. <laughs> killer record, man. Yeah, it's Are a killer, really? cheesy, but this is cheesy yep. as fuck, and it's uh, yep. also very um, um, accept uh, ripoff. Uh, special, uh, there's a song with that, or you know, Princess of the Dark, um, like almost covering this song, but uh, and uh, this was um, uh, produced by Udo Dirk Snyder, so oh, no kidding, okay, <laughs> cool, cool stuff. Uh, no, nobody has talked about Malice. Um, ah, to kill. Yeah, yeah, that's a good album. Yeah, fucking love the title track here. Uh, yeah. Killer, killer riffs on uh, this sure. album. Yeah, yeah. Of course, uh, this one has to be shown under Jolly Me or under mm -hmm. Jolly Roger. Right. So, um, yeah, had to have some Running Wild. Great album. Yeah, killer album. Uh, another one that I haven't seen people talk about. Love this album, Vengeance. Take it or leave it. Okay. Uh, uh, minus the fact that there's saxophone here, I love the album on on that <laughs> song. I hate saxophone in metal. Yeah, so. saxophone is not a metal thing. 
too. No, it should never been allowed to have saxophone in a metal band. That's fucking atrocious. <laughs> <clears throat> Going to Sweden and um, 220 volts. That's a, good, that's a good band right there. Yeah, man. yeah. That's yeah. Really, good band. really good album. I listened yeah. to it yesterday and yeah. So, um, and of course, uh, Chastain. Voice nice. Adult. Good album. Yeah. Yep. Need to have a leather, leather Leon, one of the best female yeah. heavy metal vocalists, and uh, solo leather. Yeah, she's released two albums yep. under. They are pretty good. Yeah, I got the. Label. Another Swedish band, Destiny, Atomic Winter. Yeah, Destiny, Look yeah. at that cover right there. Yeah, man. this is awesome cover. That's <laughs> awesome. That's so, cool. uh, and last That's but not time. least, uh, you you talked about uh, Ace of Spades. This is the. Uh, Small oh, box set. Oh, yeah. look at you, man. I have like uh, four or five live albums in here and some um, poker chips <laughs> and stuff like that. That's all kind uh, of shit really. you'll never actually do anything with, but look at once when you open And now up. you open up and play the <laughs> records and then you put it in the shelf. So, <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'm trying to get the uh, the 40th anniversary um, the LP book sets. They're just the LPs. Yeah. yeah, and that's the the Ace of Spades one is the one that keeps staying way higher than I want to pay for. I got managed. a lot of the other ones for like thirty, thirty five, forty dollars. That one's up in the eighty range. I'm like, eh, I don't want to hold off on that. So, okay, Eric, or uh, wait, we had Eric. Is that it? Yeah, mm -hmm. I yeah. think so. I think I'm last. So I don't, I don't own a ton of stuff. I don't have the biggest collection, but uh, I'll rattle off a few that I have here and then a few that i don't so obviously this classic it's been talked about classic. awesome uh nick had this one on his list love this album killer dual guitar work uh all these guys albums are awesome like nick said that might be the best uh here's one from canada uh sword oh, yeah, or yeah. metalized yeah. Yeah. This has a couple songs on it that sound like they were trying to get a radio hit, but it also has some ripping, just classic heavy metal tracks on it. Cool stuff. Cool album cover too. It that is cool new. album cover. Yeah. yeah. Um, I I can see why most people didn't include these, and it's the same reason I didn't include them. Either one of these. Right. right. It's it's borderline wet with what borderline. it is. I mean, what do you even, what do you call Venom? Are they thrash? Are they black metal? Are they traditional heavy metal, speed metal? I don't know, but. You have a little yeah, bit of kinda, all that stuff. Yeah, they, they were kind of part of the Nuabum scene, so they oh, well, should at least deserve a mention, I think. But, um, and then, yeah, a bunch of stuff I don't own. Diamond Head, Lightning to the Nations, like Logan had, awesome album. Uh, King Diamond, any of the first, like, five or so albums. Same with Saxon, uh, Loudness, Disillusion, Killer Album, or wow. Thunder in the East, or uh, Law of Devil's Land is awesome as well. That's a good one, Law of Devil's Land. Yeah, yeah. even oh, the first God, two. The, nobody talks about the first two Loudness That's albums. Those are awesome, too. Yeah. Um, Metal Church, self-titled first album, great. Yeah. Uh, that's probably my favorite, but they have other good ones, too. I go with Omen. Dark. The Dark. What's that? You can go with the Dark. You go with the dark or blessing in disguise too. Yep. Yeah. Uh, Omen. I love Omen. Battle Cry is probably my favorite. Um, Warning of Danger. The Curse are also awesome. I don't know why you hate that album, Jeff. It rips. They anyway, uh, vocal, the vocalists. <laughs> the, it's still JD Kimball on the on the Curse, is it not? Mm -hmm. No, we're not talking about the same one. Okay, uh, I think you're thinking of the fourth album, the one with the, the, the girl fourth. on the cover. Yes, it's the fourth one. Oh, okay. The third Dennis, one. Dennis, uh, Dennis is drunk and forced me to say the third one. <laughs> uh, what is you it? The said, curse. That, the that curse is the third knew. one. It's still got JD Kimball. It's got a picture of a snake eating a wolf or something on it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, that's, not that's, it. I'll find it. Still, that's still a great album. Uh, nobody mentioned Heavy Load from Sweden. Yeah, um, yeah. Death or Glory, or uh, what's the other one? Stronger than one. Evil. It's that one. Yeah, I haven't heard that one. Either. Yeah, it rips okay. too. Still rips. Here we go. Here we go <laughs> <Nice>. again. <laughs> it does that album fucking rips, dude? It's oh my god, this singer drives me out of my mind. Oh my I, god, dude. I you, think I gave it a three out of ten. I think is that you much. Should have given it an eight out of ten. 
Sorry, Aaron. Anyway, so yeah, moving, uh, heavy like, load. <laughs> Second or third album, Death or Glory, Stronger Than Evil, awesome, awesome stuff. Uh, Riot, Thunder Down Under, or sorry, Fire Down Under or Thunder Steel are probably neck and neck for me, even though they're totally different from each other. Man of War, uh, Hail to England or Sign of the Hammer, mm -hmm. uh, Fate's Warning, The Spectre Within, Queen's Reich, The Warning, Anthem, nobody mentioned Anthem, oh, Hunting yeah. Time. Yeah, it's good. Probably my favorite stuff. Yeah. Uh, I had Jag Panzer as well. Broke his helm. Black Death. Uh, Tank. Phil. I they're they're pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. Kind of U.S. power metal weird stuff with a crazy drummer. Kind of like kind of Manila Roadish. Um, Tank. Filth Hounds of Hades and uh, Tigers of Pantang. Spellbound. That's what I had. I forgot oh, one that I mean, should I should add on my honorables which so many great ones nobody mentioned this band i'm shocked virgin steals noble savage mm -hmm. which uh i gotta That's find sick. a copy of that one of these days so all right man no, well, let me uh back out of this view and we'll go to there uh we started with nine and we ended with seven so we we made it most of the way want to thank everybody for the uh almost six hours sorry guys i was I was trying to do it under four, but you know, it's just, you, know. you know, I talked too much, of course. Um, but I appreciate everybody being here, and Roger, I really appreciate you being here because it's what time is it? Your time right now? Uh it's uh, one in the night. One o'clock. Yeah. So, Damn, dude. Um, you always go the extra mile. <laughs> Don't Kellen, need to so. Kellen, thanks for slumming it. We appreciate it. Um, <laughs> Matt, thanks for being here, dude. I really you appreciate you coming in. And, Absolutely. Um, yeah. I mean, without you, we would have had no kiss. So I might, have, yeah. more, I might <laughs> have actually get, gone with like Love Gun or Destroyer, probably Destroyer. Yeah, uh, as an honorable in my honorables, but since you did it, I didn't. I didn't bother. But um, I don't want to pull my favorite Kiss album because it's Animal Eyes. So that's all right. Nice. It is. He said that before. It's true. He's nice. not lying. Yep. Um, but yeah, guys. So uh, Eric, you got anything happening on your channel? Quick. Uh, not maybe, yet. Maybe one day. Maybe one day. <laughs> yeah, one of these days. Matt, what do you got going on? Uh, I think tomorrow I've got my Slayer unboxing. I bought the Shona Mercy 40th anniversary thing. Nice. Uh, I got an episode of Hook Me Up after that. Um, my buddy Eric and I go through 10 of his records from his vinyl collection. And I reviewed them, all that. Uh, I've got some other stuff. My usual vinyl haul is coming up after that. Upcoming metal vinyl after that. And on to the next month. Do you, do you collect CDs at all? Rarely. Rarely. If really? I see something that's only on CD, I might snag it or something that's just too hard to find on vinyl. So you don't have a, a big CD collection then, I'm guessing. Now, I sold off, unfortunately, about 90% of my CDs in the late 90s. I ripped them all, but I, I just sold them all off. Okay. I think I have maybe maybe 100 and so or so left. Wow. Yeah. Because yeah. you got you got us weirdos that are like have tons of both media and i tried to stay away from vinyl and now i've been sucked in and that's a crazy like, uh, hobby yeah uh, well i just probably bought at least 250 of vinyl since i that's right got yeah. the money it's been ridiculous so <laughs> yeah every time i keep saying okay that's it that's it mm -hmm. no more vinyl that's it yeah. oh man that looks so cool in the expanded yeah. artwork like that so yeah. it's a sickening disease as we know it's collector scum and stuff uh Rogar, what do you got going on man yeah, I do have a uh, kind of a thrashy update coming tomorrow or later today for me now, but uh, that's mm -hmm. kind of the only plan I have. We, we do have a plan of doing a necrophobic ran ranking with uh, some of the uh, English guys um, when the new album is out, so we will see what's happening with that one, but um, yeah. <laughs> Devin says three times a week. Jeff messages me telling me his latest file. <laughs> I hate to I hate to say he's actually not lying. It's kind of been that way lately. So it's got it's got to stop soon because the money's pretty much gone. Um, Kel, what do you got happening? Man? Uh, I have on the Heavy Metallurgy channel this Wednesday. We'll be covering uh, Nuclear Assaults Survive. Nice. Yeah, um, good album. And then. 
uh, I also have a review on the latest uh, Stygian Crown okay. um, that is going to come out and be a part of that channel as well. So on my channel, I don't have anything coming, but I'm on YouTube. So you can go check out the Heavy Metallurgy stuff and catch me there. Yeah, right. That's Wednesday nights on Heavy Metallurgy. Yeah. Dennis, what you got going on? So I'm going to do a deep dive into the uh, worm blood incantation discography. Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> this guy is <laughs> fucking lying right now. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm going to do a, uh, I'm going to do a top 10 barrier thrash metal records live <laughs> show. A it is coming show? up cool. unannounced. So <laughs> also <laughs> one of this record because we didn't mention it. Tyrant. Legion. Right, yeah, oh, man. yeah. yeah. We, I just forgot. Right. That's that's Recent. great album, man. Great album. Yeah, you yeah. know, we uh I, I had Greg on for a long time, like five hours. Yeah. In two parts. Let's and, do uh, I'm gonna do this top ten barrier thrash or everybody I'm gonna post it and then just everybody join in and give me your top ten. Are, are we joining me. live or are we just sending them in to you? You're just gonna be on the chat. Oh, in the chat, okay. It's yeah. gonna be me and you guys. <laughs> you do, and we drop in. All right, if you want to fucking do video, I don't give a shit. Come on. <laughs> I mean, it's him, all man. gonna be the same. It's not gonna be fucking like, hostile on me here, man. No, I'm just saying it's not. It's not a video where like everybody's gonna be like, "What? I don't believe in your activist choice." <laughs> you don't want a six-hour Bay Area stream? <laughs> yeah, want a six-hour Bay Area stream? Yeah. <laughs> We've done a. We've done. A, what was the one we did a while back with your kid? Um, top. It was top twenty five songs, but was it top twenty five metal songs? Heavy, yeah, heavy metal. And songs. then we, but I kept pushing you and going, dude, this is impossible. It has to be fifty. And you're like, well, fuck you. Then you do fifty, and we'll do twenty five. <laughs> <laughs> and you do. Uh, all right. Um, and then yeah, and we have uh, like, oh, why are you going to show it on your phone if you don't own it? Yeah, who said that? Somebody did. Was that, that was Eric Bauer? No, oh. it was a uh, metal theologian. Oh, it was metal yeah. theologian. <laughs> yes, the purist, right? You know, um, the purist who can't, you can't talk about anything you don't own, apparently, even if you owned it or listened to it for years and years and years. Um, yeah, we, uh, we, uh, episode nine of Forgotten Metal Gems, did we pick the bands? Yes. What were they for fuck's sake? I can't Come on, remember. dude. I'm not going to remember that right now. <laughs> Does anybody remember? Like, seriously, like, what the fuck? I'm pretty sure it was Atrophy. Atrophy was one of them. You're correct. God damn, man. I can not remember. Like, fucking wino dogs or something. <laughs> river dogs. <laughs> oh, river dogs. River dogs. River dogs. <laughs> yeah, wino. <laughs> Winery dogs. <laughs> winery dogs. Mike Port Every That's, band. Yeah, Mike, Mike Portnoy and Scott. Yep. Yeah. All right. Um, Logan, what do you got going on? Maybe a trip to Grind Island. It seems like yeah, it's a, that's yeah. what we're doing. <laughs> seems like that, not happening. Just oh, okay. You can do it. We'll, you guys we'll can see. do it. Okay. I don't own okay. these metal items. You need to do it like a licensing agreement or something? Or? You know, we, listen, because I love you guys, you can just do it because you want to do it, okay? You have Thank my you. you have my blessing to travel to Grind Island. <laughs> we got the hip-hop Grind Island. Hip, yeah. <laughs> the, the, one I wanna do is, the one I want to do is Insane Clown Posse Island. Okay, That's let's do it, man. Um, you guys have fun. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, yeah, on my channel, I actually finally reached the point where I don't have anything planned right in the moment. But the Chris Reifert, uh, Reifert interview is planning to be scheduled. Uh, when I was at the Worm show the other night, talked to Phil Tugas. He's definitely coming on. Uh, Phil, uh, Antoine from Dissimulator we're definitely, and Cathelist and Atramentus, he's going to come on. Uh, trying to get... John Bayer, John Bayer Daisley from Baroness. I'm trying to get him to commit. Uh, also, almost about 90% sure that two dudes from Alkaloid are going to be coming on shortly soon. 
And I think there's two or three other people I'm just waiting for some confirmations for, and we'll get those sorted out. And then the one other big thing I want to try to achieve this month is finally to get the dream theater with thing done with my buddy, Dave, um, you know, lot to say in the first half dozen albums, probably not nearly as much to say on the last, however many albums there's been. And I'm working on putting together an anathema deep dive. Finally, want to get that anathema deep dive done. Hmm. Um, so, real quick, does anybody that wants to be involved in a Metal Island series again, and don't say fucking grind, <laughs> <laughs> understand me, Logan? I'll, I'll mute you. I'll mute you on my side, boy. Don't make me. Uh, anybody have any suggestions for the next metal? Metal Island or did we, Island. Do, we didn't do a thrash metal island yet. Huh. Yes, we did. Yep. Yeah. Well, we, we did. weren't available that night. Yeah, you oh, weren't there. Fuck huh? off. We did. We did. <laughs> thrash metal island was like the second or second one, I think. Yeah. Speed metal. Speed metal island. Yeah. Is that much different from thrash though? Really? Yes, it is much different yes. than thrash metal. Is it really? Yes. <laughs> that Are sounds like sure? a debate for speed metal island. Yeah, it does. Yeah, <laughs> right. it does. Um Ah, well, let me think about that. We're not just going to do – it doesn't always have to be so a metal. you got Rash, which is very harsh, and you have Speed, which is classy. Speed metal is classy. It's classic, <laughs> but fa- classic but faster, apparently, yep. right? Um, yeah, so we'll we'll think about that. I do. I, I also do want to do like a classic rock album thing, which we kind of talked about some of those tonight and um, prog, you know, and, and probably we got to do a – I know this isn't going to fit everyone here. Rogan, this Aldo is probably Nova not your bag. <laughs> What's that? Aldo Nova Island. <laughs> That's so an island. All, that was an so island of two. We talk about Aldo Nova for six hours. <laughs> yep. That idea is just <laughs> fantasy. In that case, I'm learning all the Aldo Nova catalog. I'm going to play it and sing it live. <laughs> <laughs> Don't make me do it. You know what? You can play <laughs> any Aldo Nova song you want besides fantasy, and you won't get a fucking strike. <laughs> yeah, it's, you're probably right. Actually, <laughs> you but can no, use your lasers again. Look at the video. I know that I know that Eric would want in on this. I doubt Matt would want in on this. I don't know about Kellen. Kellen probably maybe is a tweener here. Roger, you're probably not in on this. Um, nope. You might be in on this, Logan. But I do want to do Prog Rock Island, meaning I could do rock, that. One. Progressive yeah. rock. What band. like Camel and shit? Like Camel. Yeah, like, I do that. Yes, like Gentle Genesis, Giant, Gentle Giant, all those type of Emerson Lake and Palmer, all those yep. those bands, and there's a lot of ob- obscure ones too that we could do there too. So that one's definitely one I'm thinking about doing too as well. So, um, but yeah, I know some of you guys will be like, "Yeah, I'm not in. I'm not in. I'm, that, so. I'm in for that." Well, you have a lot of everything, so I think you'd yep. be able to fit in that one. I'll do hip hop, so. disco, whatever you guys want. To do. <laughs> Uh, I'm just telling you straight up, I do not own, other than the Beastie Boys, I don't own one single thing. What about like OG as. funk stuff? Let's do like some OG funk. Ooh. I don't even really own a lot of that, although I like a lot of stuff like that. Yeah. But, like I don't own, I seriously do not own one single rap album. Unless you call DJ Shadow rap. That's not really rap. I mean, it's hip hop. It's not rap. It is a little bit, a little bit of trip hop, but. But I own one band that has like rap in it. That would be the Beasties. I have the Beasties anthology. That's it. So, what about a new metal island? New metal island. Oh fuck you, man! That's not happening. (laughs) New metal, like fucking like corn. Yeah, I'll get my Power Man five thousand CDs out. (laughs) Dennis, are you high right now? What is wrong? No, I'm just saying. There's a lot of people that would want us like. Uh, fucking Thralls has all that new middle shit. That's true. And he does Nick would that. totally be down for that. Nick, Nick has a lot of that shit, I guarantee you. Do you do, wait a minute. Just, I want you to look at this face. Does this look like a new metal guy right here at all? Does this no, look like that guy... like that guy that listens to fucking Blue Murder in his fucking dreams? <laughs> hey, it's like a Brad yeah. Sykes hey, man. Uh, fanboy. Let me just say... I don't need no doctor. I don't need no <laughs> All I need is my little girl to bring it on home. 
All right. Anyways, um, New Meadow Island, it, it just is not happening with me. Rick would be in on that because I guarantee you, Rick. I think it's it. I think it's legitimate. I mean, I think we all grew up in that period where, like, you I, probably have like two or three records you can recommend. I, dude, I own a Corn's Greatest Hits and Mudvayne. That's all I have from that year. That's it. I own one Mudvayne and Deftones. And I don't. Mudvayne. I own a lot of Deftones. Would that? No, that yeah, I Deftones can't. Is in there. Yeah. What am I gonna do? Pull out every Deftones album and show it as my picks? No, I don't. Know. <laughs> I don't know what you guys have. I'm just. I'm just a suggestion. Well, I like I actually, look, listen. I, I'm just gonna be honest with you. Now I'm gonna have to get off the the laptop and jump on Amazon and start hunting down uh, used copies of three dollar bill, y'all. And yeah. uh, <laughs> it's a good record, know. man. It's a good record. <laughs> You are high. I, now I no, know I'm not, dude. Three dollar bills a a seriously decent record as far as like hip hop metal like record. I, everything after that sucks, but they were like you mean, ahead of their are time. You need to tell me you didn't do it all for the Nookie though. I no. See, that's a different record, man. That's what I'm saying. Like that first right. record. I'm going to tell you straight up. I'm going to tell you straight up. New metal. Sands about as much chance as happening as fucking Grind Island. So there you go. <laughs> oh, damn it. Let's but do this. You can go to New Metal. How about right. that? Legend, New metal, metal, Crust, Grind Island. <laughs> crust. All right, now we're going to Crust Island. Holy fuck, man. Uh, Let's just do a fucking New Metal, Grind, Crust, Hip Hop, Funk, Prog, Rock Island. <laughs> yeah. Things are way out of line here at this point, man. Things are way out of line here. Yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna show up in an Adidas jumpsuit, right? Yeah. Fuck yeah. You know, you know what? What could be cool at some point? You better be being say that is, right now. Just do a like a music island, like a bunch of people that you've already had on. Just get like your top ten records that you would take. Top could 10 be cool. Embarrassing records. I am. Well, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Top ten. <laughs> embarrassing. I can tell you right now, lots of Pet Shop Boys on with me. I'm just telling. Well, you. there you go. Not lying. Yeah, you ruined it, man. I'm, I'm not lying. I'm not lying. Um, you know, actually, though, that's not a bad idea, Eric. Maybe we'll we'll kick that around. Like top ten guilty pleasures. I yep. I like that one. I like that. One. I like that one. Dennis is going to be pulled out. All of his all of his fucking chocolate starfish copies that he's got. He's pulling out a lot of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> all right guys well thank you very much thanks to everybody that was here tonight we at one point we had 44 people which is by far the largest amount of people that have, you know i i generally now average when we do these like, like 20 to 30 i'm not in the heavy metallurgy rain or realm yet or the or the nick thrall stuff because the size of my channel but um lots of great great stuff no i don't have any him you have him records rick i know you do um, what's that guy? What is it? Is that the band? Was that the name of the band? Him? Yeah, his yeah. Infernal Majesty. I think it stands for. Oh, did it really? Ooh, <laughs> yeah. evil man. That's so evil. All right, but thank you guys. Hang on one second. I'm gonna end things, and then we'll we'll say that. goodbye. Thanks, everybody. Oh, last thing: subscribe, like, subscribe, share, subscribe yeah. to all these guys. Go all to the uh, go <laughs> to the watch them. Look, look at look at look at, look at Matt. <laughs> Let's try this. Let's all do this specifically. Uh, let's all do the thumbs work. up uh, and well. see what happens. Oh my God. Is, is Apple going to leave us oh. fucking hanging? <laughs> yep. Bill Gates. Or no, he's the wrong guy. Sorry. <laughs> Steve Jobs. <laughs> <laughs> wherever you're at sorry i know you're dead i apologize don't mean to be disrespectful uh yes guys thanks for everyone oh and last thing go read the go watch the video on the the thing you know the thing uh you know uh the t-shirts the metal yeah, t-shirt t-shirt the gas mask t-shirt <laughs> check it. it out order some of them marty needs the work he wants me to yeah. send him uh pre-orders no he doesn't check out my shirts they're all going to be in black sharpie Hand drawn. <laughs> there Dennis. might be a skull in the middle. Kind of a suicide. Rare. <laughs> he's not actually kidding. I think he's actually being serious right now. So. <laughs> <laughs>
All right, Wisconsin death trip, Brian. I, of course you bring that in here, man. <laughs> Static X. Yes, we're doing a Static <laughs> X Island the next time around. That's all. It's just Static X. <laughs> it's just everyone holding up nothing and saying, this band's shit. This band sucks. <laughs> anyway, uh, thank you guys for all being here. Hang on one second. And we're out.